you know we welcome here to the queen's park oval and another nice sunny day let's hope that it stays like this throughout the day and uh, that um, we can get a full 50 overs in for both teams it's the clash of the islands it's the leeward islands hurricanes against the windward islands volcanoes and uh, you know it's almost like a derby between the two of them neither team wants to lose to the other and it's going to be a very interesting game um, the table as it stands the leeward islands are th in third position windward islands they are just one from bottom but there's only a nine point gap between the leeward islands and the windward islands just nine points separating them so you have to think it's a must-win game for the windwards to push up the table and of it's all about qualification into the semi-finals getting in to the top four it doesn't matter when you're whether you're one two three or four just get into that top four so you can qualify for the uh, semi-finals i'm colin murray alongside lester Casimir. but before uh, we do anything let's take in the toss for the two teams to one and all. We welcome you to the Queen's Park Oval once again. A nice, bright, sunny a day, a Tuesday morning here in Trinidad and Tobago. But we all set for another interesting game in the CG United Super 50 Cup featuring the Windward Islands against the Leeward Islands. And without any further ado, I'm Ruskin Mark introducing to you the match referee, Mr. Michael Ragunath, and the two captains, of course. We have Alzari Joseph from the Leeward Islands and the ever present and the ever green, another uh, red and the Fletcher. So, gentlemen. Uh, we can go ahead with the toss. Heads, heads, what's the call? Heads, you can. Yeah. So, about congratulations, you, you won the toss. Um, you, instant decision to bat first. Is it the scoop of the wicket? Yeah, it's um, it's extremely dry. It's already cracking up, so um, I'm not sure if it's going to fall up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. How about your team? You, 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 the results haven't been coming the way I'm sure you anticipated it would be. Have you been talk what have you been talking about now? Is it the battles getting runs or is it the bowlers taking more? So um, Ruskin, the leewards yeah, win the toss. Um, I think we're Why thought all you tell me the winwards? So because Alza everything the wicket go crumble. Um exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Um I think it's you know something that can happen again. So um for me it's just about Rafwit looked like one of the umpires. Basarat. Yeah, for sure. Um, as we've seen, uh, it was very dry, it was extremely dry. So um, we have taken the opportunity to use it first with the bat and then get our bowlers to bowl and the wicket that I believe will assist them. Yeah, we are in the kit. You know, what about you? you? You played some tight games, you played some close games, you just not able to get over the line as often as you would have. What what can you change to get that one? Is it just a mindset thing? No. Well, um, actually, we, we came out with a win in the last game, so I believe that that will actually uh, propel us to, to doing better and, and getting us over the line. So, um, it's good to have a win. A uh, win doesn't come that easy. So, uh, you just have to continue to do the good work, uh, do what is necessary, execute each and every plan that is given to us, and uh, ensure that we do the result together. So, you've been here in Kenya for a little while now, you've seen the conditions, you've played in the different... Ruskin, you ask them in like a, a, a full interview? What do you ask? Um, the bonus points, uh, I, I believe, put a lot of pressure on... on the if I knew that, I would not make talk too much. Um, and things, uh, so, who's opening the bowling here? This is... Powell and Graves opening and this is and Lewis. Shamar Lewis. You know, it's a, a different, uh, I would say, strategy. You, you, played, what you did it both for them before? And it's all about Shuman. us buying into it. And, uh, Shuman. I believe the cricket will go for it. Finally, we hear the captain see you who enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, once we get an opportunity, even if, if not, anything that I, I have to do for spies, anything yeah, that I can do, I will make spies. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. great. Right. So there we had the toss and the Leeward Islands winning the toss and deciding to bat. And they are, in fact, already at the crease. The two openers, Kieran Powell and Justin Graves. And opening the bowling for the Windward Islands is Shaman, Shamar Lewis. And he is going to be operating to the left-handed Powell with the first ball of the morning's play. And Powell immediately coming down the track. 
Well, well, what a start from him. It took the inside edge and goes down to a short, fine leg. No run. Morning to you, Lester, and again, good morning to all our viewers, uh, wherever you may be picking up the broadcast. Interesting first ball and first shot from Powell, isn't it? Good hey, morning to you, Colin. <coughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, that's a batsman who, says who feels he's in form or who is in form. He has been making some runs. That's a, a weird attack, I tell you that, uh, at, at the opening bats. Boom. Well, he settles again. Uh, I'm not sure if he settled, but he looks as if he's settled. As this one is not a good delivery from Lewis, just a little bit shorter. And obviously deciding w from that first delivery not to take it up to Powell. And he was a little bit shorter with this, but his line was bad. It was outside that uh, leg stump. And uh, because of that, uh, there was Powell looking to swing it. Didn't make contact and it went through to be taken there by the keeper. Uh, but uh, certainly Powell making his intentions very clear that anything up to him, he's going to look to attack. And that's a bad delivery. He gets away with it because there is cover uh, down in the deep square leg position. He's only going to get a single, but another shortish delivery. And Powell was hitting it in the air, but uh, safely because it was bouncing way in front of that man out in the deep. But obviously, they've positioned that man, Lester, for that short ball and the uppish pull from Powell. Yeah, they obviously knows, they probably know what he is capable of doing and uh, he hit the ball straight to the fieldsman on the, uh, on the boundary. But um, Colin, it, it is amazing that you would uh, choose to bat because you think the wick wicket probably would be crumbling. And very first ball, the, the batsman advanced way down the track to, to go after a fast bowler. Well, we, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Here is Lewis outside the off stump and Graves allowing it to go through. Yeah, now, <laughs> it's interesting because we saw the Leeward Islands Hurricanes play here before against Guyana. And very similar, they won the toss, opted to bat, and Alzari Joseph said he thought the wicket was very dry and it would crumble uh, towards the end. Well, Guyana chased the score. They chased the score. Um, the massive, Rutherford, massive hits. Rutherford, 105 not out. And Ghana won the game comfortably in the end. That's not a good shot from Grace. Wide of the off stump. He went after it. Not much movement of the feet. He just stood there and was trying to blast it through the offside. Yeah, and y you have to really wonder, you know, if in fact this, you know, this is a 50 over game per side. The pitch has been prepared for a one day game. We've been, we have been having some dry weather over the, the last couple. Yes, it's rained in between. We've had some. And when it rains, boy, did it, did, did it rain. But in general, we've been having pretty good weather. And I'm just wondering why, you know, because I, I, I have seen them uh, as soon as a game has ended, like you will see today. Once this game has ended, they will water. start to water the, the, the pitch just to the western side. That will be used on Thursday for the game between the Trinidad Red Force and the Jamaican Scorpions. So it's not to say they have not been watering. And, and we've been having good scores here, in, in not only at the Queen's Park Oval, but throughout the, to the tournament. I think we've had some relatively good scores. So I'm a, I'm a little surprised. That's... The end of the first over, pretty good over, just uh, two runs coming from it, a wide and then that uh, single from Powell. Yeah, so Sherman Lewis ends his first over with uh, two runs on the board. Yeah, so I, I'm, I must admit, I'm a little surprised because I just think sometimes, uh, it, it, it really depends on the ty type of team you have, but to me, batting second is always a little bit of an advantage because you know what you're going to chase. And not only that, with the unpredictability of the weather, when, when it tends to start to rain, if it does at the all, afternoon. around uh, the afternoon, and, and, and the Duckworth Lois will come into play. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, an interesting decision um, that, that they, they feel that this pitch is not going to last the, the 50 overs. Boy, I would be shocked if it doesn't. Well, all the games that have been played here, the team that batted second run down the scores for yeah. the, the team that batted first. So, why, why is the wicket playing good in the, in the first part and is not playing good in the second part and the teams are able to score 
uh, and, and beat the team that batted first. The, uh, what I can say though, Colin, uh, there, were, there have been two, uh, 260, 263 scores and I thought that those those teams if they were better teams they would have gone on to 300 runs because yeah. the wicket were g they were good wickets yeah well the left arm spinner Kavim Hodge is going to uh, be brought into the attack and immediately Powell is hitting him over the cover position down to the boundary for four uh, there's something that we missed Colin because obviously Powell was playing in a game before and he just came here <laughs> because he has been uh, very free is that approach to the game um he hit it straight over uh, the extra cover fieldsman and the extra cover fieldsman is my height colin if he were ruskin height he probably might have been a little trouble not to mention <coughs> alzari joseph he would have been out uh, single this time for paul because there is that deep mid wicket in position there's a long one and a deep mid wicket for powell let us see for the right-handed graves there is a deep square leg and a widish long on those are the two fielders out at the moment outside of the circle because we are into the first power play which is first 10 overs yeah 10 overs hodge is coming around the wicket to bowl to the right-handed graves driving sweetly don't think it's going to go to the bound that's good fielding uh, the fieldsman just running around the ball to make sure it didn't, rather than trying to run to it, had he gone towards it, it, it certainly might have eluded him, but he ran around the ball uh, to, to stop it, and he did. But Graves is off the mark, and it's now eight without loss. Another easy single for Powell. It's interesting because he's bowling with that long on and that deep mid-wicket, and he's bowling angling the ball into the pad of Powell so he's just working it easily comfortably for a single and and uh, you know I, I'm just looking at, at maybe Hodge would need to put a little bit more pressure on the batsman oh that's a good shot that's a really good shot uh, it, will it get to the boundary I don't think it will that's a good bit of fielding and they're going to come back for the third run it's well played, well timed by Graves. Again, a delivery just back of a length, and he was just getting back and guided it beautifully to the right of cover, and they were able to pick up three runs. So a pretty expensive over thus far from Hodge. Ten runs coming from it. And Powell drives sweetly through extra cover. That's four runs. So a very expensive first over from Hodge. An over in which the Leeward Islands batsman made merry. And getting 14 runs from it. And uh, Powell is 11-4 is Graves. After two overs, it's 16 for none. That's the shot of a batsman uh, in form, apparently. Uh, the first uh, ball, uh, Powell chip advanced. Uh, down the crease and hit it over extra cover and I thought that was a little chancy but this one here calling the last ball of the over he played it all along the carpet for beautiful shot between extra cover and mid off and it sped away into the boundary for four that's a shot you really you really expect um, from a front line batsman um, but you can see the intent is there the score is, is 16 after two um, Without loss, two of us have been bowled. Uh, we, we, uh, Lewis is now going to take up the attack from the northern end. Um, I, I thought uh, Colin, though, he bowled his first over was wide, too wide offside the off stump, uh, his first over. Runs for Graves. That's a good shot. It's probably going to get to the boundary. It will get to the boundary. That's a really good shot. But a, not a good delivery from Lewis. Pitched up. Uh, on the pads of uh, Graves and all he really had to do was to work it past uh, the mid-on position down to the boundary for four. That's a very good shot. Uh, four runs, it goes up to 20 without loss. Which is what I was saying actually. He was bowling too wide offside the off stump so he probably tried to make amends by bringing the ball closer to the off stump and he straight down the leg side and was a beautiful on drive um, from, from Graves. All along the carpet, four runs.
That's a much better delivery. Just back of a length, and he stood tall, Graves. He's a tall individual, and uh, he stood tall and playing it down to cover. Just uh, trying to find the gap. Couldn't find the gap on that occasion. So Lewis trying to not carry the ball too much up to the, the batsman, as he did with that first delivery when he was spanked past mid on for four. He's uh, just gone back of a length now. That's a good shot. That's runs again for Graves. It pure timing. It's not going to get to the boundary because there is cover out there and they're just going to pick up two runs. But that's another good shot because he was just getting in line and then just at the last minute Lester opened the face of the bat. Uh, but pure timing on the part of uh, Graves. It was a good shot. It opened the face of and, and, and it went very nicely straight from bat onto the ground and into the space. Good shot. They didn't try to, to hit it too hard, Colin. And that, that's the, the sense of, of that shot. No ball. So, Lois overstepping this time. And uh, means that it's going to be a free hit. I say projected score 460 if they were to continue. Well, that's, uh, I think that's a little bit of wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. Don't think we're going to see that type of score. Another no ball. Well, well. So, uh, another free hit. So, Lewis has got to, to look. That's a, a cardinal sin, even though you're a fast bowler. If you bowl one, you said, okay, you can be excused. But then coming up and bowling another one, it's certainly not what you want. So, Lewis has got to... It wasn't a bad delivery, a yoker length delivery for a free hit. Graves couldn't get under it to lift it back over the bowler's head and that's whipped away that's going to be four badly lined again so this has not been a good spell here from Lewis just went for two runs in the first over but now he's gone for 12 in just four deliveries and I think the Winwood Islands opening bowlers they need to, to settle down here because uh, this is a really good start from the Leeward Islands Hurricanes from very early you could have seen the intent from the Leeward Islands that they, they mean business today and um, again, they are aided and abetted. You cannot bowl two no balls in, in a spell of ten, and, and, and let, let, let alone two no balls in two balls. That's strange. It's a good single. Graves just pushing it out towards mid on, and they went through for an, a comfortable single there. So one more to the total, 28 without loss. Well, bowl them. Well, well. Uh, Powell going for a big hit. Really not a good shot whatsoever. He was going right across the line. And uh, the ball cannoned into the middle and off stump. And uh, you can see the, the off stump just rocking back there. But not a good shot. Especially when you think of this over. Uh, 13 runs had already been uh, got from this over. Things were going along nicely for the Leeward Islands. And Powell, his head in the air. He was looking at it high over mid-wicket. Didn't make contact. And uh, the saying goes, you miss and I hit. And Lewis certainly did. But Powell goes back to the pavilion. Uh, bold for what? Uh, let's see. Uh, 11. So he goes for 11. 
and after just three of us with the leeward islands going along very nicely indeed at 29 for none they are now 29 for one at the end of over number three it's not a shot you expect from a frontline batsman um, on, on, on the Leeward Islands team and certainly not a shot you would expect from a former West Indian batsman, if in fact he's former, because he's still a young guy, you never know what can happen. But that, that is not the prescribed shot. Um, head was all over the place and his bat came, it, it's probably a little slow too in, 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 in going after that shot, um, Colin, but nonetheless the whole technique of, of playing that shot was wrong. The whole intent was wrong. You've already scored 13 runs in the over. And probably you just needed to push the ball into the gap and see if you could get one or two. That's not what happened. And um, it's a strange approach we saw from, from Powell, uh, from ball one. Yeah, I, I must say, you know, I, I really question that type of approach, Lester. Um, yes, you, you have form, you're confident and things like that. But... You know, you you gotta you gotta play the situation. I mean, you you've already got to what to six, eight, thirteen runs from the over. You have the last ball. You know why 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 play play a shot of that nature? You know, you could have simply worked the ball or or you know, um, and 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 the thinking really amazes me at times. Um, you know, Powell just it was just a a swipe really and truly. Yeah, it was a vop. Yeah, that we call it a yeah, vop. Yeah. As you say, and um, it's uh, he's made his way back to the pavilion, but as his brought. I hope he's not annoyed. Well, uh, some I, uh, maybe he is. No, he, he can't be annoyed, Colin. Why is that? Because from ball one, you you showed your intent. You won't you won't be prepared to stay. Well, here's Hodge starting his uh, second over, and uh, remember his uh, first over had gone for uh, thirteen runs, and uh, sorry for fourteen runs his first over, so he's back again. And the first ball grades just getting an easy single. Five men in the off, including that slip. But Hodge not trying to give the ball in very flat and you know into the pitch and angling the ball into the right handed Casey Carty. A lot of time for Casey Carty, Lester. I think he's a good player. I've, so I've seen him a few times and um it, every time he he's, he's, he has been around, he has stayed around. Yeah, he, so he's he, a good little batsman. He needs to get big scores. He gets a lot of good 20s and 30s. Saw him in the CPL get, uh, I think, 85 in, in one of the innings and look really a classy player. In the final, he was the only um, TKR batsman to stand up and, and, and make some runs. And in the end, got out the last man to get out. Because he was running out of partners. He's going to get off the mark here. Just with a single. Is so it's going to bring Justin Graves, promoted to opening the batting in, to in strike. Runs for Graves. That's a very good shot. That was really well timed. That's going to run away to the boundary for four. It does. What a good shot. He just pushed it really. But it was pure timing uh, to end the over. Uh, so it was a good over up to the fifth ball with just two runs. But that now has ended the over. Six runs coming from it. And that was a really good shot from Graves. It was, he just pushed it beautifully to the re left of mid-off. And down to the boundary for four. That's really uh, to end the over after four overs. It's 35 for one. So again... The current run rate is 8.75, and they're going along nicely at this point in time. No need to try anything too extravagant. But Colin, it's, it's amazing that you would have a, a, a bowler with a long run-up coming from the northern end, and then you have a bowler with a short run-up, which suggests that he's a spin bowler. You're going to have the batsman raise his eyes to look to play the ball, to see if there's, there's some little flow in the opening batsman or a number two, number three batsman. Yeah. This is not what is happening. Uh, Graves has a short run up, not Graves actually. Um, he has a short run up, but he's bowling faster than, or just as fast as, um, as, the, as the bowler from the, as Lewis from the northern end. So it's amazing. It's a short run up and a long run, but they're both bowling fast. And here's Lewis again, starting his third over. So just to give you a score coming out of 
the St. Augustine venue where Barbados are coming up against the C CCC. Barbados winning the toss and after just 4.2 overs, they are 16 without loss. And then over in India in the World Cup, Bangladesh coming up against Pakistan and Bangladesh dismissed for 204 and their three main batsmen all getting runs but not getting enough, you would think, as Greaves. Another nice shot. He's batting very well and uh, he's going to pick up four runs again. Ken, a delivery that back of a length and he just opened the face. Pure timing and that's actually Casey Carty. And uh, so he's uh, now getting into groove because I thought that was great for a moment. It was very similar but uh, in terms of the shot. But in height, they're, they're very, very much different. But he got into that shot nicely and he just opened the face and it raced off the bat down lovely, to the boundary for four. Shot. Really good, sh good, good shot. Timing, yeah. Good yeah, good and shot. just going back to that uh, World Cup game, Bangladesh 204, Mamadula 56, Linton Das 45, Shakib 43. So all three getting good starts, but nobody really carried on to get to that century mark. And uh, that man, Afridi, three for 23. He's uh, among the wickets again. And after 10 overs, Pakistan were 52 for none. Single for Kati. So there was Lewis just straying a little bit away from the off stump, angling it into the right-handed Carty. He picks up an easy single. So 40 for one. This is outside of that wicket they've lost. It's been a good start. Yeah, it's been a good start. Um, but th there was a frenetic pace that, that they started with. And as a result of that, they need to calm a little bit. Carty has, uh, has time. 50 overs, Colin. A lot of balls. A lot of overs. That's 300. Um, and, and you could just go out and run a ball and you'd be fine. Well, here is a delivery pitched up to Graves and he drives on drives. He's going to get a single. Are they going to come back for the second? No, they're not. Not taking the chance and they settle for that uh, single. So we looking at Lewis making his way back to the top of his mark. Of course, Winwood Islands in their last game winning by four wickets against Jamaica. Jamaica having a real torrid time. A wide this time. So, Lewis a little bit all over the place at the moment. So again, the Windward Islands team in the field. Andre Fletcher, the skipper. There's Alec Athenay, Sunil Ambris, Kavim Hodge, Shamar Springer, Jeremy Solozano, Johnson Charles, the wicketkeeper, Kenneth Demba, Shuman Lewis, Larry Edward, and Daryl Daryl Cyrus as, again, a delivery just uh, angled into the right-handed Carty. And he's very much on top of it, pushing it out on the on side there is nice brilliant sunshine here at the Queen's Park Oval it's Lewis again gets an edge this time Carty is going to pick up a couple of runs and they're not going to come back for a second that's good fielding so just the single in it again. Good delivery from Lewis as Carty was trying to drive the final delivery. Got the outside edge and they picked up a single. The end of over number five. At the end of it, it's 43 now for one. Graves is on 21 and Carty's on seven. <coughs> I, just, I, I would imagine Colin, they are aware of the bonus points. I think uh, after 10 overs, you should be in excess of 60. And um, at the rate they're going... They could be after at the end of eight overs. They could be in somewhere in the eighties because they are actually pushing along. The wicket is playing beautifully, Colin. Um, so I don't know where the idea came from, where it originated. Uh, even then, it, it it didn't bear fruits the last time. It it it, it has resurfaced again that the wicket is likely to uh, crumble. I don't see it, but I I have seen things before that I didn't notice. Uh, originally so we wait to see but I, I think everything should be fine with the wicket well it's going to be Larry Edward 
he is into the attack. Similar in in terms of slow left arm orthodox uh, to Kavim Hodge. He's Not much bigger. Yeah, and he's opting come round the wicket. So, Larry Edward played in the last game. Didn't pick up any wicket. Wickets against Jamaica were shared by Schumann Lewis. He got 3 for 18. Daryl Cyrus, 3 for 40. Kenneth Demba, 1 for 15. And would you believe it? Andre Fletcher, he picked up 2 for 7. Andre Fletcher, the wicketkeeper. Andre Fletcher, the wicketkeeper. So it's important to be a captain. <laughs> well, he picked up two wickets in that game against we suggest the he can bowl. Jamaicans. He picked up the wicket of Fabian Allen, was 1. And uh, the other wicket was uh, Bonner and Kruma Bonner. No, that that's a serious wicket. Yeah, so 72. Bonner was on. Bonner was, Bonner was on right 72. Through. Yep, he was yeah. the, the final man to be dismissed. Yeah. Ah, there is a delivery that the Graves looking to cut. May have made a little bit more, little bit more bounce than he probably anticipated. So he came on and uh, he got that wicket of Allen and then picked up the wicket of Bonner. And I think in just eight balls, he picked up two for seven. There's a quick single. That's good running from Greaves at the end of the over. They pick up the one. So just two runs coming from Edwards. Larry Edward first over. Two runs. And uh, at the end of six overs, the Leeward Islands opt in to take first strike. Uh, 45 for one. Yeah, well, I looked at I looked at the game. Most of those ga that that game, Colin, with Bonner batting and batting and batting, and uh, it's just amazing. The running between the wickets was so bad, so unbelievable that you have Test players uh, and guys who have been playing for the West Indies, Colin. They have no idea about running between the wicket. Absolutely no idea. It's just run out opportunity after run out opportunity, and then eventually they succeed in and run out one another. Consistently, you see that now with. Uh, and, and it's not just the normal local players. It's guys who have been playing and representing the West Indies. Not communicating properly at all in the wickets. Here's Summer Springer, however. Replacing Lewis. And the very first delivery is greeted by an exquisite drive through the offside by Graves. And that's four runs. So, so a delivery, uh, Springer. You could see him just uh, warming up here. And that delivery was uh, just outside the line of the off stump. And it gave Graves enough time to get in line and then just punch it through that offside. They, they, what I'm impressed with Graves so far is his timing. He's timing the and ball placement, beautifully. And placement. Yeah, and yep. placing. He's placing the ball between the two fields, man, and hitting it. Not with a lot of power, but it's his timing. You're correct, Colin. And uh, he's just caressing the ball. He's tall, so he's getting up on his toes. And, of course, I always believe, Colin, that a, a, fields, a batsman should dictate the pace and tell the captain where to put fieldsman. Well, he has just done so. Yes, um, two, there have been a number of boundaries, so there's now a sweeper. Well, there's a, a man, they, they've taken the, the one from the deep square leg. That's a good shot again, but there is protection. The 50 is up with that uh, shot from Graves. So he goes to 27, and it's now 50 for one in 6.2 overs. But I, I agree with that, If with what uh, Springer has done. Springer has decided he's going to take the ball up to the bat. If you're going to take the ball up to the bat, you, you risk being driven through the offside. And if you're going to take that ball up to the bat and risk being driven through the offside, you must have protection wide. The only reason you'll have a deep backward square leg is if you're bowling short, yes. you're bowling short, or you're bowling outside the line of the leg stump. Yeah. Now it's up to Springer to control where he's going to bowl. Again, he's outside the off. So that's a good shot from Carty, just letting the ball come onto the bat and at the last minute just opening the face and guiding it down to third man. <coughs> yeah, so if, you know, Springer, as, as you know, you, you he, he, both himself and the captain need to work out exactly where they're going to attack. And, and if they're going to attack, if they're going to attack, uh, they've got to, to put it outside the line of the off awesome but have protection. So here is Springer again. 
That's a good shot. That spur going to run away. It was a little too short so that uh, the man deep at that point position would not have come into play because what Grace did, he waited on it and then just at the last minute opened the face of the bat, timed it beautifully. His timing, and as you rightly said, um, Lester, his placement is very good this morning. He just opened the face of the bat and uh, got, got it wide of the cover. Fieldsman out on the boundary for four good-looking runs. Ten runs so far from the first four deliveries. Well, he gets away with that one because it was on the pad and you had to think if Graves had got it in front of square, it would have run away to the boundary because there's no one deep. Uh, we talked about that. You've got to keep it away from there. Springer was guilty of bowling that ball on the pad and he got away. Good shots. Good shots, Colin. And most of these shots are played on the ground from bat to ground and speeding away to the boundary. Really good shots. Good timing. Good placement. Oh, that's a good delivery. Pitched and may have just hit the seam and left him. And he had a, a quick nibble at it, Graves. And luckily, he didn't get the edge. So the end of a good, uh, well, the end of an over where he came back nicely. He was hit for 10 runs from the first four deliveries. And the final two were dot balls. Uh, so you have to think that he settled down after those uh, first four deliveries. But still, 10 runs coming from the over. Graves is 31. Carty, he started well. He's on nine. And after what, uh, seven overs, it's 55 for one. Uh, 55 for one. So they're going just under eight runs and over, 7.86. Graves seems to be a classy batsman, Colin, a good batsman that you see in, in four day games. Excellent, excellent timing, excellent shots being exhibited here this morning. Not well lined from Larry Edward. He, get away with, he gets away with it because that ball was pitched on the pad, clear right out on the boundary. Loud appeal goes up, but uh, nothing says umpire Basarat as there was uh, Carty looking to turn that delivery to leg and uh, didn't make contact. Came off the pad. It's the end of the over, the end of over number eight. At the end of it, Carty is 13, Graves is on 31, and it's 59 for one. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes have having won the toss and electing to bat. Well, they're not going at a frenetic pace as they as they were in the first first uh, few overs, but certainly they are moving ahead very swiftly uh, and because they're playing proper and correct shots. They're finding the gaps, they're creating gaps, and they're deciding. They have decided to to the wicketkeeper, to the goalkeeper, to the captain. Um, listen, you have to set fields the way I want you to set fields. So, I believe what islands they they are. Slightly on top here, 59 for one after eight. It's another delivery from Springer. Just leaving the right-handed Graves and coming off the outside edge and going down to the third man position and they pick up a single. So one more to the total. Goes up to 60 for one. And the bonus point. Yep, and brings uh, Carty back into strike. That's well bowled from Springer. Didn't seem to have much pace in it and angling it into the right handed Carty. Carty se seems quiet and composed. Unless he never looks in trouble, does he? He doesn't look as though they, they could get him out. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. And, and, he, and he gets to 29, 30, 39, and then suddenly he's back in the pavilion, and you wonder why. Well he looks to have so much time in which to play the, the shots. Runs in it for him. Just going to be a single. I don't think they're going to come back for the second. No, they won't. So just one more to the total. Another good shot from Carty. The both of these batsmen, Graves and Carty, what, what, what has impressed me so far, Lester, more than anything else, has been the timing. Yeah, a lot of time. And They've the timing the ball very well. Yeah. It's, it's coming off the bat quickly. And of course, once they find the gap, it's, it's going to be runs. That's going to be, they have to hurry. Oh, didn't pick it up. But uh, he played it again. It, came, it went quickly to mid-off. And... Uh, Looking to see the fieldsman. There is it, Cyrus. Could be. 
but he it was hit the thing about it i thought Graves was taking a chance because he pushed the ball too hard yeah and um he me he, he the one thing you have to give him credit for he took off right away but i tell you what had cyrus picked up that ball trouble yeah certainly would have been interesting So Shamar Springer coming into this uh, Winwoody Islands franchBarbados. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Springer is uh, yes, he is out of Barbados. Oh, that's not a Oh, he's gone. Is he? Yes, he is. Well, that's a very very smart catch and just as we were saying, just as we were saying, Lester, Carty. about Carty. Look at the shot. It was a poor delivery poor. outside the line of the leg stump. What did he go to do? Did he try to clear the man at fine leg, at short fine leg? Never really got enough under it to elevate it. Look, he's walking away. Very, very disappointed, Casey Carty. But he's got himself to blame. He was batting so, so effortlessly. Non, yeah, effortlessly. And um, Larry Edward, give Larry Edward c credit. He took a marvelous catch. Um, he had to make a lot of height. And as you say, Lester, he's more, he's more your height than Ruskin Mark's oh, height. Oh, for sure. Um, so, I think I might be a little taller. He and made, that's not good. He, yeah, he made a lot of height, pulled it down. Yes, yes. And yes. Um, we'll Carty fashion. makes his way back to the pavilion. Really, um, not the kind of shot that you would have expected. Because let's face facts, it was a poor poor delivery very very bad delivery it was wide 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 outside the leg stump and he just flicked at it normally that ball will if you have enough power it will be flicked for six but in this case here he needed to flick it along the ground unfortunately he did not do that and in goalkeeper's fashion he, uh, a brilliant catch was taken oh yeah, excellent catch i thought at one minute it had gone, gone past oh him. yeah but um, in the end, it was a really, really good catch. But yeah, but still, you have to say that um, he gave his wicket away. Casey Carty, as we have said on so many occasions, that guy is too good a player, in my view, to, to be getting out for 14 and 29. He should be the... And, and coming in at number three here, he should be the backbone of this Leeward Islands Hurricanes well, batting he, he, lineup. He is the backbone. He's a West Indian player. He is the backbone, except that uh, it's made not out of today. Runs. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it was not, it's not made out of stone stuff today, but I, I believe that his time will come. That was a very unfortunate way to get out, as far as I am concerned. But uh, it was a fantastic catch, a terrible ball, and, a, and, and as it turned out, Colin, a terrible shot. So he is now in the pavilion, and we are here to talk about what is coming. Loud appeal goes up, not out, says the umpire. Sixty two for two at the moment. As Larry Edward in his second over, oh sorry, in his third over. None for six so far. He's been steady so far, hasn't he, Larry Edward? He's been there about. Yeah, not yeah. spectacular and not doing very much. I think he's just putting the ball in front of, of Graves and saying, well, if come you need runs, me. come and get me. Eight, again, another pretty good delivery. He's not trying to spin the ball. I think more he's just pushing it through and um, putting it in front of the batsman. 
coming round the wicket, so angling it into the right-handed Graves. Another good delivery. That's a very good over. Maiden over. The ball from Edward. He's now completed his third over. None for six thus far from his three overs. And after, what, uh, ten overs? It's uh, 62 for two. So the end of the first power play. Uh, coming into bat is Hamilton. Um, I thought Cathy was short. But Hamilton, I thought he was a wicket keeper when he was walking in Colin. And lo and behold... He is a wicked Yeah, Jamar Hamilton, yes. he's, been he's, around, he's been around for a while. He, I think he represented the West Yeah, he has, well. he has. But um, I, this is the first time I've seen him. He doesn't have a lot to go down um, to squat. He, yeah, he looks a lot like Randall Lyons or even David Williams. Uh, but a lot sturdier than David, David Williams in terms of body structure. Yeah, he's a, he's a bigger guy. Yeah, he has some girth. But he is just as... David, David Williams might be a little taller. No? Um, no, not at all. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I I'm just kidding. Yeah, you had to be, I think. <laughs> <laughs> a centimeter or half a centimeter, maybe. Yeah. But here is Shama Springer. It's going to continue. Good delivery, Josh. He settled down nicely, hasn't he, Shama Springer? He's oh yeah. his third Eventually. over. Remember, his first over went for 10. And uh, he picked up the wicket of Carty. Albeit not a great delivery, but as they say, a wicket is a wicket, and he would be happy. And then Carty is a frontline batsman, real frontline batsman, so it doesn't matter how you get him, he's gone. So they've put, they've put uh, almost a gully in place now, in a catching position. And immediately, <laughs> Springer bowls the ball on the pads, and they get an easy single. So that, that's when you make a captain look dotish, isn't it? Because there was Fletcher taking the man out from that uh, squarish mid-wicket, or almost a, a forward square leg, put him into gully, and then Springer runs up and bowls the ball on the pads. And, it goes and uh, all Hamilton did was turn it on the onside to get off the mark. Oh. You and I have been here before, Colin, so we know. So spring up. Nice sunny conditions still here at the Queen's Park Oval. It's just about quarter to ten in the morning as spring up. Again, bowling that ball. All of a sudden, he's lost his line, and they're going to come back for the second. Most of, the, most of, the, of his deliveries, he's bowled what? This is his uh, third delivery in his third over. So you have to say he's bowled 21 deliveries thus far. And I would think of those 21 deliveries, at least uh, 16 of them have been outside the line of the off stump. But then who am I to say anything? The wicket he picked up was a delivery angled on, uh, down the, the leg side. side. Yeah. So it just goes so to show that... Uh, he's a double bluff? Yeah, you have all your plans. And then something that is not necessarily planned he picks up a wicket. But you could have seen Casey Cart. He was very upset with himself oh because yeah. he, he knew it was a poor delivery. He, he knew he, he should have put it away. No, well, well, he could have left yeah, it alone as a wide. And it would have been a wide. But, uh, wide. but still, he, he saw it, as a, an, uh, and I saw it as well, as an opportunity to for score. him to get four runs. Yes. Yeah. Or even if, you, if you're going to hit it in the air, make sure and hit it. He just flicked at it, didn't he? Yeah, but why is the man taking such a great catch? <laughs> well, those things happen. That's a good shot. That's a really good shot. That's going to run away. M even though the man is out at that uh, cover point position, he's not going to catch it. Justin Graves is looking so uh, in control of this innings. It's really a good innings from him. He is on what? He goes up to 39 now. But uh, what has impressed me with him is his shot selection this morning. That was a beauty of an extra cover drive, wasn't it? Yeah. There's a man at that point. Look at the man running around. He couldn't even get there. Good shot. Excellent shot. All along the ground, uh, Colin. Another That's one. four more. Uh, there's a... Um, no, it's not going to get to the boundary because it's the... The boundary further on that western side. I didn't seem to 
timed that one as well. Seemed to have come off high up off the bat, but he picks up two runs. So Springer now bowling some outside the off some some leg side. He needs to decide to stay on one side of the wicket of the wicket. But two more runs going for Graves. He goes into the forties now. He's on forty one, and after eleven overs, it's seventy one for two. You have to give uh, Graves a lot of credit, Colin. Uh, nearly every shot he plays, it goes straight from bat to ground. Uh, he's either he's flicking, he's on driving, he's straight driving, he's cover driving, he's he's getting back on your back foot and placing it in between uh, two two fieldsmen consistently, and it's rocketing into the boundary. And I'm not getting the impression that he's trying to overhit the ball, Colin. So I am batting at number one, I'm batting at number two, number three. I am a batsman of note, so, and you can when you look at him, you wonder. But where is he in the West Indies set up? Because he I'll tell you, he, there was a lot of... Graves has had... We've been talking about potential yeah. a long while, and he's one of those. Good. We keep talking about potential. But he's a little bit of a medium pace as well. Mm. Uh, he can bowl. But, but in terms of his batting ability, you know, Justin Graves has been around a little while now and uh, just has not been able to, to bridge that gap. And, 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 and I use the term... Leicester bridge the gap, meaning get up to international level and stay there yes. and, and make runs consistently. Yeah. But you, you you know, like today he's on 41 not out, whatever he gets fine, and then tomorrow he will come and get two or three. And and that's my problem. You're talking it's consistency. The consistency, yeah. But from the naked eye, you can see that this guy has, has, he the has talent, doesn't he? Yes, he has serious talent. Serious talent. He's not trying to over impress. He's just there batting naturally and normally. Yeah, he's played some good, good Excellent. cricket in shots. There again, just pushing at that delivery and gets an easy single. He looks very much in control. So one more to him. Brings Hamilton, who's on two, back into strike and the field will change over, I would think, for Hamilton. Yes, they're strengthening the offside now. They've taken that mid-wicket out. So there's a huge gap between the short fine leg and long on. So here is Edward. Round the wicket to the wicket keeper batsman from the Windward Islands. Well played by Hamilton. It's coming earlier than normal. Ham Hamilton tends to come in at number six. Five, six, sometimes seven. But he's coming at number four here today. He'll have to hurry. They get the easy single. Again, there's nobody at mid-wicket. So you could see him angling that ball towards the leg side, towards mid-wicket. He was taking it from just outside the line of the off stump and trying and working it to the leg side. So they were able to pick up an easy single and they he went. It's obviously Hamilton has come in. Now he, he is a player who gets on with it. But um, I like his approach thus far, allowing Graves to dominate. They're going to probably hustle back for the second. Yes, they're going to come for it. That's good running. Excellent running. Because the man in the deep there, it looks like Lewis out there, and had to come in, but uh, couldn't prevent them from getting a second run. But very good running. It wasn't well timed for once by Graves as he was pushing it on the onside. Not too sure if it was, it was hit uh, a bit more softly um, than normal and uh, deciding to, to pick up two runs. But whatever it was, they got two runs comfortably. Cutting. Probably going to come back for a second again. So two good runs there for Graves, as this one was shorter outside the line of the off stump, and he was cutting it, and they picked up two runs. So at the end of the over from... Larry Edwards, one of his more expensive overs. And uh, he's now completed, what, four overs, none for 13. So that over costing seven runs. So when you think of it, the previous three overs went for six. 
so it's uh, see some is that Ralphie doing some sweeping janitorial uh, Ralphie Ralphie told me is he's been here since you were a small boy L Lester and that's many 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 years ago you want to, you don't want to add one more many no I I think I did enough um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, Ralphie's been a real dedicated. His one of the the more famous memories of him was uh, running onto the field with the wheelbarrow, and I think it was an England uh, game, and the crowd went berserk because uh, he was absolutely sprinting on. Here's uh, uh, across the style. Yes, yes, yes. With this wheelbarrow, and uh, was I think it was a, it, if it wasn't a, a ODI, it may have been a Test match. And in those days, there was a pretty decent crowd, a couple thousand here in the Oval. And I think uh, Ralphie, when he started to sprint on the field with the wheelbarrow, the crowd went into applause as if the West Indies had just got a wicket. I think that was one of his most famous moments. But he's at all sporting events. You go to the Hazy Crawford Stadium. But I thought stadium. you were going to finish the story the way the story finished. How was that? When he, when, when he uh, scat sprattled? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, well, let's say you're so unkind. <laughs> uh, I was here. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah, as I am yes. up to be. Yes, he cat sprattled all over the place. He was he was yeah. slightly. Wheelbarrow went one <laughs> way, he went another way. <laughs> I think that's when the, the crowd <laughs> yes. really went to the top. Six, 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 six. Yes, yes. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was uh, tremendous. Uh, I tell you, he was sprinting, and all of a sudden, he Ralphie lost his footing. He looked like Flimstone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the wheelbarrow went one way; yeah. he went the other way, and the crowd Ralphie. enjoyed it. I tell you what, what a character! Yeah. Well, it's a change in bowling because it's going to be Cyrus Daniel Cyrus has been brought into the attack. A tall figure of Cyrus. <laughs> With a strange run-up. If, if yes. what I see continues. These guys are using up a lot of energy for no reason. Let me see if he's going to do the same thing again. Yes, it, it's that's his trademark, isn't it? Uh, well, I hope not. Let's look at him again. Wow. Yes, it's strange, isn't it? You, 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 you sort of break into a run and then you stop. And then you finish, you finish the run. It's a, the, the one of the runners I really enjoy most is Matthew Ford. I really like Matthew Ford. Where he, he stands up and starts to jog on, like on the spot. No, that's you what Flimstone does. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, <laughs> and then he takes oh, off. Oh, how does it go? <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting, that's a very I, I just don't understand. Listen, your, your job is to bowl the ball and bowl the ball properly. All this side thing, especially as West Indies cricket is way down below. We can't even be in a World Cup. Just just let us play simple, simple. Let's do things simple but effective and get results. But we have a whole set of other little things, Colin, that I don't think is necessary. Not necessary at all. Why? Why? Picked up uh, three wickets in the last game. Daniel Cyrus had a, a very good outing. It's not a bad over so far. He's uh, no. bowled a good line. He's bowled a good line. Just one run coming from it. He's go he's so the, well. the spinners have come on, both Edward and Cyrus, and they've they've curbed the the run scoring slightly. Even though Edward last over went for seven. His first three were only cost him six. And Cyrus, Daryl Cyrus, in his first over. It's a good over. Yep. So the end of the over from Cyrus, a really good over. What I liked about it, Lester, was his control. Very good lane, very good length. Uh, the batsmen uh, really didn't have much that they could try to capitalize on, except that. If he were to do this the next over, his second over, you'd probably see the, the batsman trying to advance and uh, to make him probably bowl a little shorter so that they will probably decide to control him as opposed to what just happened where he controlled them. That's what good batsmen do anyway. And Graves seemed to be in the, in the area I will consider a good batsman. The problem though is Hamilton is... is if you, if you remember, if you see Gus Logie or 
Bovuma from from South Africa. He's just about that kind of stature. So he has to be a bit of sweep. So Larry Edward starts his fifth over. It's been very, very steady. Not spectacular, but I think steady. As the sun has left us here at the Queen's Park Oval, no real threat or anything of rain or not overcast. But the sun has gone into hiding for a minute. Seems to have gone down towards the west. And it's given us a little bit of a, a breather here at the oval. Looking to go across the line. The appeal went up. But um, Pa Basarat feels that that ball was not cannon into the stumps. May have just been um, maybe going down. But um, Hamilton looking to flick it. He's got to be careful. Because when you play across the line, uh, the umpires tend to look at that and think, well, you need to play with a straight bat. There's a quicker delivery from Edward. And Hamilton was equal to it. Goes down to Hodge, who is at the long on position. So the sun just about coming back out here, but uh, certainly not as hot as it was say, uh, 50 minutes ago. This is a drive from Graves. That's sweet. That's lovely. That's four runs. Excellent shot from him um, as he was. Uh, that's a uh, beauty of a shot. And that takes him to his 50. A 50 from 44 balls and seven sweetly timed fours. Really a, a wonderful knock from him uh, getting to 50 after 14 overs now. It's 84 for two. This young man can bat, Colin. He is a very good batsman, Justin Graves. That name will stay with me because I'm telling you, he can bat. Um, um, I, and, and, and I could see him, Colin, in the West Indies setup, whether he would play and play for the West Indies consistently or not. Certainly here today, it's a good batting wicket. Uh, the bowlers aren't bowling badly. It's just that he is batting very, very well. And uh, you've seen some very good shots, real good, really good timing and placement. And that's the hallmark of a, of a good player. Of course, the other hallmark of a good player is consistency. So I don't know what he has done uh, so far for the, for the tournament, but I, I, I will be paying attention to the name going forward. Well, he got a 50 in the last game. Uh, here is Cyrus back in the attack, out, uh, the leggy outside the line of the off stump. And uh, there was Hamilton looking to cut didn't make contact. Yeah, opening the batting against Trinidad, the, the Red Force, he got to, to 58. That was uh, another good um, half century from him. But he was, he was actually promoted to open the batting because against Guyana, uh, he batted down the order. He, he batted, um, he, as a matter of fact, he came in uh, at number eight. Single for Hamilton. He came in at number eight and got to 15, not out. In the past, the Leeward, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they were opening the batting with uh, Kofi James. So Graves back in back in strike. Then runs again for Graves. Are they gonna come back for the second? No, I don't think they're gonna chance it. Solozano is the man out there. And they picked up a single. Yeah, against uh, the academy, he got to 39. This is Hamilton pulling this one, but uh, down to Springer, who is at long on, and they pick up a single. Yeah, so he got a 39 against uh, the 
academy. So he's been getting some. He's been getting runs consistently, not big big scores, as you would have hoped. Well, Colin, if you put me to bat at number eight, you're telling me a story, you know. Well, I can't understand why he's batting that low, and and maybe it was a, a situation where they wanted quick runs, you know. They they wanted quick runs, but uh, it's the end of over number fifteen. It's the first water break here. Uh, the refreshment break or drinks break, however you want to call it, after 15 overs and the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they are 87 for 2. Justin Graves is on 51 and Jamar Hamilton, he is on 7. So after 15 overs, it's 87 for 2, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. We're going to take a bit of a break and uh, come back shortly after the drinks break.
As we welcome you back here to the Queen's Park Oval, Colin Murray gets a bit of a breather. And uh, again, after 15 overs, uh, it is 87 for two by comparison. The Barbados uh, versus CCC game, the Bajans was 71 without loss after 15. And Hamilton uh, probably trying to just step up the tempo here a little bit. But probably try to uh, really get after the bowling somewhat. But he does have a, a, a good partner in Graves, who has batted superbly Justin Graves to get to his half century. The wickets to fall again, Kieran Powell for 11 and Casey Carty for 14. Both men uh, must be kicking themselves in the dressing room at the moment. And uh, again, because Leicester, when you consider the conditions are so ideal for batting, it might take a little bit of work and a little bit of patience, but uh, run scoring isn't, you know, that prohibitive at the moment. And uh, you play on merit and you, you get reward. The outfield is, is properly manicured, so you're getting value for your money, for your runs, for your shots, you're getting value. Uh, the wicket is a very, very good batting wicket. Uh, the bowling is good, uh, good enough. But uh, if you if you bat, you can you can score. Yeah, taking a little chance here, Hamilton. Now you you have to be uh, kind of you you put a, a kind of cursor next to it because his center of gravity is so small uh, that uh, an average person we would say that's a dangerous shot. But he probably seeing that all the way because his his center of gravity is so small, so he has more than enough time to to make that cut shot. Uh, he doesn't have very far to go. Uh, he really is a, 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 a short man, but he has a, he, he's a gutsy character. He's also a funny character, I'm told. he make you laugh whole D. He's one of those characters that will talk to you no matter what. 89 for 2 at the end of over number 16. Yes, I, I'm happy to hear that, uh, Ruskin, because <coughs> when you're that high, people make good fun of you. And if you could, f if you could <coughs> yourself make fun, then your life is free. You you don't have nothing to worry about. And um, I I think I I am not the tallest guy in the world. So anybody come by me with height problems or height talk. And by the way, my mother is not even five foot. So <laughs> there have always been a lot of short jokes uh, mm -hmm. around me and, and 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 my people. So I I could understand it. But I myself like like the the idea of you know talking about Bovuma and Logie and De David Williams and, and, and now Hamilton. First time I've seen them in person. But they are normal human beings who produce just like anybody else. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see he scores 100 here. And uh, this is the start of a new over. Uh, again from Daryl Cyrus, who is immediately dropped on a pretty good line, a good length. He's a tallish leg spinner and uh, has a good, nice, high action. Uh, kind of busy when he he really attacks the crease after he does his his little shenanigans with his hop skip and jump <coughs> and then he, he just kind of races through his action unlike say somebody like a Ganesh Mahabia who was very smooth with his leg breaks. Rhythmic. Yeah. It's lovely. But he does have a he, he does command a, a, a pretty good line, and uh, which is which is a, a plus for the leg spinner. Doesn't spin the ball as much, but I think he just does enough to keep the batsman honest, and uh, and the speed at which he bowls, you have to be always mindful as to how you you go about it. And and again, this is what I'm talking about with Hamilton. That was not a very short ball, <laughs> <laughs> but because he's so tiny. And and his center of gravity is so small, he could just stand there, and uh, then as it spins and comes onto him, he has more than enough time because he's on the back foot, uh, doing his bit. So, uh, really, you, you as a bowler, it's a you, it's an adjustment that you have to make in terms of the length you bowl at him compared to the batsman at the other end, like we have now. This is in the air, but it's in the gap, and uh, it's going to 
result in just a single. So um, the scoring has kind of slowed down just a little bit because the bowlers have really come into their own now. Uh, they've really tidied up significantly. There he goes. This one is Ariel that's gone a long way. It's going to bounce once and twice into the ropes. And uh, not much uh, that they, they could do about it. It was Ambrose running around from long off. But it went way to his left. And uh, a nice boundary in the end. Uh, so four more to the score. Hamilton goes on to 13. Graves is 54. And after 17 overs, the Leeward Islands after winning the toss and batting a 96 for two. That was a good shot from Hamilton. Um he has some power, of, of course, uh, Ruskin. Um, for one minute, I, th I thought it would have been Graves who played that shot because it was hit with a fair amount of power over uh, the extra cover fields one, and it sped away into the boundary for four. He was batting, actually, uh, Ruskin, at less than 50%. 50, 50, 50, uh, percent. Uh, more, more balls, a lot more balls than, than runs. Um, so he's now gone up a little bit. He's now faced... 21 balls and he's now on 13. Graves was ahead um, runs and he's still ahead. 54 runs, 52 balls. He's, but he was way ahead. What happens? This happens sometimes, Ruskin, when you you play with a guy who just comes in. Who just comes in, it, it takes you a while to, to adjust to his pace. And Gra Graves, meanwhile, is uh, just trying to uh, continue his. Uh, he's attacking that middle, middle and leg stump. And uh, he's not giving too much away. And uh, as you can see, he does have a, a, a mid on. There's a long one and there's a deep mid wicket as well. But there's a short backward square leg just to the right of the umpire. And that's going to be the key man here if he continues to bowl that line. Uh, because if he gets it to his right, uh, chances are it, it might be a boundary every time. Uh, because you, you have to be so mindful as to where that field is and um, we saw you flick it in the air and you can get caught at that position as well but Graves has really played a, a beautiful hand here kept everything in perspective he started together with Powell they both started like men in a hurry Powell departed but Graves is still there and uh, has settled down now. He hasn't. He, he's no longer kind of going gung ho at everything, uh, but he's playing, trying to play each ball and merit. He has a half century, so I'm, think, I'm thinking he might be uh, setting himself up for a really big score here. He's seen most of the bowlers already, and he must recognize that they they haven't troubled him uh, to any great deal. I think Hamilton is probably telling him to be wary. He's trying to play almost exclusively on the back foot and, uh, and trying to play the ball square. And this time they're going to get the, the single. That's a very well judged single in the end. So good cricket. And I think Hamilton kind of alerted him to that. And uh, together they fashioned a quick single. And uh, at the end of it, 97 for 2 after 18. Well, we've seen a slow period here at this time. Um, good bowling and of course they are respecting the good bowlers and good balls um, but I, I know that not too long from now that they're going to try to push it. We see Graves as a real front line batsman I find it strange um, Ruskin that Colin is reporting that he batted at number 8 there must have been an injury or something he also said he's a, a good medium pacer so there must have been some reason why we'd be batting at number 8 well, uh, uh, you know, strange things happen because look at Fletcher. Fletcher bats way down the order. Very low. Yeah, you know, so uh, it maybe it's just the Giving everybody the opportunity. Yep. And uh, again, good, generous flight there on that occasion from Cyrus, trying to entice the batsman to come onto the front foot. Uh, the problem he's facing is that he's not getting much purchase of the wicket just yet. And uh, because it's such a, a, a flat wicket, 
he has to work for whatever spin he's getting and here again uh, it's good batting the batsman just comes onto the front foot and, and it must be a good feeling call it, um, Lester when you know you could just come onto the front push foot and just push because the ball I, I'm yet to see him bowl the googly uh, so I'm waiting to see what his, his body action is going to be, be like because uh, it, it, I would imagine it would be a change and uh, uh, maybe he tried to bowl one there, but he, he over tossed it and uh, it ended up being a full toss. So, it, and as a batsman, those are some of the things you're probably looking for. You want to see if there's a change in his action uh, when he bowls a googly. If you cannot read it from the from the hand, and so far it looks like it's almost exclusively leg breaks. They thought for a moment of a second run. Uh, but again, Ambrose was quick. And th and this is the the thing he he doesn't really he, he doesn't rip it. He d it it doesn't grip. I don't know how much revolution he's putting on the ball. And uh, but he's not really troubling the batsman. And uh, now I like the lengthy balls most times, uh, is, but it's from there now. Is how does he move it both ways from there? Uh, the hundred is on the board with that. Uh, it's a hundred and two now for two. And that's another comfortable single. So they just uh, fill in the basket one by one, not taking too many risks. And this is Hamilton, you know, he's always, he's the real ideal man for a crisis for the Windward Islands, for the Leeward Islands. Uh, he's done it time and time again. Uh, 19 overs completed. It's 103 for two. All right. Well, what we're seeing here now is uh, batsmen have decided to... I can't necessarily get fours and sixes. Or I'm not even trying to. Um, but I'm going to push the ball in the gaps. And uh, every ball, the last over was a run. So they got, they got six. And if you're going to get six <coughs> runs in every over, you have a real good chance of scoring in excess of 260 runs um, and if you were to score it all the time it would be in excess of 300 <laughs> runs so th and that is those those have been winning scores here 263 have been winning scores uh, consistently on this uh, in the Queen's Park Oval well we've seen some some good innings in this tournament so far a couple of them already been robust innings one or two others have been well put together. There's another stifled appeal. Again, the arm, the ball coming in with the arm. Um, and uh, so he hasn't really been able to put the ball to grip and go across the, the right hander. But Larry Edwards still um, causing a few problems here. Which is good. So it means that the, the, the spinners are complementing each other. It's not like one person is bowling a tight over and then one at the other end. Loose. He can run. Yeah. You know, so they, they, they're really bowling in tandem here and bowling very well. Keeping the batsman in check. Okay, he's bowling a full length to him. Now, this is the adjustment that he's made. He is because the length to Hamilton is not the same length you're going to be bowling to Graves uh, but you can see him pitching the ball up a lot more not necessarily giving him much flight but he's still the length is different uh, because previously Hamilton would just stand there and just cut and and dab it on the outside and run now he, he has to be careful um, coming on to the front foot plus he was already struck on the pad in this over so he uh, no doubt mindful of that Again, another nice uh, length, good full length, which is good bowling. And I think Fletcher would be happy uh, with what he's getting from these two. Uh, they're not leaking too many runs, and they're, they're not making his life difficult. Quicker delivery, again, that's a, a splendid over, uh, one would have to say, and a, a maiden over, because it's 103 for two after 20. 
Well, we, we see two different uh, set of buttons taking place. The, in the beginning, with the moving at a frenetic pace, Ruskin. Mm -hmm. And now, what I'm noticing is that uh, batsmen are playing the ball dead in front of them. They're not uh, uh, pushing the ball. Uh, the over before, they got six singles. But I, I'm noticing that you're just playing the ball right in front of them as opposed to you've been batting for a while. One is on 58 and one is on 16. And looking to just place the ball that you would normally play for a defensive to, make sure you get good contact and <coughs> open the face and close the face. I, I, I'm, I'm not seeing that happening. You know, just pushing, getting on top of the ball, uh, Ruskin, and pushing it into the spaces. I'm not seeing that. Well, it's really a, 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 a how they're assessing the situation. Um, so hopefully they'll be in a, in, a, in a better frame of mind to maybe attack that. Kenneth Demba is coming into the attack now. So he will probably try to break this little partnership here. They put out 41 so far. And uh, I suppose Colin, as he looks on in the back, or uh, you, Lester, as you look on, uh, you would be aware that he too has a, a bit of a skip and hop and skip before he delivers the ball. Uh, so it may be something that they they see and uh, that they're comfortable doing. Because uh, you, you think of somebody like uh, Anissa Muhammad, she has a big hop in her run to the wicket. But to his credit, he, he's bowling around the wicket, but he's bowling a very, very sort of tight line into that middle and leg stump. And uh, just the one run so far in the over. Again, they're thinking they're going to have to hurry. Graves was a little bit late in starting there. Uh, but again, good anticipation, uh, but still not quick enough there. Fletcher anticipated that very well, uh, but he couldn't pick it up. It was well placed. It was placed a good distance away from him, and he had to do some work to get to it. So Graves is on 59. Now he's back on strike. Hamilton on 17, 17 from 33 deliveries. Graves, his 59, come off just 62 balls. And there's a, a nice delivery, a little bit of a, uh, almost fooled him there with a the little bounce, a little extra bounce. Uh, but again, Graves was going backwards when he was playing that instead of coming out onto the front foot. So he's probably trying to give himself a little time to assess uh, what Demba is doing. Again, Demba bang on target. So the end of a pretty tidy over. At the end of it, it's 105 for two now. 21 completed. Good bowling again. Good line. Good length. Uh, batsman didn't have to do much. Um, but I, I imagine, Ruskin, within the next three to five overs, they will be trying to force the pace. Mr. Edwards, Larry Edwards did the best he could. Um, and uh, there were two, two, just two runs in the over. Um, they need the batsmen need to step it up a little bit. Um, certainly, Hamilton in particular needs to step it up. Well, he is a, a, a pretty fast scorer, so I, I think and I, I would imagine the thinking here is not to lose too many wickets and uh, give yourself a chance at the back end to probably pile on some runs. They they have a good foundation. They've already gone past a hundred. So maybe after 25 overs, they'll do Step a rethink, yeah, do a rethink, and see, do an assessment, and see how it goes, and then somebody then might take the responsibility to to step things up a little bit more. And uh, you you have to like the 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 character and the the, the determination being shown here by. Uh, these two batsmen, they're not hustling, uh, but they're, they're trying not to take too many risks. They don't want to give 
wickets away. They've, they've already seen two of their frontline batsmen do just that. Um, it's such a, a gorgeous day. You really wish more folks would come into the Oval to witness this exciting encounter between two teams that know each other very well, the Windwards and Leeward Islands. Together they were the combined islands back in the day. Allen, Viv Richards, Andy Roberts, Hugh Schilling Gore, the Schillingford Schilt brothers. The Schillingfords. Mm. It was pressure for, Mike for Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, Finley. Jim Allen. Right? Here is Hamilton cutting. Going to get some runs. And Springer is after it, but I don't think he's going to catch it. It's going to go into the boundary just ahead of him. Uh, so just uh, the shackles just being released here just a little bit and uh, Hamilton is the man again because his center of gravity is so small uh, a, a, a length ball to me is a short ball to him and uh, he was on the back foot cutting and got it away from Atanas at slip and down to the boundary for four okay well placed I got I got the impression uh, it might have been a top edge if it wasn't it was a, it was a good shot into the boundary it went for four so 111 for two now to Nelson. So hopping on one leg all now. Uh, I'd like to see Colin Murray hop on one leg in the back then. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting involved with Colin Murray on, on the leg at all. Because I would like to go Colin a, a hundred meters. That's what I would like to do. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not going to happen. Not going to happen. That's a good shot again, and uh, Colin Murray on 100 meters is like not happening. oil and water, not happening at all. <laughs> not going to happen. I'm not uh, so sure those two knees, yep. uh, uh, having hit a few <laughs> times, <laughs> would um, just collapse on him. 112 for two at the end of the over, and uh, a good over for the Leeward Islands. They've been able to pick up seven runs in that, uh, in that over, and uh, kind of... Uh, break the shackles a little bit. Hamilton who pushes on to 23 grades is on 60 now. So 22 of us completed. We, we could go back to me being in the uh, ladies member stand which is now the Jeffrey Stallmeyer stand and, and or Ruskin in the Caribbean stand uh, looking at Le Winwood Islands combined to together with, with, with the Leeward Islands and, the, yep. and the, 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 the name was Combined Islands. Yep, I'm trying to get Colin's attention to find out where... No, he's ignoring us. ...where Director Wilson got that cap from. I wonder if Colin has one like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, the next delivery. That ball is hit in the air. It's going a long way to the boundary. And Solosano is out there. And somehow he's limiting them to just the one run, uh, which is uh, pretty good going on his part. So you could just see them trying to uh, change gears now. Yes, right. Change gears a little bit, but I would hate for them to, to do that and just give wickets away. And, uh, Shot. You know, and maybe one batsman could do it. I don't think both of them need to, to just try to pull the choke, as we say. And uh, next thing you know, you, you do it for uh, an over two, and then you lose two quick wickets, and then you have two new batsmen at the oh crease. Yeah. Uh, so it has to be a, a, a sort of a calculated... Uh, risk and approach that is more beneficial to you than to the opponents. Uh, thought he was trying to turn that on the onside and ball hit the more of a leaning edge. Went out into the offside. So again, Colin, uh, uh, let as you look at it, it it's, uh, I, I suppose both captains would be happy where they are right now. There is Hamilton again, started to come onto the front foot, but then uh, rocking back and trying to uh, punch it through the offside, not getting it through. So another over comes to an end quickly. Uh, they're getting through their overs quite nicely now. 
and after 23 it's 114 for two. Well you could probably forecast that this batting team could get to a maximum of 270. Uh, we had uh, the most uncanny situation happening here. Two teams made once 263 and um, and at the end of it they both lost. So the 263 is not a, a good score for, for this for this uh, type of wicket. Um, if you if you want to win, you have to be in excess of 275, I would imagine. So that's a figure that our total that we be looking at. Ideally, it should be in excess of 300, 300 runs. Well, to get the 300 runs, one of these two would have to play a big hand, if not both of them, and uh, really kick on and kick on for a long time. And uh, again, uh, that big, that nice little twirl of the bat. You can see him just flicking the bat into line and stroking it down. There really does look a picture. Uh, Graves uh, must be thinking, you know, a, a big score here, a really big score. And Hamilton at the other end, probably just uh, anxious to give him as much of the strike as possible. 62 is Graves, 24 is Hamilton. They've put on 53 so far for this third wicket. And uh, here he goes, uh, uh, Hamilton just nudging it on the onside. Long chase for Athanas, and uh, he won't get there. And then he has to do a little hurdle uh, over uh, the boards, the advertising boards. Uh, but it's four runs all the same. 119 now for two. 28 to Hamilton. He does have that uh, a little bit of unorthodox way about his batting. He's not afraid to take a few risks. But like I said, I'm always amazed that how whenever they're in crisis and they send him, he's there. He, he, he and turns he, up. Yeah, he turns up a lot of times. It, it, it doesn't, you know, you might see 40, 42, 50 or on occasion. But if you look at the circumstances in which he made those runs, you'll add much more value to it. And only his teammates will probably fully appreciate uh, the effort. And here's uh, another case in point. And this is uh, this, this could be four more. Uh, I don't think uh, it's going to make sense for Ambrose to, to run that down because uh, it was well played again by Hamilton, nicely into the gap and another boundary. The second of the over so far. One twenty-three now for two. Not a lot of power, just proper timing and obviously proper placement as well. And uh, they they the speed of the ball, he's allowing the ball to go with his own speed down uh, past the wicketkeeper down to the boundary for four on both occasions and uh, a little bit of a lift, a uh, little bit of bonks there uh, uh, at the end of it all there for Edwards but he is wicketless so far in his 10 overs not for 37 and uh, that is the end of his spell. 24 completed. It's 123 for two. Uh, we, we've seen good cricket overall, Colin, um, Ruskin. The overall is now bathing in the sunshine. It's hot. Really hot outside there. The, the job and the life of a, an umpire cannot be easy. Basically, you're stationary and you have to make a decision. You have to concentrate for such long periods and you're not allowed one mistake. Well, if you do one, that's fine. Two, you probably have to consider your, your job options. But um, it's, it's a hard job, Ruskin. And hence the reason you and I uh, decided to not do it. No, I'm pairing is a thankless job. Yeah, it's a terrible job. I could see Colin doing it, though. Colin seems to be calmer than, than most people. Very intelligent fellow. Yeah, He's he a Fatima old he boy. Might, he might be one of those umpires that would appeal when the bowler appeals. Uh, and if he doesn't give them out, he would probably call with the bowlers as to why they're appealing. But what exactly are they appealing for? 
and why and why you why you you you're going up with with the tea in your hand I, i've already made a decision you're going up to the third umpire you're trying to embarrass me or something you've never seen him coach football there's another quick single very well run again a direct hit uh from uh solizano coming in there but uh batsman was uh, safely in graves colin coach football is it yeah colin know. Colin Murray was the coach, well, apart from coaching Fatima, uh, he was the coach at Carib. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was part of the brewery <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> That's a drunken team or something? <laughs> the drunken <laughs> master? <laughs> Colin Murray was a coach, a, a football coach. <laughs> yes, we said Africa final all, you know. <laughs> According to Richard Gable, what is this? <laughs> no, and then, and, uh, you know, I was talking to the match commissioner for this game, the match referee, uh, actually, for this game, Michael Ragunath, was a, he went to the World Cup, he was a FIFA assistant referee. Is it 2002? Yeah, 2002. You know, and... Um, but uh, I'll give you a joke about Colin and his coaching exploits uh, progress yep <laughs> do you know you, you know neil de silva yes the sprinter the former yes, national yes 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 from brandy yeah. um Va valencia you know his sister no it's a good shot and uh, actually blocked off but anyway his sister was a a, a, a prominent referee in trinidad and tobago and um, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen her for uh, a while now. I'm not sure if she's still into the refereeing business or she's more like a supervisor of referees uh, trying to help younger ones to come in. Ended the over, 125 for two now, 25 overs completed. And so, yeah, as we, as we were talking there, and, and I went to this game, I was just watching, I think, Carib, who Carib was playing by somebody. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was a good game. It was a, a crucial game at, at that. And Colin is there, his normal self. You know, he likes to get excited and yeah, demonstrate yeah. and whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and I just had one thing for Andrea De Silva. I was telling her, Shane De Silva. I was telling her, you know, don't be afraid to give him a red card. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he wasn't his best behavior. <laughs> and he wanted a red card. <laughs> I say anytime he tell you anything, off. Oh. Set him off. Don't be afraid. But he was in his best behavior. What? I don't think he's ever been that disciplined in his life. Here's another quick delivery again. Changing ends uh, just a little bit is uh, Cyrus. Uh, obviously trying to uh, make, uh, trying to see if he could get maybe better purchase at the. Uh, bottom end, so he's operating from uh, the pavilion end now. Good spin again. That's a beauty of a delivery. Just pitch and uh, just beat the outside edge. Not very often you get wickets with those. They tend to beat everything sometimes, or most times. Uh, Hamilton's on Teddy, so he's played well, but he's under some pressure here. It goes flushing again outside the off dump, misses, and uh, a survivor. I so say welcome back to Colin Murray and a few anxious moments here. Yeah, good, uh, good morning again to you, Ruskin, and certainly a pleasant morning to all our viewers. It's uh, been a decent spell from, from Cyrus. Yeah, he's bowled well for, and he's very tidy for yeah. as a leg spinner. Yeah, that's yeah. what I, I was. I was making that point to to Lester Casami when he was on a little earlier, and saying that uh, he's been pretty good. He's been uh, his control has been good. He's getting a little bit of turn as well. But what has impressed me most about him is his control. He bowls oh. again, and they're nibbling at another one. That's more of the same there. Uh, so Hamilton has to be careful here. And he's playing at deliveries that he doesn't need to play at Colin. That's way that one in particular was way outside the off them. If I he's not I reading, yeah, I think he wants to get bat and ball, and then you know I, I he's also maybe a little concerned about the googly. 
and uh, that's a short ball and uh, again because he's so small his center of gravity is so small that's like a uh, you and I might have to flick that he break that's like a full-blooded sweepy sweep in there uh, because he has so much range extend his arms and got it nicely into place for a boundary that's what his third in about the last two overs or so it's 129 for two now he goes to 37 63 to graves 26 overs completed yeah it's and it's spoiled the over hasn't it um he his first five deliveries were all dot balls and then all of a sudden a short delivery um not a good length i think he tried to just push a, it through a little we bit praising yeah but, but yeah but he tried to push that through a little bit and because of that he lost his his control in terms of his line and his length and um, it was an easy boundary for hamilton all he had to do was really get bat and ball and put it away from the man at short fine leg which he did but uh, really uh, as he spoiled what was a very very good over there's Demba as he starts a new over as well it has to be said that the uh, Windward Islands have uh, been pretty tidy uh, all morning I mean they bowl one or two bad boys we've seen that but they've also gotten wickets with <laughs> one or two <laughs> would have gotten one of their wickets actually with a with a a full delivery on the pass. They might get two here. No, they decide against it. And uh, Solazano quickly in. Well, both both dismissals this morning, Powell and Carty, were for bad shots. Terry, um, Powell going across the line, having a what you would just say was, was a swipe. A whoop. Yeah, and um, and Carty flicking a delivery outside the leg, some straight and short fine, the short fine leg uh, hand. Which was a very good catch, by the way, from Edwards. Excellent catch. Yes, it was. And uh, so again, the Windward Islands uh, going with Athanas, Charles, Fletcher, Ambrose, Hodge, Springer, Demba, Lewis, Solazano, Edwards, and Cyrus. Good batting again. Just uh, picking up the singles. And uh, the Leeward Islands will they're going with Alzari Joseph as their captain, Daniel Durham, Hayden Walsh, Jamar Hamilton, Justin Graves, Karim Go, Karima Go, Casey Carty, Kieran Powell, Kofi James, Jeremiah Louis, and Terence Ward. Here's another uh, delivery pushed into the offside. So these these are and what do you find, Colin? A lot of these teams are kind of experimenting because you know a name that we didn't call inside there was Rakim Cornwall. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> um, that's a name that uh, we haven't called. Yeah, because he's yeah. sitting out. This uh, yeah, one. surprising he's sitting out. I'm not hope it's not an injury, and he may just be uh, sitting it out in terms of uh, uh, just resting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, because it's a it's a tournament they're looking at. It's 132 for 227 overs completed. And I suppose when you play a tournament, you, you want to give everybody a chance. Yeah, and, and it's also a, a case of, you know, you're playing a lot of games and, uh, you know, uh, Rakim Cornwall would, would uh, every now and again need, need ju just to recharge his batteries. And boy, they, they need a win here badly, the Windward Islands. Oh, yeah. They were really struggling earlier on. They, they got a win against Jamaica and, uh, you know, when I spoke to, to Fletcher, he was hoping that that would kind of turn the page for them. And uh, then they need to follow that win up with a, with a win here. And that's another good tidy delivery as he starts a new over. He's bowled well. Cyrus is coming on to the attack. North for 21. He's in a sixth over now. Could have had a wicket in the previous over and a couple of deliveries, uh, especially bowling to Hamilton. So I think he would like this matchup here now. <laughs> he almost got <laughs> killed over there. I'm not sure what happened, <laughs> why he didn't put his hands to feel the ball, and he almost got knocked over. So Hamilton, who's on 38 now, waits. That's a good shot. Yeah, well, he cut it in the air. Yeah, and but uh, he found the gap and he knew exactly where he wanted to place it. And again, you know, you, you just had the batsman in trouble. You want to come back again and, and really produce a good delivery against him. 
see if you could get him to, to play another rash shot. Now you've got him to play the cut shot, playing in the air, but it was well away from anyone. So he's off strike now. So that's part of, the, I suppose, the whole consistency theory that we talk about so much in, in cricket is bowlers to be consistent, batsmen to be consistent. And even the field, you want fielders to be consistent. If the ball is there to stop, stop it. So he has Hamilton again. And right back. And again, Hamilton doesn't go very far. You know, he's right there, he just waits. He almost just stands there and uh, waits for the ball to spin. You really have to bowl a different length to him because he's so small and, and close to the ground. Quicker delivery and uh, another comfortable single. So that takes them to 136 now for two at the end of 28 overs. And uh, they're certainly building a, a good foundation here for, for the, the rest of the batting to come. If these two can, can stay safe for another seven, eight overs and get the score up to 170 or thereabouts, I think uh, it would be a good platform. Uh, for the last 15 overs or so, uh, definitely we, we'd say the last 10 overs where they can really, if they just have two or three wickets down, they can attack this uh, Windward Islands bowlers and, and try to get the score up to 275 or thereabouts. I think that is going to take a lot of getting. If the Leeward Islands can get to 275, it will take an almighty uh, bit of batting from the Windward Islands to get there. Well, the, the have to at some point in time you want to believe they will change gears hamilton is into the 40s he's on 40 Gears is on 67 at the non-strikers end we're talking a little earlier about graves and and his uh, he's been pretty consistent got a, a 50 against the a half century against the trying to be red force but got a couple other 30s I just think he's another one who needs to carry on, you know, and get... This is an ideal opportunity here for him now uh, to go on to get 100. He needs to record 100 yeah, and, and not give it away. Yeah, he's on 67. And, uh, you know, so he he probably is seeing that, I, I would imagine, by now he must be thinking triple figures and uh, trying to fashion the next 33 or so runs, how he's going to get those runs without taking too many risks. Now they put the man at that straightest midwicket because Hamilton played the last ball in the air there. And they're going to pinch a quick single. That's good anticipation again. And uh, Fletcher not able to get around in time. Yeah, but, but good cricket on, on the part of Graves and Hamilton because they knew exactly. It's a nice understanding these two have now. Um, but you could see uh, from the time he played that ball, he was looking for the single. He knew what he wanted to do. Then again, he's on the back foot, just right back in front of the stumps, using the full depth of the crease there. Yeah, 76 this pair have added so far, and, and they've done it pretty comfortably. They've had one or two alarms, but in general... I think uh, they both have batted well. Hamilton getting a promotion in the order coming up at number four. And I was also making the point he tends to bat more than number six. But he's coming at number four and uh, he's played a good steady hand. Trying to force this one again. and uh, But they're running. They trust each other. From the time they, they make the call, uh, both batsmen are on the move and uh, they pinch another single. 139 for two now. 29 completed. And uh, they continue to, to bat well here, both Hamilton and Graves. As uh, we see the, I think it's, it's another drinks break because they're turning towards the yep. pavilion and I'm not seeing the guys with the drinks, etc., making their way out. I'm seeing Ralphie <laughs> running <laughs> with the broom in hand and uh, a dustpan to sort of to sweep all the excess dirt from the pop increase into a little bit of a, a dustpan there yes and so he, there he is Ralphie 
and so he's going to sweep all that uh, excess dirt there. So at 139 for two after 29 overs, it's a drinks break. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to take a break here ourselves.
So 139 for two is where we are, 29 overs. Hamilton, you could just sense Colin, he's trying to really break free here. And they got two comfortably in the end. Yeah, he's uh, he's a kind of player who like to be tied down, uh, and and you look at 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 his uh, uh, what's happening with him. He's on 44 now, uh, from something like what uh, 67 deliveries. It's you know you would think Hamilton f on 44, he would have been more like maybe 48 deliveries. So it's it's just a matter of time before he opens up and he's he's striking a four. Mm -hmm. uh, he good shot from him. Give him a little bit of air by Cyrus, but he went after it and he lifted it. Let's say uh, he deliberately lifting it over extra cover down to the boundary for four. That's a good shot. But he, I think you're right. He's going to start to look to change gears now because we are into over number thirty, and he's got twenty overs. Still a lot of, of overs left or a lot of balls left. Um, so it's no need for him to take undue risk. I think he's got to bat properly, but bat a little bit more positive in terms of trying to get some runs. Yeah, the running between the wickets has been a feature as well. They've done very well uh, running between the wickets. He's again trying to force it through the offside. And, and that has been that has kept the scoreboard ticking over. Uh, uh, even in the periods when they were consolidating, they were still able to rotate strike um, fairly regularly. They, they need to cur carry that run rate up from 4.46 to at least 5.1, 5.2. Well, they got one here. They're going to get a second. Yes, they turn them quickly. And uh, they are back for the second run for the second time in the over. There's a good, um, there's a good uh, over for the Leeward Islands. But Hamilton, uh, that's his 50. Mm -hmm. uh, splendid 50 from 70 balls with six fours and deserve it too because he's batted really well that's uh. it oh, and just as he get it he gave it away well 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 you saw a dismissal like that from Lytton Das this morning and uh, he just turned a ball on the onside he was trying to do a similar thing and uh, he goes court and ball to Cyrus. And as we put imagine, just reward for Cyrus. Hamilton goes for 50. It's 147 now for three. Yeah, again, a very, very soft dismissal. It's all three dismissals, really, today has been soft. Powell playing across the line to Lewis. Then Carty flicking a delivery just uh, outside the line of the legs, some straight into short, fine legs. And, and then Hamilton looking to push a delivery that didn't really come on to him. Hit it straight back into the bowler's hand, and it's the end of, of Jamar Hamilton. Just as he got to his 50, maybe Ruskin, um, he sort of just... Uh, you know, as he got to his 50, just a little bit of relief. and um, But you could see him walking off there very, very dejected. He knows he should have done better. Mm -hmm. And that ball, really and truly, he should have, he could have put it wherever he wanted. But he put it straight back into the bowler's hand. And a simple catch for Cyrus. But really, a very, very disappointed end. And, and he's quarreled with himself going off the field. And he's probably quarreled with himself all the way into the dressing room as well. Yeah, very disappointing end to a splendid innings uh, by him and uh, but you can see why it, it probably m meant a lot to him to, to stick around for a little while longer and see because he was just starting to really uh, open up his arms you know he was really trying to uh, get on with things a little bit more stepping up a gear and uh, but you know he you know what he's probably saying to himself there, Colin? You know, maybe I should have just given that a full treatment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of just trying y to... Yeah, he was just looking to work it, wasn't he? Onto yeah. the onside. And he hit it straight back into the bowler's hand. I thought he played a little bit too early. But what that has done, Ruskin, it's brought the dynamite uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. into the, the crease now for him to... Um, push it on a bit. And you would expect Hayden Walsh is going to be looking to push this score on. And, uh, you know, get that run rate up to somewhere just over five. Yep. It was those 85 runs they added for that third wicket. Here's a ball play there. That's a brilliant catch. Did he catch? Did he hit the bat? Well, well, well. Um, Atanas took a blinder of a catch there in the left hand. One-handed. 
The question is, was there bat on it? Well, I think Ampar <coughs> Basarat has come across Ampar Brafweet. Uh, to yes, he's given him out. Yep. Yeah, I think the the thing was, did it? Did he catch it clean? Did he really get it before it touched the ground? And I think Ampar Basarat went just to confirm that with Ampar Brafweet, who uh, was much closer and, and side on. Uh, so he would have uh, seen, but really a good delivery from Cyrus. He had a little bit of bounce in it, bounce and turn. And um, let's just have a look at it here, Cyrus. The first delivery to Hayden Ward. Look at that bounce. It spun into him, the leg spinner. And um, Athen is a blinder, as you said. And Hayden Ward Jr., his consistency has come to an end because he makes his way back to the pavilion. Uh, first ball. Court Athenes bowled Cyrus without scoring. Cyrus will be on a hat trick at the start of his next over because he's now taking two for 33 from seven. And not only that, and that, that is the, the end of the over. So it's 147 now for four. At, at the start of the last over, Colin, at, it was 139 for two. <laughs> yep, so eight runs coming off the first four deliveries and then the final two. Both were wickets, the wicket of Hamilton. And then the wicket of Hayden Walsh Jr. Very first ball. And the new batsman coming in is Terence Ward. So he's uh, coming into the team. Hasn't been uh, featuring Terence Ward. But uh, certainly featuring today. You look at the last game with the Leewards against uh, Toronto Tobago team. There was Powell, Graves, Carty, Gore, Walsh, Hamilton, Cornwall, James, Joseph, Durham, and O'Shane Thomas. So they've made a few changes to, to the team today. And Terence Ward is one who's come into the, 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 the team. Colin, it has to be said, cricket could be such... Do you know they say cricket is like the greatest leveler? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know. Well, you, you, you start, no matter what you're doing, one <laughs> innings, uh, Ruskin, your next innings, you start the top, yeah. <laughs> And uh, again, Graves continue going along nicely, isn't he? Yeah, Graves is uh, the scoreboard. Is, uh, I don't know, the, the, the two quick wickets shown off the scoreboard. And, uh, 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 but what a, what a <laughs> turn of events here. Uh, because uh, they looked so at ease and so settled, yep. you, 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 would have, you know, we were thinking maybe 275 or thereabouts, but uh, no. Um, they've got a bat well from here on uh, to get to 250 and, and Justin Graves is going to play a very important role in that. Can he, if he can stick around, then they should be okay. Uh, not only does he have to stick around, he has to up the tempo as well to get them to, to that coveted 250 target. Uh, but another 101 runs away. He wants a single, not there, could... Uh, all of a sudden, everybody is lifted. But that was such a brilliant catch from Athenas to uh, really give the team a, a, a big boost. Um, my thing was whether he had gotten the inside edge. And uh, the umpire was convinced he did. But uh, that was the other thing I wanted to ask you. We didn't see any delivery do anything like that. No, before. no that's right. There was, there was bounce. There was turn. I think it caught Hayden Walsh by surprise as well. No, don't, don't, don't forget, that was his first delivery he was facing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think he expected the bounce and the turn. It, in particular, the bounce. It uh, suddenly rose on him. And that one went in the air a little bit, but again, able to get off the mark. So uh, Ward is off and running. Yes, so Ward f getting off the mark with his forced delivery that he's faced. Just one run away from 150. Demba in his six over. He's been steady, hasn't he? None for 14. One delivery left for him to complete over number six. Feels well to his own bowling to keep, uh, the to keep Ward on strike. That's where I start the next over, and I'm sure Cyrus will be happy with that. It's 149 for four now after 31. Yep, 149 for four. Graves is still there on 69 not out from 81 deliveries. He's uh, 
in the last, I would say, 15, 20 minutes, uh, he hasn't been getting much of the strike. And not only is he, when he is in strike, hasn't been able to get the ball to the boundary. But uh, he's rotating the strike nicely and he will need to continue to do that. But you have to think now, he's got to up the tempo because both Hamilton and Walsh were, were two batsmen that can certainly push the scoring along up the rate. Um, and, and, he, and, and that would have been fine for Graves because he could have gone along working the ball for singles, etc. and wait for the bad ball. No, he's got to take the initiative. He's got to, uh, because he's got Ward with him who's now coming to bat. So you've got to think that Graves has got to up the tempo and try and get the scoring run rate uh, beyond five. And uh, that was the hat-trick ball. Uh, but it came off the pad, did it? No, he actually got bat on it. So the 150 is up. Mm -hmm. Still a long way to get to 250, 275. They still should be aiming at around 275. It's going to be a tall order, but that's what they should be aiming for. And again, they're going to pinch another well-judged single. So this is, uh, we really did say, the running between the wickets today uh, has been excellent uh, between the, well, most of the batsmen. Uh, especially that partnership between Hamilton and Graves. Uh, they really push the Windward Islands fielders. Yes, they were thinking of another single there, but this time Springer was alert to what was happening and came in quickly. It's 151 on the board now. Where do they go from here now? That's good bowling from Cyrus. So I think he, I thought he saw him coming and just held it back slightly, and um, he wasn't to the pitch. He was Ward had to just uh, defend it. This has been a good spell from Cyrus, two for thirty-five. Oh, <laughs> soon as you say it's a good spell, he bowls <laughs> one outside the line at the leg stump. Thank you, Mr. Cyrus. <laughs> So he bowls one outside the line of the leg stump and swept by Terence Ward. So he gets his first boundary. 155 for four. Yeah, excellent. It was a good shot too. He didn't try to hit it too hard. He just used the pace that the bowler uh, gave him. And he just placed it away from uh, Ambrose at that short fine leg position. Never had a chance. tries to go across the line again got get a single he will get the single in the end uh, but he took his life in his hands there went right across the leg spinner and uh, headed down to the mid wicket for one he inches along now and uh, he's quickly on to seven it's 156 for four yes and seven runs coming from the over from Cyrus uh, is the heavy roller at the Queen's Park Oval and the dependable buggy that uh, comes out with the tarpaulin if there's rain let's hope there's none today there's no immediate threat of rain and uh, let's just hope that uh, we get a full day of cricket in yeah we, 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 we I think this game there's so much promise in this game uh, that it could be a, a an interesting battle at the end um, later on this afternoon uh, you would hate for the rain to spoil it. Well, Ward looking, he seems to favor that sweep shot because we've seen him play it a number of times. He's only faced, what, 11 deliveries or 10 deliveries so he's far. He's sweep shot about three or yeah, four At times. least <laughs> three or four times he's played the sweep shot. One was very productive when he got a boundary for it. But outside of that, he's... Uh, been looking to get and and you can understand why because Demba the off spinner is bowling with a short fine leg and uh, forward square leg there's no one a deep backward square so I think Ward has seen that and figures if he can make a good connection he will get a boundary yeah and he, he must be thinking uh, he's probably looking to see where he could be you know he could be very productive with his stroke play and that is one of the areas once he gets it maybe just to the right of the umpire um, at square leg he probably feels he has 
a chance at a boundary. Uh, so Demba has to be careful. You don't want to give him anything too short uh, to work with. And he doesn't want to be too full either. So 157, you would think if they, they need to go at probably to, er, to up that run rate. Single had to hurry. Oh, he did. He did have to hurry. At uh, one stage, Ruskin, he didn't look as if he was going to get there. Uh, and I thought, Athanas, uh, I'm not sure if he got his feet set to, to, to send in the return. Uh, he knew the batsmen were running, and but he just didn't set his feet and really rocket the return into Johnson Charles. Just gave what enough time to slide in. Another steady over from Demba. Just two runs coming from. He hasn't been successful in terms of the wicket taken column. But you look at him. None for 16 from just one delivery left to complete over number 7. So as a captain, you would want that any day if he's going to go for just 2.2 uh, 2 .2, 2 .2 and over. He would be happy with that. The wicket would always be nice. There goes Ward again, sweeping. <laughs> He is probably worked out. <laughs> this is probably going to be my most productive shot. <laughs> and, and he does well. 159 for four after 30, 33 overs. Is, there we, is the scorecard Powell 11, 14 to Carty, 50 to Hamilton, North to Walsh. Very f just one delivery he faced. Graves not out on 71. And Terence Ward, who's just come in, he's on nine not out. 159 for four from 33 overs so you've got what another 17 overs and if they continue at this scoring rate there's the projected score at 241 as the current run rate is 4.82 that has to increase uh, I would say to maybe 5.3 at least for them to get close to that 250 275 mark is 250 going to be enough Ruskin it could be it could be here he is again with a quicker delivery. Um, two for 40 now, Cyrus, in his ninth over. He's bowled really well. Uh, as a matter of fact, the two for 40 might be doing him justice at all because I thought he bowled a lot better than that. And uh, just, uh, well, that's his fault. You can't not feel well to your own bowling. And uh, so you have nobody else to blame. And I thought he just missed the ball he, he, he had it covered and if you look at him and, and maybe you could look at his action his, his right his, his left leg when he plants it it tends to collapse a little bit if he stays a little upright could probably get a little more bonks as well but just as I say that he produces a ripple <laughs> yeah he's uh <coughs> he's a good leg spinner what I like about him is his control and um, I would expect, uh, because of his height, he would get some bounce as well. And if he gets a, a wicket that can assist him, he, he may very well, uh, you know, do justice. Yeah. Um, so 161 now for four. So they haven't really gotten away. And, and I think Fletcher would be very happy with his bowlers. Uh, there's Ward taking the initiative now because uh, they've got to push on. This over only four and so far in this first five deliveries. And when you think of the previous over from Denver, just two runs coming. And, you know, seven runs from <coughs> 1.5 overs. That's not good enough. Yeah, they already have to find ways to, to score heavily and not take too many risks. Doing so. Single to end the over. So five in coming from that over from Cyrus. And after 34 overs, it's 164 for four. And that represents a, a, a bit of a mixed bag here. Where they got off to a good start. Uh, then they had to consolidate. And uh, they got a very, very good partnership between Graves and Jamal Hamilton. But then as soon as Hamilton got to his half century, um, he gave it away a simple quarter and ball chance. And then the very next ball, uh, the dangerous Hayden Walsh Jr. 
uh, was out caught off the inside edge onto his body, uh, but it's a catch by Athanas that was a brilliant diving catch with in his left hand. Yeah, the catch and the, the delivery was excellent because it was a delivery that spun and bounced. It's not the, the kind of delivery Redskin you would want for a first ball. You'd want a little bit of looking at the pitch, yep. see what's happening, put bat and ball. But this was a snort. It, it bounced, it turned back into him. And as you rightly said, I think it, it may have just got a glove um, from the body onto the glove and then Athenes as well. Had to dive forward full stretch and took it in the left hand. Brilliant catch. And here he goes with that sweep shot again. Much too full, I would imagine. He'd probably be better advised driving a ball like that uh, through the offside. Or even to the onside. If he gets around it long, you know, early enough, he can uh, manipulate the field that way. But he just tend to go right across a full-length delivery. That's good feeling. Man there at that uh, short mid-wicket is Cyrus so he's in addition to doing his part with the ball he's doing his part in the field as well well Ward comes down the track it was only a matter of time before he tried to get after Demba because so far four deliveries had gone and, and when you think about it uh, the two overs before there was only seven runs scored and this time Ward deciding enough is enough came down the track and lifted it high over long off that's a very very good shot from Terence Ward kept the shape very well yeah he goes looking to sweep again not sure if he got a top edge here but he they take a signal let's wait and see the umpire signal there is no signal so runs for Yep, it's it's a, a single for Ward. So he's on to, what, 920 now. And uh, after 35 overs, it's 171 for four. And this is a, a, a nice little cameo here being played by Ward as he quickly on to 20 from 23 deliveries. Graves are the other, and it's been the constant. 72 from 88 balls. So he has already kept this innings together. So Cyrus is going to continue his final over, over number 36 coming up. And it will be Cyrus's 10th and final over. It's going to be bowling to Ward. Ward who's decided he's got to get a move on. And uh, he has to. Somebody out there needs to start to try and get after the Windward Islands bowlers. Another, another wide this time, but uh, again, another sweep shot. <laughs> so he's almost exclusively looking to score from the sweep shot. And uh, it would be interesting to see the length that Cyrus bowls to him. Keeps pitching it up. That's good, but he can't feel to his own bowling. Uh, that's, his, mm. that's a cardinal sin there. Yeah, because he saw um, Ward coming down the track. He pushed it a little quicker delivery. And uh, Ward couldn't get under it. So he just had to defend more or less pushing it out on the offside and there was uh, Cyrus coming across couldn't feel his own bowling short this time and uh, given the treatment but again because the protection is out there uh, they're limiting them to just the one run one seven four for four we're in over number 36 Maybe he was reaching for that one was Ward trying to trying to chop it past the point just to the left of point. Still a slip in Athens. See if we have gas in the building, so at least <laughs> we should get food. Well here is a delivery that is on driven from Ward. Nice on drive as he was getting onto that front foot. And getting to the pitch nicely. So Justin Graves is going to continue facing up to the bowling of Cyrus. 
Well, he gets an outside edge. Driving at one. Took the outside edge. And it's not going to go into the boundary. So all of a sudden, in the last maybe few overs, Justin Graves haven't... You, you've not seen him rescue how he started with, with the fluency he had. Uh, he's lost a lot of that. I think he's dropped the anchor to some degree and uh, is not prepared to take any risks at all. Um, he's using up a few dot balls, but he's still going at a pretty good clip. And so to pinch another quick single. Another good piece of running. Yeah, that has been a feature of the, this inning so far, especially with Graves out there. He's already been uh, supported, and, and I think they've worked out once the call is made, trust your teammate, and respond. It's the end of another over. 36 completed. It's 178 for four. Two for 52 to Cyrus. So which is good bowling, and, and I think, uh, and like I said, I don't think the, 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 the figures actually does his bowling justice, given the way he bowled and uh, the way he was able to limit scoring. Here's Demba. He's going to come in for his ninth over, the over number 37. They go through for another quick single. That really should not be a single. I mean, it's good running on the part of Ward, but you have to think that um, the man out there at that... Uh, Kevin Hodge. Yeah, Hodge at that short point position. He's got to do better. He's got to prevent them. Uh, the only concern he may have is that there's no protection behind him. So he's got to be careful not to come in too quickly. It's Ward sweeping, but straight into the hands of the man at the back square. Another very soft dismissal, isn't it? Well, he's played that sweep shot now about ten times uh, since he came to the crease. And uh, he just uh, repeated it once too often there. And uh, he goes for 22, uh, but he was committed to that sweep shot. He hit it well. Unfortunately, he hit it straight down the throat of uh, the man out in the deep there and uh, he has to go for 22. Yes so Terence Ward makes his long trek back to the pavilion trying to up it the tempo a little bit from he but um, in so doing hit the ball straight down the throat of the deep backward square fielder Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate for him because he, he made good contact. You know, you, you know, you you forget if he had hit it either side of uh, the man at that deep square position, uh, he might have gotten away with it. Uh, but unfortunately for him, was it Lewis down there um, who took a, a smart catch? Yeah. In the deep. Well, it was hit straight to him. But um, yeah, it thinks like it is. It might very well be Lewis. But, uh, uh, so, but but it's a good wicket at, at this stage for the Windward Islands as they continue to keep things in perspective. Karim Gore is the new batsman. Actually, it was Edwards who was taking a catch out in the deep there. Yeah, Larry Edwards. That's his second catch. So the new man in, as we said, is Karima Go, and he's immediately off the mark, just working this delivery down to the deep mid-wicket position. Getting on the front foot, you could see him, and then as that ball may have just turned into him slightly, he was uh, working it down to that deep mid-wicket. Solozano is out there, and they pick up an easy single. Graves has seemed to have lost his momentum, hasn't he? Yeah, he he's, uh, he's lost his rhythm. He's lost his ability to put bat on to ball in terms of finding the gaps. The timing has seemed to have left him a little bit. 
But the one thing you don't want, Colin, is for him to get frustrated. You know, after all this hard work, to just get frustrated and, and, and do a power, just put your head in the air and swing the bat. And uh, so I think he has to play through this. Yeah, he's, he's got to bat deep, yeah. doesn't he? He's got to bat deep into the, these 50 overs. Yeah, you would think, and, and uh, I think once see if he can just get, well, it's the end of the over from Demba, another good over, uh, just three runs coming from it, but more importantly, he picked up that wicket of Terence Ward for 22, and it's 181 for five after 37. Um, he's got to, the, the, the quicker he can get to 100, it's the better for him and for the team, mm -hmm. because I think that's going to be on his mind. He's now 22 runs away from 100. He doesn't want to, to use up, say, 10 overs, 8, 10 over, eight, nine, ten overs, trying to get to that 100 when, when he would come into the last 4 or 5 overs having 100. I think he needs to get to that 100 uh, maybe in the next 5, 6 overs so he can give himself a, a, a good platform to launch, to launch uh, an attack mm -hmm. on the Windward Island bowlers. Well, the sun is out back out in all its brilliance here as we enter this final phase of this, of this innings. Still have another 13 overs to go. And uh, but y you look at y a green again, Graves just picking up the single. So he's now turned over the strike uh, now to Gore to see if Gore can up the scoring. Y you haven't made a comment, Ruskin. I was waiting for it on the new bowler. Oh, yeah. Well, well Andrew Fletcher, he's, uh, he's shown in the last game that he can round his arm a little bit. He's bowling leg like bricks. Yeah, he's bowling leg like spin. So he must have been practicing in the nets or something like that. And uh, he's he's even got a slip in place. So they're looking to take wickets. The Windward Islands. The volcanoes. So we're trying to convince the the batsman at the other end to. Drone in honey, come after me, and uh, let's see. But uh, to his credit, he's actually pitching the boys in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, it hasn't been uh, this first uh, three deliver four deliveries haven't been all that bad. It's been um, on a good on a good spot, uh, just on or around the off stump. That one he gave a little bit more air, and uh, there was uh, Graves working it down to deep mid wicket. And he, he's not afraid to give it a little bit of air as well. Look, he's giving it some air. So this has not been a bad <laughs> first five deliveries from Andrew Fletcher. It's always surprising when you a guy like Fletcher comes into the attack. Look at, look at the amount of air he's giving that ball. He's not afraid. Yeah, he's gone for four runs in his first over. But what is good about someone like Fletcher? You you don't expect this of him. You you know, I, I, yes, he bowled in the last game. He picked up two for seven in one point two overs. But you know, I'm 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 a little sub. But he's obviously feeling confident, and he's been obviously practicing as well. Um, his legs been bowling, and he's doing a, a, a pretty tidy job of it. One hundred eighty-five for five after thirty-eight overs now, and uh, very very. Uh, delicately poised at the moment. They need um, a few big overs to get them going again. We thought Hamilton was going to provide that, but then he got himself out right after he passed his 50. They lost another wicket, the very next ball, and then a short while ago, they lost Ward. Uh, so it's been a, a mixed bag so to some degree from the Leeward Islands batsmen, they won the toss up to, to bat this morning, and I'm sure they would have been thinking 250, 260 easily. Hasn't turned out that way, at least not just yet. Demba in his final over. That's a good bit of feeling, brilliant bit of feeling there. Looks to be that man, is Fletcher. it Ho Fletcher? Yeah. Skipper Fletcher, leading by example, dive into his left. I want to ask him about the captaincy and, and how he's adapting to it. And he said, whatever the team needs, he will do. And the team needs a leg spinner. So <laughs> he's <the> up to <laughs> the ball leg spin as well when Cyrus is completed. Two runs for Graves.
and because he's bowling his leg spin and he's getting through his over so quickly, time is not no. much of a factor for them. They're, they're, they're pretty much on course. Especially if they can finish off these bowlers, these overs quickly. Demba has it's also bowling beautifully. Yeah, when you think of it, uh, one for 30 and 9.4, that's been excellent. Larry Edward, he bowled none for 37 from 10, but uh, didn't pick up a wicket. So very similar type figures. You would think uh, Demba going for about uh, five or six runs less, unless, of course, his next delivery is a boundary. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, uh, as commentators, those things happen. You see just how good he's bowling, and then all of a sudden he gets uh, he smacked out to the ground yep. for six. Well, it's been a good spell from Kenneth Demba. Ten overs, no maidens, but one for 31. Yeah, another good, another fine spell. Coming to an end here, 189 for 5 after 39. Just four runs coming from uh, that over. And uh, again, the, the Leeward Islands having difficulty here, so really pushing on here and uh, getting the, the kind of tempo that they need in the innings. Uh, but it's been a, a, a good bowling effort from the Windward Islands. Spearheaded by this man, the ace leg spinner, Andre Fletcher. I like your word, your word of ace leg spinner, mm -hmm. Andre Fletcher. I don't, I don't know how the two of them go together. But uh, I'm just going to see Oki Raskin and move on. He's doing well. He's, he's doing exceptionally well. Yeah, and, and no doubt of his, his first over cost him four runs. And well, make that ten. Yeah, but uh, yeah, make that ten now <laughs> because uh, it's a huge hit uh, from Gore. Gore decided to go after Fletcher. Fletcher giving it. He's not afraid to give it some air, and he's basically has been saying to the batsman, "Well, if you want runs, you gotta come after me." And um, it was given some air, and Gore took advantage of that and hit it high over long on. And uh, he was daring him to, to repeat it. Yep. Do it again. Uh, but this time, Gore decided uh, not to risk it all and uh, just take the single. So, what can they get the rest of the way? Well, Chris missed out there. A short delivery. Hit it straight to the mid-wicket position. And uh, didn't get a run. Again, they have to hurry, but uh, they're going to get the single all the same. So good anticipation again. Good running between the wickets. Good communication. And uh, trust. Trust in each other. Trust in the call. And, and that's the thing, running between the wickets could be simple, you know. Uh, another short ball from Fletcher, but not put away. Uh, so his second over comes to an end. No wicket just yet. Not for 12. For him, from his two overs, it's 197 for 5. So 40 overs have been completed. So we'll be going into the third power play now. Les, uh, your good friend Lester is going to come back and join you, Colin. Be, be guarded with your words, please. <laughs> One nine seven for five. So we are into the third power play. And uh, <laughs> so it's going to be. Let's see. Had an enforced change of bowling because. Demba is out of the attack and Kavim Hodge is back in the left arm spinner Kavim Hodge and it's going to be bowling to the right handed Justin Graves so Kavim Hodge wrong the wicket to the right handed Graves a little bit of a false start
They're looking for two. Are they going to come back? Yes, they will. That's good running. That's been a feature of the Windward Islands batting. It's the, the running, Lester, as I, I say welcome back to you. It's the running between the wickets of, of not only this pair here, but in general. Um, you know, you looked at, at Carty when he was batting with Graves, Hamilton with Graves, uh, you know, and Graves has been the, the common denominator there. But uh, it's been good, uh, the running. You see, Hodge is going to continue. It's Graves. Moves up to 84, but uh, make that 85 as it's pushed down to Springer at long on. So I, w I was making the point to, to Ruskin that Graves, he's, he's got to get that 100 out of the way, you know, because you don't want to use up a lot of dot balls and trying to get to his 100. He needs to get it as quickly as possible and then more or less uh, carry the rest of the innings. Yes, he was ahead of um, the bowling. It's batting. His score was ahead. And now he's way behind. He's 19 runs behind the amount of balls. That's good running. That's really good running. Oh, and he's hit. He's hit yeah. Gore. He aimed for the stumps, but uh, he's hit Gore. I think Hodge is having a, was having a little bit of a laugh about it. But uh, I tell you, Gore is not... <laughs> happy because that hit him somewhere lower back well it's for up to the, the it's for the umpires now to make a decision as to whether or not he ran in front of the well. stump and and as a result of that he was struck um I, I don't i don't think i'm seeing a lot of appeal there are two yeah, umpires no, aren't coming uh, yeah. together so it seems to be over and dusted, over and well, they they opted now to take uh, a drink break because it is it the end of the over. It appears uh, it's the end of the over. Yes, it is the end of the over. <coughs> so just uh, just having a, a a look back here. Forty overs have now been bowled. 198 for 5 Graves is on 85 Gore is on 11 and um, it means that uh, with the drinks break on nice brilliant sunshine here at the Queen's Park Oval we've got uh, actually it's not the end of the over three deliveries have been bowled uh, from Hodge in this over and um, so, but they've just opted to take a drinks break. So we're going to take a break here, uh, just clarifying things here at the Queen's Park Oval. The Windward Islands Volcanoes, they are in the field. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they are at the this point in time, the 200 is up. It's 202 for 5 off of 40.3 overs.
Well, the just about getting ready to resume. Go is okay, so he's going back to the non-strikers end. As Hodge is going to look to continue. He's had three deliveries left before Go was hit going through for a quick single by Hodge. Hodge sending the return to the bowler's end. Uh, he actually ran to his right to do the feeling himself off of his own bowling. Had a shy at the non-striker's end. The end in which Go was running. He struck him on the back. Went down for the count. Did Go. But all is well with him now. And he's after that drinks break. And he's going to continue. But he's going to be watching Graves facing up to Hodge. So Graves on 88 from 104 deliveries. You'd want him to up that tempo a little bit. He's going to pick up a single. I think he's... I think, Lester, you're looking at, at Justin Graves now. He has that 100 in, in his mind. He has his, his sights set on that 100. But as I was saying, he's got to be careful. He can't use up too many balls in trying to get to that 100. The hallmark of his earlier part, the earlier part of his innings was hitting the ball in the space, Colin. And now he's hitting the ball directly to long on and to long off, and he's just ambling for a single. He's not trying to get into the spaces. Ball them! So, go looking to give himself some room, backed away, and the ball crashed into the stumps, and it's the end of Karima Go. Look at him. He was way outside the line of the leg stump, backing away, trying to hammer it through the offside. He missed. Hodge hit. And it's the end of Gore. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes are now 203 for six after 41 overs. Well, the way they started, Colin, I, I actually thought that they would get to over 260, 280. But it's, it's, they've been moving ahead really at a pedestrian pace. And um, the, the, the given one, if you just reach, will think that the, the bowling is, is way above them. And that's not the impression. I got in the beginning, and especially as uh, Justin Graves, he has been there from the beginning. Um, I, I thought he should be pushing the score on a little bit. And um, Alzari Joseph is not one who uh, mocks a wrong when fast bowling is, uh, is, is on show. I'm not so sure of him as a spin bowler batsman, but I know when fast bowlers are on and they want to bounce to him, he, he, he seems to relish hooking and pulling. Well, Alzari Joseph, as you're saying, is the new man coming in. and uh, But he's at the non-striker's end because it was the final delivery in the over from Hodge that picked up the wicket. And Andrew Fletcher is going to continue, so he's opted to keep the spin going rather than go to one of his paces. Lester, what, what's your thoughts as we look at Fletcher? <laughs> a quicker delivery to Graves. Uh, that was almost like a medium pace. A slow medium pace with delivery. With a short run up. Yeah, and um, Graves couldn't do very much with it. He just, uh, I think he was caught a little off guard. Yeah, he's cutting a delivery. They're going to get a single because Springer doesn't field it cleanly. And they get a single. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, interesting that he hasn't gone back to Springer or to Sh Lewis or, you know, one of his uh, earlier uh, pacer pacers. So we see a little bit of a change in the field. They've opted to take that man out from deep backward square and they've put him towards mid-wicket. So it's, he's not got that protection deep on the leg side, except, of course, for a deep mid-wicket and uh, long on. Another <laughs> delivery that is pushed through quickly to Joseph. So he's off the mark. So all of a sudden, Fletcher, is some of these deliveries, he's just and it's making... Keeping low. Yeah, it's keeping a little bit low as well. He's pushing them through. Giving it some air and Graves is going to pick up a single. So he's into the 90s now is Justin Graves. 
just 10 runs away from his 100. From very early, uh, you could see. And Alzari Joseph, oh my word. You expect that from him. Once Fletcher gives that ball any sort of air, Alzari Joseph is going to go after him. This wasn't so much giving it air. It was pushed through, but it was short. And Joseph got onto the back foot. And what I tell you, when, when he hits the ball, it stays hit. He's a fast bowler. He's big and strong. Two captains. Well... Good delivery from Fletcher this time. Not giving it here, but pushing it through and uh, Joseph was equal to it. So the end of the over, 42 overs have been bowled. It's 212 yeah. now for six. Fletcher has not made up his mind if he's bowling back at the arm or if he's bowling medium pace. But again, he's a wicket keeper that can really bat and uh, opening batsman for Trinidad, for, for the West Indies and for many of the franchises he would have played for. So um, I, I didn't know he can bowl at all. But it's the strangest thing, um, Colin. Uh, David Williams from Trinidad is a good back of the arm bowler as well. Yeah, like, like Springer. And, 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 and yeah. I would let you. Uh, the loud appeal goes up. Not out, says the umpire. I'd let you learn at uh, Derek Murray. If he has to bowl, he bowls like spin. Like spin. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is with wicket keepers. Yeah. Is Ganesh uh, Mahbir a wicket keeper? Was no, no, you, you, no. Um, go easy, Lester. <laughs> Take your time. Speeding? Yeah, I think you're speeding all of a sudden. <laughs> I think you need to slow down. I yeah, just wondering if it's something with back and No, the no, I think you need to slow down a little. We're talking wicked keepers here who Mac somehow who somehow bowl leg yeah. spin and things like that. So Alzari Joseph is at the non striker's end. He's certainly not a leg spinner. He's probably easily the, the quickest bowler in the region now. Yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh Quicker delivery from Hodge, but uh, flat. And Graves, he's seeing that ball pretty big now. He's just pushing it out to long off and picks up another single. So he goes to 92. 213 for six. Is it that he's going to be getting a single? Is that is that the focus, Colin? Well, I think, as I said, I, he's slowed down a lot in terms of uh, he's been pushing the ball around. You, you're not seeing the big shots from him again. But Even that to long on, he was to long off. He was just pushing it uh, back up along the the uh, to the right of the bowler. Joseph has gone for a big one. That's too short, Mr. Hodge. That's too short. You cannot bowl Alzari Joseph that type of length. Uh, he's going to smack it. And he, this, uh, look at that. That's too short. And Alzari Joseph said, thank you very much. He said it high over the deep mid-wicket position. And um, Hodge has got to either, you know, I would much prefer, let's say, if he's going to take it up to Alzari Joseph. Let right. Alzari Joseph come on the front foot yes. and try to hit it over the top. Yes, no, uh, but again, Colin, let's go back to uh, Graves. If Graves continue to bat like this, eventually a lot of overs going to be wasted. A lot of balls well, going to be wasted. The, the, th the thing is, if if Alzari Joseph and and the other batters can get it on, get on with yeah, it, then that's but fine. They won't. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's nice to see uh, Joseph. He has faced four balls. He's on thirteen, and that's how he has to bat. But that that means you're covering for for an, an, a, a batsman that has been in for. Well over 111 balls. Lester, let me give you some not such good news because it's all of us, it's, it's, it's bright and sunny, but there a, a, seems to be a, a dark cloud somewhere over the oval and uh, there's a drizzle now at the moment. No. So the, the ground staff is getting ready uh, and I'm wondering if it's coming from, from the back of us. Sometimes the rain tends to come from the and back, from the northern, yeah, yeah from yeah, north. When it, when, when, when it comes here, it's you, you, look, you look over the Carib stand, the Royal Bank KFC stand, that's where the rain tends to come from. But it's all but nice and bright out there. But I thought you would have gone with the Calypso over the, 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 the Lavantel Hills, but you left that alone. No, I, I, I don't pretend to be able to sing. Here's Joseph smashing this one. Delivery outside the line of the off stump and smashes it out to the deep cover position. And they pick up a single. Still, the ground staff uh, at the fire and getting ready to just in case this. Uh, but again, you're just looking at it's bright, it's sunny all around. The rain has to be. Uh, sometimes there's just this cloud hovering uh, above the oval. 
That's not a good ball from Hodge. Wide of the leg stump. And signaled a wide by the umpire. Let's have a look at it. Let's look at that down the leg side. Hodge goes wide and Graves content. Gets a single. 93 now. Uh, it's the end of the over from Hodge. He's completed his fourth over. He's been pretty expensive. One for 37. So he's been going at just about from nine four. runs and over. But at the end of 43 overs, it's 224 for six. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes having won the toss and opted to take full strike. Yeah, I think they're going at a pedestrian space in relation to where we thought they would have been, Colin. I thought they would have been advance of 224. Well, they've got 42 deliveries left. And, and, you know, if Graves and Joseph stick around a little while with 42 deliveries left, you're talking 275. But there's a lot of buts there. Yeah. You know, if Graves stays, if he gets uh, it is his 100 if and then Joseph carries stays. on, if Joseph stays as well, he hits the ball, he gives it a, a, a pretty, power. yeah. But then again, I see, again, he's a fast bowler and you expect nothing else but that from a fast bowler. Well, talking of fast bowlers, Shimon Lewis is back into the attack. So Fletcher's decided um, he's had enough and uh, he's brought Lewis back. I think Graves would be more comfortable looks uh, with the, the medium the pace or of the, yeah, that's right, with yeah. the ball coming on to the bat. Because he was placing that ball so beautifully, uh, Colin. Again, to get in close to 100, uh, some, some guys tend to hold back a bit. Um, and there's some other guys, they when they reach 94, they're looking to hit a 6. Or they reach 96, they're looking to hit a 4 or 6. It's amazing how this world is. If people who are just brave that will, will face things head on and then they, that will just milk it. So Alzari Joseph taking a strike. Alzari Joseph certainly can bat, there's no doubt about it. Has a half century at test level. That would have been against New Zealand. So yeah. So Justin Graves. Hasn't had a, a hundred at this level. And there's another single for him. They're thinking of two, but it wasn't n it's not on. So Joseph back in, in strike here. be interesting, Colin, if uh, Lewis would tempt or, or decide to challenge Alzari Joseph with a bouncer. Yeah, Justin Graves' his high score at uh, Listy Cricket is 80. It's got a, a first class 100, 114. But at, at least there is just uh, 80 is his high score. It's been oh, that's a big hit. Is it clearing the man? Boy, you bet your life it's clearing the man. It's gone down to long on in front of the pavilion. Another big hit from Alzari Joseph. Another big six. That's his third six of the innings. He's on to 23 from just nine deliveries now. Three sixes. And uh, three sixes. But look at that. Was hit beautifully, wasn't it? Nice and straight, Lester. Lovely, lovely. And really, he kept nice his... Arc. Yep. And kept his position. You can't look to take... The, you can't... You got to go just back of a length to uh, Alzari Joseph. If you go too short, he's going to get on the back foot. And if you take it too much up to him, he's going to hit you straight back over the top. He's going to get a single here. 
So the end of the over from Lewis, an expensive over, 10 runs coming from it. And after 44 overs, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they are 234 for six. Good batting from Azari Joseph. Uh, and he hits the ball, Colin, it stays hit. It's a strong man, it's a big man. Um, and then w when he's looking to just rotate the strike, he's able to do so. It says to me that he understands the game. He knows that uh, his partner on the other end is not actually pushing the game along, but he needs to have the opportunity to face uh, as many balls as possible. Um, Graves is on 95 from 114 balls. Yes, and Justin Graves back at the non-striker's end. Because played for the West Indies against Ireland in, the, in ODI we back in 2022. Played two games against the Irish in January of 2022. And made his debut for in first class cricket against the CCC or for the CCC against the Windward Islands way back in 2014. Oh, Joseph could be in trouble. I think he's gone. Well, he was looking for the single. He thought that ball might have been going more down uh, towards the square leg position. And it went straight back on the onside to Springer, who is in his follow through, just hit the stumps. And Alzari Joseph was short. There it is. He was looking. He was thinking that ball, I think, was going more square and uh, couldn't get back in time. Shama Springer on his follow through just ran hit the stumps down and it was the back of Alzari Joseph. He goes run out for 24 with a cameo of a knock just uh, facing something like uh, 11 deliveries in the end um, and it's now 234 for 6. Well, here was the captain trying to get a single so that his star batsman will be able to get a knock to get as quickly as possible to 100 and in so doing he perished. So you can actually say that Graves, in a, in a funny kind of way, was responsible for uh, his captain getting run out because that in itself was not a run. It was. It was. It was you're, you're very harsh. No, no, it's it's not. It's not that I'm harsh. It's, it's you're like you're very harsh. It's best to give him a single. Yeah, but you can't blame Graves for that. Well, if Graves was was an 110, this would not have happened. That's the point I'm making. Well, he I just pay him for himself. Well, I just think Alzari Joseph was looking for a single. I think he was. No, uh, you know why? Why would he be doing that to give Graves the strike? Yes, because well, but there's no need. But we he need to push this. Al Alzari Joseph hit is 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 comfortable with hitting boundaries, fours and sixes. Why? Why would you want well, to? Two of to, us to we need to push the score, and it's only I alone doing it. And <laughs> I, I'm not a top batsman. You are the batsman here. Oh, come on, Lester. You're yeah. harsh and. Individual. Ruskin Mark has told me that on numerous occasions, you know, you're very harsh you're individual. And I will I will apologize to Mr. Graves on your behalf. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm I just thought it was pure bad judgment. It was, I thought it was. I thought he th when the ball hit him, he thought it was going much squarer than it did. And instead of it uh, as it hit him, he took off rather we than have, thinking uh, it was going square rather than straight back up on the onside of the pitch. Except if Alzari Joseph was not a batsman, you know, he doesn't know what is a single, not a single. He knows there's a six. Here is a delivery that uh, the new batsman will be talking is actually Kofi James. And Kofi, who's been, <laughs> it's amazing with this Leeward Islands team because Kofi James has opened the batting on more than one occasion in this tournament and he's now coming to bat at number nine. So he's capable, there's no doubt about it. You talk about who is not a batsman and who's a batsman. Kofi, Kofi James can bat. He's going to pick up a couple runs. I'm sure, he's going to come back for the second. That's good running. So two more to James. Well, two getting off the mark is Kofi James with that double. 236 for seven. Think they can get up to 270, Leicester? Uh, that's th that or would depending be, on Justin Graves? Score. That's a good fighting score. Um, after he gets to the 100, he has to go ballistics. Because he ha I, I, I know how important 100 is. You have to tell the selectors in their story. But uh, he needs to move quickly onto the 100. Just a single, that's uh, 
they're gonna, not going to come back because that's a good bit of fielding cover, good cover in there. Seem to be Larry Edwards, is it yeah. down there? But to one more to the total. Interestingly enough, Shamar Singer has bowled from around the wicket. Just three runs so far in this over. Justin Graves, back on strike. He's going to pick up a single again. Just uh, playing that ball to the right of mid-wicket and immediately called for the single. Cyrus is the man at that mid-wicket position. So Graves just four runs away from his 100. That's probably six balls. And, uh, No run there for James. So, so the end of the over, 45 overs have now been bowled. And the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, they are 238 for seven. Yeah, yeah Colin, I, I am not one of those guys who believe in uh, 100 at the team's expense. I, I'm sorry, I'm not like that. Um, I, I bat and you're supposed to play for the team. And this what I'm seeing here is not a team um, exercise. This is I'm I have to get a hundred because I have to tell the selectors. Verinda Sewag, for instance, he would have passed a hundred and gone long time. He'd be on one thirty by now because a hundred didn't mean anything to him. He would hit the, the at ninety four. He has to hit a six, or at ninety six he has to hit a six or a four, and he's gone about his business because you have confidence that you confidence that you can bat. Yeah, well, can really, really, really bad as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but he's a different kind of player to oh, to, uh, to uh, Sewag and 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 the Sharma and those kind of guys. Yeah. They, they uh, Graves doesn't seem to me to be the type of player that will go aerial. Yes, I'm not saying he can't, but you know, I I get the impression he's more uh, playing the ball on uh, you know on on the carpet. No, I, I was actually I was actually talking about bravery, not necessarily hitting fours and yeah. sixes, but get along with the game. Well, it's hit it in the air, but uh, it was hit powerfully down to the deep mid-wicket. There is uh, Athanes there at that uh, mid-wicket position, but he couldn't uh, stop it. It was in the air, but it went quickly off the bat. So Graves just three runs away now from 100. 239 for seven. Brings uh, Kofi James back into strike. He's on three from four deliveries. There's James backing away and looking to spash it through the offside. Didn't time it all that well. Seemed to have come off the bottom part of the bat. So we are into over number 46 as the sun has come back brilliantly here at the Queen's Park Oval. With there was this sm slight drizzle that lasted for about 15 seconds. Not sure where that was coming from. Again, short delivery, much too short, and James backing away and then opening the face of the bat, but couldn't get it past Shamar Springer at that short third man. And they picked up one run, brings Graves back into strike. Three deliveries left in this over. He's on 97 from 116 deliveries. He settles again. That's a good shot. That may get him the boundary. And looks at that's it. That's his hundred. It was too short. It was outside the line of the off stump. And there is Justin Graves acknowledging the applause of his teammates. It was too. There was a man at deep square point, but he hit it finer uh, towards where a whitish third man would have been. There is none, and it was a really good shot from Justin Graves. He's picked up four. That's his hundred. Uh, Justin Graves, a hundred from 117 deliveries. It's been a really super knock from him. Uh, it's it, you. You look at him. He's played good cricketing shots yes. throughout this innings. Uh, he struck eight fours. We talked about him not hitting the ball in the air. 
and that's badly lined from Lewis. That's naughty. It was outside the line of the leg stump, and it was flicked away there by Graves. He's picked up four runs. That's his uh, ninth boundary now. But again, it shows you. And, and I was making the point, Lester. Um, he's not hitting. He's not hitting the ball. No sixes. A man on 105 not out yet to hit a six because I think. The way he plays, you know, he tends to play a lot of the deliveries on the ground, looking for the gaps. He's depending on his timing, and because of that, it's uh, you know, you could look at, at him and see why he's hit no sixes. It's, it's a responsible inning, a very yeah. responsible inning. But I just thought that he could have pushed it on a little further, a little faster. But it's good, uh, excellent innings. Well, he's gone aerial now, and the first time he goes aerial, um, oh, that's a brilliant bit of fielding there on the boundary. There, let's see, the man out there uh, is, in fact, uh, Andre Fletcher, the skipper. No, he, the ball was heading towards him. Let's have a look at it again, Lester. He, and uh, he realized if he had taken the catch, he would have gone over the boundary. Let's have a look. And there he had to throw it back. He was airborne and had to throw it back in the field of play. And they were able to pick up a single. So the first time he's gone aerial, he's nearly got out. He's not that type of player. And and you would have thought at 105, he could really... He could, well, he has he, to now. He, yeah, he has to go. But as I say, he's not that type of player. But you're right. He has to go. It's, it, you know, it, doesn't ma it doesn't matter now whether you get out or not. You need to get the runs, and you need to go beyond the boundary. You have to do what you have to do. And uh, no one says that you have to hit the ball in the air, Colin. But if you do, and you can do it well, that's a, a, a dead bonus. Um, <coughs> again, he had a lot of power. Uh, Fletcher did extra, uh, an excellent job to get that ball back onto the field. Um, but he can feel that, uh, that, that, that the captain stole five runs from him. Because it was a good shot. Yeah, it was a good shot, but um, brilliant bit of fielding by Fletcher out at that long off boundary. So 249 so for seven. Fletcher is the captain, and he is giving himself penance. He's going from long off to long on, uh, and in two, in two different directions. That's interesting because and he's uh, captain. Well, you know, the, 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 you know he he's probably think that uh, he's the best. He's an international. They've always said long off and long on. You two put best your best players. fieldsman out there. But he's a wicket keeper too. Yeah. In the air again. This time he's found the gap and it's going to be four. So it was in the air. So he's going after it now, uh, Justin Graves, realizing he's got to push on. It was a full toss. He should have smacked that for six, really. Uh, but it was in the air. What was good about it was the placement. He hit it between the deep backward square and the deep mid wicket down to the boundary for four. But not a good ball from Springer. It was a full toss. And that deserved even more than, f than a boundary. Well, it's one bounce into 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 the over the over the, the rope. So again, he now has to play catch up. Well, the two hundred and fifty is on the board. They've m they're now moving. <laughs> well, right. I think Andrew Fletcher wants his quicker fieldsman in in that position. He's moving. It looked like uh, is it Solozano who's at that deep mid wicket position? It was Solozano. He's gone to a short fine leg. And it seems to be Cyrus who has been put out at that deep mid-wicket. Let's look at Springer. Wrong the wicket. And it's hit in the air. And this time, he's cleared the field. That's a good hit. He's gone after Springer. Uh, he's going after each of the deliveries now. He hit that nicely. And this time, he was able to clear long on with no problem whatsoever. And he's picked up six runs. Now, the total goes to 259 for seven. And this is over number 47. Is 300 runs on the cards, Lester? Well, you said he can't hit sixes, so he's showing you he can. This is one down this time to Cyrus, who is at that uh, deep mid-wicket. And they pick up a single. Never said he can't hit sixes, Lester. No, you didn't. What I said is he's not the type of player to go aerial. But he is, now. He's, he is going aerial, and, aerial and kudos to him. Yeah. Yeah, and this is his highest score at 117. He's looking good still. 117 now from 122 balls. So he's picked up that strike rate. Well, that's going to be a wide. Shama Springer coming from wrong the wicket. 
interestingly enough. He's obviously trying to get that ball, Leicester, from round the wicket, trying to slant, it, slant it away from Three the right-hander. And then he's got the short third man, the backward point, and a cover point. Very close. One, two, three there. Fielders, look at them. One, two, three. Very, very close there. But you could see him trying to slant that ball away from the right-hander. <coughs> And this is smacked down to Cyrus, who, had, who is a deep mid-wicket. <coughs> and they pick up a single. So one more to the total, 262 for seven. Kofi James is on five. He's almost been um, a passenger there at uh, the non-striker's end. He's an observer. Uh, but we've seen good power from, from Graves. Well, let's see if he can continue because he's... Struck a four and a six so far in this over. This time he misses a delivery that uh, he was trying to play it through. You could see him just trying. He's he's not. That's n wasn't a bad attempt of a more or less of a square drive because as, a, as we keep saying, to find a there's yeah, there's that short third man backward point and a cover point. If he gets it anywhere to the right or to the left of that cover point, it's going to run away to the boundary. So you could see the intention was there just to open the face of the bat, but he didn't make contact. Missed it completely. <coughs> this is worked away to the onside. Are they going to come back for the second? They'll have to. And they get home comfortably in the end. So two more to Graves to end the over. Over number 47 has come to an end. It's 264 now for six. This partnership worth 30. And uh, the contribution from uh, Kofi James is just five. But again, we've seen good power <coughs> hitting now after Graves scored his, his 100. Um, but I, 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 I didn't see anything wrong with him. Why, what's it's nothing suggested to me that he can't be a power hitter. Because he was placing that ball inside of the gap, Colin, beautifully, with, with very little effort. And now to see him, him clearing the field, uh, bearing in mind that uh, the captain for the fielding team um, was able to pull the ball back from over the fence. And now one came here for six. So he, he, he's hitting the ball beautifully, except that at one point in time he was just looking to make sure he scored 100 and I thought that was not necessarily for in, in the best thing for the uh, for his batting side. Well, three overs to go, and uh, James is smacking this one down to long on, and this is going to get a single. So total on to two sixty five, but certainly it's going to take a lot of batting to get to three hundred, but um, certainly two eighty five, two ninety is on the cards. If they were to get to 285, 290, it's going to take a lot of batting from the Windward Islands it's to get fight. that score. It's a good fighting score. Graves are not making much contact with that. Seem to have come off the bottom part of the bat. And uh, they run through for the single. Of course, uh, Pakistan winning earlier today, Leicester. And a canter. Yeah, very winning very easily. Easily. Haven't got a score out of the Barbados game for a while. At one stage, they were 194 for one. Barbados against the CCC. McCaskey, 108. The last time we heard, he was no. 108 not out. Well, that's a very interesting shot from Kofi James. Uh, almost uh, Rohan Kanai type, uh, falling on his behind and then just playing it, it very fine uh, for four. That's a good shot in the end. It turned out. Listen, it's effective. It, you know, that's the most important thing as far as Kofi James is concerned. 270 for seven and Kofi James is into double figures. It's a it's life of a bowler is a difficult thing, you know, Colin. It's a yeah, difficult it's thing. Especially in white ball cricket, isn't yeah, it's it? It's difficult. Yeah. It's really, really difficult. It's uh, Kofi James smashing it down. It is, is the catch taken? I think it is. It's a very, very good catch because that ball was dying 
on the man out there. Uh, it's Kenneth Demba. He's come up with a smashing catch because it was short. And let's have a look. Uh, Kofi James smashed it hard and low. He came down, he smashed it, and that ball was dying on Demba. Look where he took that catch. Excellent. That's Excellent. a brilliant catch from Kenneth Demba. It's very good cricket, Colin. A good shot and a fantastic catch. Good cricket. So Lewis picks up his second wicket as Kofi James makes his way back to the pavilion. Caught Demba for 10. Hamilton coming back to bat. And. Um, Jeremiah Louis is the man coming in. It's 270 for eight. So Jeremiah Louis, who has come into the team. Understand that Barbados against the CCC, they are piling up a massive total. Leicester, 203 for one. And uh, so they not sure how many overs from the uh, just so, so th 37.4 overs and they're 203 for one. That uh, could very well be a total of over 300 against the CCC. That's going to go get be, be tough, okay. tough for the uh, for those uh, CCC players to get to that total. Of course, the CCC at the moment, they're in second position to the Red Force on 26 points. Leeward Islands and third with 25. Barbados, they are fourth and 24. Then comes Guyana on, on uh, 23. And uh, you have the West Indies Academy on 23. So five teams bunching there between just with three points separating them from the CCC in second position to the West Indies Academy in sixth. That's a slower delivery. Missed there by Louis. Yes, yeah, so you've got the CCC with 26 in second and the Academy in sixth on 23 points. So it's all to play for still. If the Winwood Islands can win this game here, they will be very much in the mix. If they lose, I think um, you know they, it's going to be hard pressed for them to get in to the fourth position. Sorry? They're going to be bunching with uh, Leeward Islands? Yeah, they will be bunching with the Guyana and the Academy. If they were to get a, a victory here, it is runs for Louis. They're going to come back for the second. That's good running. Because uh, the man out there, Larry Edward, had a long way to come in to do the fielding. And they were able to pick up two runs. So Louis is off the mark with those uh, couple of runs. Let's have a look at that final delivery. There was a given given the width in which to open the face of the bat, guide it out. They were able to pick up the two runs. So this is Springer. He's going to come in for his sixth over. Twelve balls to go. Yeah, 12 deliveries left, 273. So, 280, two, sorry, 290, 295, even 300 on the cards. And this time Graves pulling it down to Cyrus, who is at that uh, deep mid-wicket, and they pick up an easy single. So, a delivery that uh, just short from Springer, taking a little bit of pace off. And it meant that Graves had to hit it. And uh, didn't get all that much power as he would have liked. But still picked up that single. Oh, this is in there, but is it going to carry to the man? No, it will not. And Larry Edward had to come in quickly at the deep square leg. But the backward square leg. But... Uh, Bit of a top edge more than anything else from Louis mm, picking up a single. So two singles so far from this over. The current run rate 5.69. How they would dearly love to end the innings at a run rate of six. 
That's a good delivery. A yoker length delivery from Springer. And Graves innings finally comes to an end. And uh, as I said, a good delivery. And he was maybe just trying to open the face of the bat again. Trying to guide it through point. And he should have come down on it. Uh, but he missed it completely. And it cannoned into the stumps. A really excellent delivery from Springer. And... Uh, 121 from Graves. His innings comes to an end. 275 now for nine as he makes his way back to the pavilion. But he can certainly be proud of his effort. It's been a really excellent knock on his part. And I uh, think he hit nine fours and one six from, from his 121. But it's been a really excellent innings. And uh, it means that nine balls left, number 10 and 11. They have to try and accumulate as much as they can uh, to totally get this nice. total as close as possible uh, to 300. Don't think they're going to get it now unless uh, one of these two goals berserk and hit a couple sixes. I don't think, I think if they get to maybe 285, they'd be grateful. Yeah, um, if we could talk a little bit about Graves. Graves, uh, from very early, Colin, after about five, six overs, we recognized that this guy, this guy can really bat, and he was batting it sweetly. He's a good, good, very good batsman for the future. Yeah, he is. And the ball hitting the pad of the new batsman in Daniel Durham. So leg by signal by the umpire. So one more to the extras. As that goes up to nine extras now in the innings. Not bad. Haven't been all that many wides. Louis is going to pick up a single. I think he would want to take as much as the strike as possible, Jeremiah Louis seen him get uh, a half century at regional level in the 40 tournament he's a good hitter of the ball is jeremiah louis two seventy seven for nine final delivery in this the 49th over by shamar springer be end of his sixth over and Durham playing it out to long off just a single in it Louis is thinking of the second uh, but I think Durham wasn't interested at all because Fletcher was a little bit tardy in coming in but they were able to just pick up the single so Springer has completed his six overs ended up with two for 45 and at the end of 49 overs it's 278 for nine it's a good thing he didn't bowl it's full complement of 10 cross um, Colin <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, went at uh, just over seven runs and over yeah it's been pretty expensive when you compare him to maybe the spinners Demba one for 31 from 10 Cyrus two for 52 from his 10 and Larry Edwards none for 37 from 10 right so you look at those three spinners and um, Cyrus went at 5.2 Edwards went at 3.7 and Denver at 3.1 and there's one more over to be bowled yep six Sh balls Shamar Shuman Lewis sorry is going to complete it and Durham swings this one that's going to be four that's a good shot it was too short from Lewis. You can't be bowling that short. I don't care if it's a number one or a number 11. You got to take that ball up. And it was short. And Durham just had almost a free swing at it. And it's picked up a boundary. A welcome boundary. The Winnemont Islands have to be very careful. Because it's two, 290 is almost on. Uh, there is a short delivery. And... Uh, Durham getting into position quickly and smashed it. 
This one is just over the head of the ball. I thought for one minute, uh, Louis thought I was heading down towards Laurent. I'm not too sure about that shot, Lester, how the ball ended up there. And uh, it was a strange looking shot from Durham, but he got it back over the bowler's head, and that's the most important thing. Let's have a look. Well, he was looking to hit it somewhere over Laurent. You, you come to expect that from number 10 and number 11, especially if it's a good number 11, a guy who is a genuine number 11. Well, Durham seems to be that. If, but if you're going to bowl him short, he's going to put it away. And Louis has an almighty swing at that. I expect that from Jeremiah Louis. He's certainly, m I get the impression, though, and I've seen him before, he's a little better than a number 10. But you look at the batting lineup of this Leeward Islands team, it's uh, a good batting lineup. You have to find a space for him. Yes, and he's a good medium pacer as well. Good all round cricketer is Jeremiah Louis. Well, he's, uh, that's peeled off a tough page there as he was swinging this one somewhere over mid-wicket. It uh, came off the top edge there and went to the left of the man at short third man. And that's what you do when you, you take your, your chances. Here's Louis uh, facing up to this delivery. He was hitting it somewhere, looking to hit it somewhere over uh, the mid-wicket position. And the ball ended up going to the left of the short third man. That happens almost, almost always, uh, Colin. You always have an inside edge, an outside edge, flying to the ball. Top grid. edge. Top edge. All edge, sorts edge. of things. Yeah. And the bats now it is, Lester. This is a good shot. That's much more b better. That's what you expect from Jeremiah Louis. And in, that's a good hit. He's hit it straight back over the bowler's head. Ooh, he nice took a three. step down and hit it superbly. That's six good looking runs for. Louis, he is into double figures, and the thing is, it's now 293 for nine. 293. That's a good hit. That's a really good hit. It's a little, little man. That packs a lot of power. So the final delivery coming up to bowl to Louis. They can't get uh, 300 unless he bowls a no ball, and it goes for six. Well, it's gone for six. No, it's not. It's going to be taken. He got some bat onto it, but it wasn't far enough. He attempted the six there, but Demba coming in took a very comfortable catch uh, coming to his right, and uh, he's picked it up, and it's the end of Louis. He goes for 14. Durham, Durham is not out on six, and... Shamar Lewis, he's picked up three wickets, but was pretty expensive. Three for 68. The innings has come to an end at 293. So it means that uh, the Windward Islands Volcanoes would need to get 294 for victory. And uh, it's going to be a tall, tall order. It's going to take a lot of good batting on the part of the Windward Islands Volcanoes, but at, at the end of it, Lester, a pretty good total from the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. It's a solid, solid score. Uh, three, 294, it's a Two solid score. And um, they just got, to me, it could have been a little more, but Colin, 294 is still 293, a very good score. Yeah. 293 is, is, is a very good score. Uh, they could defend this total. Oh, for sure. They could at defend this. At, at 293, it's going to take uh, some good batting on the part of the volcanoes, the Windward Islands volcanoes. It's uh, 294, it's, it's not insurmountable because the pitch, it's a good batting pitch. There's no doubt about it. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of rolling. And they're going to, as the ground staff are already starting to do some, some work there on the strip. So at 293 all out, um, the top scorer, Justin Graves, 121. Jamar Hamilton, he picked up a 50 at 293, and the wickets were shared. Shamar Lewis, he picked up three. Hodge picked up a solitary wicket. Springer, two. Cyrus, two. 
and Denver, he picked up one wicket. So 293 all out. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes, it's 294. The Windward Islands uh, Volcanoes have got to win this game. It's going to take some batting, but we'll be right back after the break here. It's going to be a little bit of a luncheon break now, but we're going to be right back after that break uh, to give you the the viewing of the Windward Islands Volcanoes innings. So until then, uh, we're going to take this, this luncheon break now and be back shortly.
And welcome back to the Queen's Park Oval, where we're getting ready for the reply. <coughs> the Windward Islands, can Athanas and company really put things together and see their team through for a big win? They're going to win against Jamaica. They'll be hoping to add another scalp here uh, with their neighbors, the Leeward Islands. So... Alec Athenes is at the wicket. Johnson Charles is at the non-striker's end. And this is Azari Joseph. Brilliantly done at uh, first up. And uh, to immediately get off the mark, but finding the middle of the bat. And uh, getting the first run on the board. So brilliant sunshine. We did have a, a little drizzle, but it wasn't strong enough to actually stop play. And uh, the players, the umpires kept the players out there, so they were able to continue. And uh, even though the covers, the, the ground staff was at the ready, they were not needed. And uh, play continued with no interruptions. Here's another good delivery. Uh, good movement from Alzari Joseph. And they're going to be relying on him to really get the job done here, the Leeward Islands. They've posted a good score. Now they need to finish it off by maybe taking some early wickets. That, is, that always does the trick. And uh, force the <coughs> opponents to have to consolidate a police in the air and uh, just wide of the fieldsman that's a a pretty good delivery from alzari joseph touching down just outside the off dump and johnson charles very sort of airy fairy pushing the bat at it hit a thick outside edge luckily for him it didn't go to hand yeah thick outside edge wasn't it <coughs> and it was in the air and you're right ruskin it uh Luckily for him, it didn't go to hand, but had it, uh, it would have been the end of Johnson Charles. This is a very important period here. I think they've got to see off Alzari Joseph. Get, just get him out of the way without too much alarms. And if, if Athenes and Charles can do that, get them off to a, a useful start, then, you know, this game is... It's, 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 it's a tough ass getting the 293 and 294 for victory. But it's, it's, they're capable of it because of the, the pitch. The pitch is a very good pitch. It's, it's not going to deteriorate between now and say in the next three, three, four hours. So all these guys have got to do is sit down and bat and bat properly. And, and the target is gettable. And uh, <coughs> again, as I Joseph, good pace, good carry there. You look at. The, um, Jamal Hamilton yeah, taking that ball yeah. uh, to over his, his left shoulder. Left shoulder. Yeah. He's not a tall man. Over his left shoulder is about waist high well, to me. Yeah, but still, uh, he's getting some, some bounce and uh, movement as Alzari Joseph. And as I said, this is a, as important. He's just gone for two runs so far off the first five balls. Milk him. You know, if he does bowl the bad ball and you can get it away, that's fine. Outside of that, uh, you know, be careful how you, you attack Alzari Joseph. And that's a good delivery. Just tucking up <coughs> Athena's uh, end the over. The first over is in the book two without loss at the end of over number one. So it's uh, Athena's Athene and, and uh, Johnson Charles. Uh, it's an unexpected. Well, Athena's is the youngster in, 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 in the pair. Yeah, by but, but, yeah. but he's, he, he's had, he's has, he has ability. He's an Excellent player. I, I, you know, I, first time I saw Alec Athenes, I was seeing, I remember telling uh, David Fulong, the coach of the Red Force team, I said, there's a little guy called Athenes. He's a good player and you've got to watch him. You know, he's capable. And he said, okay, um, he hasn't, see, you know, he, 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 w he was nonchalant about it, of course. And uh, <laughs> so when they played Red Force, I think Athenes got 10 and 2. And he, <laughs> said, he, he called me and he said, is that the guy you told me? <laughs> have to watch uh, but but he's come on greatly since then Athenes, and uh, 
he scored he scores runs consistently and he's a good player i just would love to see him settle down a little bit more i think he's he's got this aggressive nature in him and i need him just to, to curb that a little bit jeremiah louis talking about aggressive nature uh, johnson charles is aggression personified when he has a bat in his hand he is he's a real no-nonsense kind of guy and but he thinks he, he, he thinks he can blast everything, doesn't he? Something I don't think I was just about to say that I don't <coughs> think he's seen a delivery. Doesn't think he can hit for either four or six. He really likes to put the bat on the ball. There he goes again, and a stifled appeal, but that clearly was going down leg. It's interesting field for Johnson Charles because there are five on the offside. There's the slip more of a, a, a gully then there's the point position that not really a gully a short third man so a short third man the point cover mid off then a mid on and there are two men deep in a deep mid wicket and a deep <coughs> backward square leg and that short fine leg so interesting with the two men deep on the on side that's why and Johnson <laughs> Charles has gone <laughs> after it and that's cleared cleared easily is it <laughs> clearing the man a deep mid wicket that's easily he just <laughs> he just looked over <laughs> he didn't he didn't try to to, to, to make an attempt at a catch is the man out that that deep mid wicket position uh, you can do it, look up at it. That was James, Kofi yeah, James. Yeah, Kofi James. Mm -hmm. And he just <laughs> cleared him, went up into the stand, and I think one of the the score, the, the young boys who was scoring on the on the, the manual board uh, fetched it for him. But you can't afford to bowl Johnson Charles there on that uh, leg stump. Yeah, you're asking for trouble. And that's the reason why they have the two men, uh, one a deep mid and one a deep square leg, because Johnson Charles is... Um, noted for putting back the ball and he will swing and go aerial that's four runs yep in the gap it goes and uh, all along the ground this time wide outside the off dump and uh, louis making the adjustment trying to get off his legs but he give him much you give him swinging room there and that is bread and butter stuff for johnson charles uh, and this is okay if he's going to attack Louis. He's got to be careful, though, with the two men deep. If he doesn't connect with that delivery, uh, it, it's the long part of the boundary that uh, the on the western side. And uh, if he doesn't connect with it, he could be in trouble. Because, again, uh, he's and talking about more. trouble, Louis on the legs, because the fine leg is up. Paula, uh, not able, Kieran Powell, not able to cut it off. And uh, for easy runs you can't afford to bowl him there you cannot afford to bowl him outside the leg someone this you know I if they're gonna to this is good cricket on the part of the Windward Islands batsman in, in Johnson Charles you have Alzari Joseph on one end and I was saying take your time with Alzari Joseph milk him don't try to attack him unless he bowls a rank short delivery or, or a half volley other than that just play him uh, make the runs with him but attack, attack from the other end and yeah. which is what they're doing uh, with Louis but I think Empire waiting on confirmation <coughs> from yeah from the scorers from the no signal I uh, hope the battery doesn't run out <laughs> <laughs> because well, maybe they need to come out the door <laughs> and wave and say yes <laughs> we saw you <laughs> I hope he has ever ready batteries here he goes again, asking for trouble, playing on the line. They're going to get a single, uh, but Louis is really asking uh, for trouble exactly. there. Yep. Bowling that line. It's the end of the over. Two overs completed to 17 without loss. And that's a, that's a good start. I, I um, was just filling in, you know, Ruskin, because uh, Lester Casimir, when, when he's eating, he takes his time. He eats quite uh, a lot of food. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to talk about lunch and food because we're right here to look at the reply from the Windward Islands trying to get to 294. Well, there you go. And uh, thanks so much. And, uh, we welcome back Lester Kasimi, but it's going to be Alzari Joseph who is going to continue from the pavilion end. In his second over, the first one went for just two. And there is Johnson Charles really just having a go there, putting the just really just freeing up that left leg and swinging at the delivery that passed outside the off them. But it didn't pass too far from the off them, Lester. 
Uh, but that's Johnson Charles for you. There is no not no orthodoxy about his batting. Well, <coughs> fortune favors the brave. He was fortunate on this occasion. Let's hope he continues to bat, but bat properly this time. And uh, he's going to get a single here. A little bit cramped for for a swinging room there. And Altari Joseph would know Johnson Charles and what he's capable of, having played against him for years and played with him in the West Indies team. And uh, because they know he's a dangerous customer, um, he could get out the very first ball or he could stick around and get 100 in double quick time. That's just the nature of his game. And he hasn't changed in years and I don't think he's going to change now. So it's a, a sort of a, a, a real intense period here because the bowlers trying to get on top of the batsman and vice versa. Great shot again from Athanas drifting onto his pass. He's going to get a couple. And uh, I just think he'd be happy with that. Ward giving chase. This is really uh, a, a period where they want to, to try to lay some kind of a foundation. Now, the, some teams can do it, like we saw Barbados this morning, did it the patient way. Johnson Charles, at the crease, um, he would probably try to do it in a very brisk fashion. Uh, Athena's ready, a fall shot there, trying to drive through the offside, ball coming off the inner portion of the bat. I saw Antenez, uh, it would have been against India earlier today, uh, earlier uh, this year. I, I thought he looked a compact player, good player, solid player. And uh, I wait to see this is a different version of the game uh, where you need to push the scoring on a little bit more. So we, I wait to see how he'll, his approach, certainly to with Joseph. Stroking this one nicely, and uh, the thing about him is that he's been getting some useful scores, uh, but he hasn't really kicked on so far in the tournament. And I'm sure they're just waiting for him to do that. Today is as good a day as any. He has, you know, near perfect batting conditions. It's not a, a fiery wicket. It's not a big spinning wicket. Uh, there are no real terrors in the wicket, even for the faster bowlers. So he has things in his favor. He just needs to stick around and stick around and produce shots like that one. That's going to go all the way to the boundary. I don't think Kieran Powell is going to close it down. He won't. And that's four good looking runs there. Four Athanas. He goes to seven. Seventeen to Charles. It's 24 without loss after three. It's a beautiful shot. That pick up shot but it's placed all along the ground uh, Ruskin it's a <coughs> good 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 shot um, both batsmen have played for the West Indies uh, Johnson Charles was given a big uh, period of rest and then uh, they brought him back and I thought when he came back he was doing well um, he actually did very well when he came back and again they they have asked him to take a rest and probably get your game again organized and, but Antenez, he seems to me to be a guy for the future. He's young, he's strong, uh, and he, his, 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 his ability to concentrate is, is just there with him. Louis again pitching up to Johnson Charles, which is a risky business with him. And Charles showing uh, a bit of restraint there. Normally he would have thrown the bat at that. And uh, we would have been looking at it somewhere in the Cyril Dupre stand. And this one is in the air. There's a man out there. Can he take the catch? He comes on and he gets it. Well, well, well. They set the trap. Colin was wondering why they had a fielder out there. And that's precisely why... They put the man out there. Johnson Charles couldn't resist the short ball. And uh, he goes for 17. And uh, it really was uh, a ball pushed up to him. 
he had the opportunity to get under it, which he did, and Ward, Terence Ward took the catch out in the deep. It's very bad batting from from Johnson Charles, actually. <laughs> you allowed two men outside, and the two men were, for, were there for the pull, and he put those, the ball right into, well, it wasn't right into, but it, it was aerial for a long time. It lobbed up for a long time, and the fieldsman got there with enough time to spare. Again, the intention. Um, I, I'm not understanding uh, former or current West Indian batsman batting with such... Uh, to me, it's irresponsible. Um, 293, 294, if you bat properly, you can get to that score. But if you're in the pavilion, having tried, th that's it. You, you, you're no longer there to help your team. It's rather unfortunate that he attempted to, to try a swashbuckling innings. It just didn't work on this occasion, Ruskin. Well, one swashbuckler gives way to another, Andrew Fletcher. But we have seen a different Andrew Fletcher in this tournament. One, he's, bat he's been batting lower down the order. But today, uh, he has opted to come up to number three, which is where I felt he should have always been batting, and uh, kind of conduct proceedings from there. He's batted well with the lower order, um, to his credit. Uh, being the captain, uh, but I think they're going to ask a different question of him today now. Uh, not only does he have to help build a fun or lay a foundation, um, he's going to have to spend some time at the crease and temper his natural aggression. We just saw Johnson Charles failing to do that and paying the price. Uh, will Fletcher uh, repeat There's no two ways about it. Uh, <coughs> Fletcher is, is, is an excellent batsman, hence the reason he represented the West Indies. He's out in uh, Australia, he's out in Pakistan, he's, he's here, there and everywhere because he's a good batsman. Today he's in Trinidad with his team, captain in this team. Uh, he has been batting well. I have been looking at most of the games he's been, uh, that have been played here by uh, the Leeward Islands and win what? Good feeling again from Hayden Walsh Jr. Just skipping across to his left to keep the pressure on. And now immediately on Johnson Charles being dismissed. The man at deep mid-wicket has been brought into an orthodox mid-wicket. There is a deep square leg and there is a, a, deep thir a third man on the boundary. So those are the two men out. And uh, it's really about strategic field placing. They had him there primarily for that and Johnson Charles didn't disappoint uh, and that's you know that that's what like when a good plan comes together because they put the man there because they knew that he was going to play that shot and uh, it's almost as if uh, like a practice session he just played it and he was out court Fletcher is off the mark now. Yeah, the ball before <coughs> was was up to him, and he drove it sweetly to mid off, and the very next ball was the trap, and uh, Johnson Charles went straight into it. At the end of it, he's in the pavilion. What is he telling himself? Because he cannot be disappointed. He cannot be disappointed, unless you decided I'm going to show you. I'll go over your head. Now this wicket. It's probably uh, east of the test wicket. So it is, it is further to the east. So you have a lot more ground to cover on that side. That's the big side of the field. And um, you, need it, you would be taking a chance to actually try to get six there. Unless it's a proper connection. Mm -hmm. Which he did earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. This time it, it didn't connect properly. And... Uh, the that's, the risk, eh? that, that's the risk that batsmen take um, when you bat in that fashion uh, because you're, you're challenging the ropes. You always feel you could clear the ropes. And, uh, you know, but it doesn't always work out. And this was one of the times. So, Tarzari Joseph, who's continuing, captain against captain here now. And Fletcher probably deciding he's going to try and see if he could conduct proceedings from here, from in front.
I'm sure this is something that Azari Joseph didn't want to have to be bothered with now, or the, the, the umpire probably telling him about his encroaching on the danger part of the wicket. And no fast bowler because that's just something else you have to worry about now. And uh, you because you're trying to veer off the wicket as much as you possibly can. Etched and he's gone. Brilliant indeed. And uh, well, he certainly put that little discussion with the umpire behind him. And Alzari Joseph has picked the big pepper, that of his opposite number. Andre Fletcher goes for one. It's 25 for two. I was just thinking to myself, Alzari Joseph must be very happy that Fletcher will come early so he will get the best of him. And uh, at the end of it, Fletcher just did not stand up properly to Joseph and he's back, he's on his way back to the pavilion. It, it must be said though that Fletcher was batting later on uh, at 6 and 7 and he was contributing significantly and uh, he probably felt he was off touch and as he felt a little better which is why he came probably number 3 number three. And it just didn't work this time a good bowling from Alzari Joseph though he was able to, it was able to touch down outside the off stump and Fletcher playing with a one hand, a fantastic catch behind the wicket, and Fletcher is no more. Solazano from uh, this part, uh, opening batsman, he played uh, for the West Indies to open the button and apparently never did. Yeah, it was just unfortunate for him. He got injured yeah. very early yep. in, in the piece. Uh, while in the field, so he never really got to. To bat. to bat, yeah. So he would not have a problem. And he's been consistent, Jeremy. Yeah. He's had uh, a couple of 40s. I think he had one half century so far. But he's always been there, thereabouts uh, with his scoring. And, you know, he was talking about uh, trying to assimilate with the Windward Islands. <coughs> it's a new experience for him. This is a new challenge as well. That's how he Joseph now fired up, no doubt, trying to see if he could really slice through this top order of the Windward Islands. Flags are a little bit limp right now, the breeze. Slight breeze, nothing too big. And uh, Solozano obviously would want to have a big score here in front of his home fans, so to speak. Is he a member of Queen's Park as well? Yep. And uh, the, the thing about it is that we, we have so many players now playing in other territories uh, under a different national banner. Um, even in this uh, Windward Islands team, apart from that, you, you also have Springer. Springer is from Barbados. Mm -hmm. Is that the same Springer <coughs> Ruskin who represented the West Indies youth team and won the World Cup? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so there Together with Hetmeyer? Yeah, there are a number of, of players who are Kimo Paul. getting opportunities elsewhere because they're national teams. It's difficult sometimes to make their national team. And there is the big fellow. No doubt. <laughs> sitting out this game, but not sitting out entirely. He's walking there with um, some refreshments. I'm sure trying to get to the quicker bowlers and <coughs> making sure that they're properly replenished and remain hydrated. He has been getting me in a lot of trouble. I tell you that, Ruskin. Um, I am a believer, so. And Rakim Cornwall, I believe in Rakim Cornwall. Trying out there, Salazano not making any contact at all, really flirting with danger there. But this is Alzari Joseph really putting, keeping the pressure on uh, the batsman. 
two left handers at the wicket now. So just uh, seemed to be a, a little bit of a concern there. You can see Kieran Powell just trying to smoothen the this, this surface there. I'm not quite sure if Azari's boot is sticking in that part of the, the ground. It, the ground should be hard. Again, he's feeding at it outside the off dump and uh, not making any contact. The end of the over, 25 for 2 now after 5. Alzari is bowled at average, an average of 3 runs per over. Um, at this level, I expect no less that than that from him. I was saying to you, though, Ruskin, that Rakim Cornwall has gotten me into a lot of trouble. Everywhere I go, people... Uh, wants to know people want to know why and how but i i think that if to me rakim Cornwall is probably the best off spinner we have in the caribbean mm -hmm. um he can hold his own <laughs> as we saw the dropping the mic in barbie and barbie does he scored a hundred unfortunately he's a one boundary so you have to put him in his slip if, if you put him at a short extra cover that a month they could take a run for by him but okay so he has some drawbacks I could tell you, I've seen some skinny people uh, can't feel as well as him, can't bowl as well as he does, and can't, <coughs> can't bat as well as he does. <coughs> and they're actually playing on the West Indies team, probably because they're skinny. And, by the way, they're struggling to, 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 to be successful in the beep test. That's a strange, strange set sort of things. But uh, I, I understand the, 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 the how it looks, how it, uh, visually how it looks. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I have to just say, okay, and leave it alone. Louis continues, and uh, so this is a real uh, examination here for the Windward Islands batsmen. They have to be so careful now. Um, one, they, they can't just go into their shell and forget the whole idea of scoring, but then they can't take any risk and possibly lose more wickets early. That will do them no good at all. And that's four runs. From the time it gets into the gap, it's going to run away for a boundary. Athanas uh, picking the gap well and uh, cashing in. It's a simple shot, Ruskin. You know that there's nobody on the fine leg boundary. Just he got inside and just flicked it very competently. And on the ground, from, from leaving the bat on onto the ground. And uh, uh, four runs easily. It was a bad ball, one must say. Yeah, he, he he's already a mixed bag, um, um, Louis. He he really produces a number of uh, loose deliveries, uh, scoring run scoring deliveries, uh, but then he can also t produce some wicket takers as well. And uh, here he goes again, and uh, there's nobody out there. That that's going to be four more. Probably not in full control, but still got it over the top and got it down to that backward point position for four runs. If you have to take your chance, you have to take your chance at Louis and, and just be circumspect with Alzari Joseph because he's really a good bowler. He has improved as far as I'm concerned at Alzari Joseph. So you need to pounce on, on, on Louis as much as possible. Make sure he does not get you out for sure. But you have to get the lion chair from him and have them take him off and put somebody else on because he has to come back. And uh, this time, they will jog a, a comfortable single. So, again, they continue to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Uh, a good over so far. So, it's the windwards against the leewards. And uh, it's all we usually just say it's like brother against brother. They were a formidable team when put together. And that's a beauty of a delivery. And, and that's the thing about Louis. Um, you know, he will produce some four balls, but he every so often he will produce something that does a little extra. And that was a case in point. He went right under the bat of Solazano there. And uh, luckily, uh, he survived.
That completes the over 34 for two at the end of over number six. Nine runs were scored in, in this over, the last over. Uh, there's nothing special or nothing extra they need to do, um, Ruskin. Just keep doing what they're doing now and a little more. Well, they, they, but they got what? How many runs they got of that last over? Nine. They, they got nine runs of that over. Yes. Uh, and that's a good clip. You, if, if you can get, um, you know, even if you got seven runs on over, you're good. Uh, for the next 10 to 15 overs, you're in pretty good shape. Yes. You'll be over 100 runs by over number 15. You know, and, and that's that's plenty. And then you, you, you set up the rest of the innings quite nicely. But it's important that you preserve wickets. That's the, that's the key here. Uh, you can't afford to lose more wickets anytime soon. Yeah, but I'm sure Azari Joseph will have other ideas. He would like to induce a fall shot from Athanas in particular. But you could see Azari Joseph really struggling somewhere there. He's just not happy. He's worried that, uh, that his boot mark, and that is just as he's about to take off for his delivery strike. So you don't want anything to be going wrong there. Again, he will have to kind of put that out of his mind and uh, focus on the job at hand. But again, he, he has to be mindful. I'm sure in the back of his mind, he's thinking about where his feet might be landing. Yes, look at him again. Every time he delivers the ball, he looks back at that. He's just not happy. Something is bothering him there. And I think that's a spot right there where he is. There. There's that this he's asking for that big hammer again so that they can pound it into the ground probably. Because something is, is is giving him some concern there. So I think um, um, Paya Basarat is calling for the big hammer. He's running up very close to the stump, um, Ruskin. Probably if he needs to, he probably needs to go further away from the stump. But probably that is why he's running close because the further away he, uh, he, he he's bowling, it suggests that m that might be the problem. What what you don't want is to have a foot problem. As a big fast bowler, you would know that, Ruskin. Not just a fast bowler, you're a big fast bowler, and and so is uh, Alzari Joseph. He's not as broad as you you were, but he's a lot taller than than you. And you really don't want to have foot problems. No, you because it's 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 that's something you don't want to be concentrating on. You you just want to be able to run up freely and deliver the ball. Focus on where you put in the ball. Yeah. yeah. And so you don't want to be worried about <coughs> where your feet might be landing if you're gonna take off properly, uh, as the case may be. So we do have a break in the action here. Um, again thirty four for two, the two men gone. Uh, Johnson Charles is 17 and Andre Fletcher for one. Um, one to Louis, one to Joseph. The two of my bowlers getting a wicket each. So uh, that's good news for the Leeward Islands. I'm sure they'll want to keep, keep it going. Try and see if they could really pick up a couple more wickets cheaply and put even more pressure on the middle and lower batting order. So, might be a time for them to take a little <laughs> refreshment break, uh, unscripted, I suppose, or uh, unscheduled, while the repair work is done to the ground. <coughs> the players, because it's so hot and uh, uh, sort of muggy outside, uh, the empires, I'm sure, would be uh, very open to them getting as many or getting as much refreshment as possible as often as possible without compromising the the game but you could just see the players gravitating down there and uh, really taking the opportunity to get some 
uh, much needed refreshments and even though they have not been on the field for that long it's mm. hot and um, I think that but was it was it the energy was it the sun as hot in our days as it is now uh, okay, uh, I want to believe it, it, it was but I also want to believe that the the whole idea of playing in in, in these harsh conditions <laughs> you know you 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 wonder why did you ever do that? But I suppose when you're young, you're excited about playing sport, and you play the sport of your choice as well, and uh, you do it. Now I'm looking at the members of the Gronk staff over on the far side. I'm trying to see if they would, if what they. I'm not sure if they're looking for a special piece of dirt. Uh, to take it to the wicket to help with that uh, sandy b that low b that base that they had there as you could see uh, members of the ground staff trying to uh, dig out something uh, a piece of dirt there and hopefully they'll be able to pong that into that little hole that has developed there um, at the southern end of the ground where Alzari Joseph is bowling so um, I haven't seen, I've never seen this before. I know we have a nursery end and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, but... Uh, what you have is a hidden dirt end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and look, it's a big chunk of, of, of earth they're taking out there. And uh, they, they, know ex they knew exactly where to go. A big square. Yeah, we, we planned that for this day. So I'm glad the cameras are able to pick it up so that we just don't, uh, they can't just rely on what we're saying. Oops, but they have left a big hole, a crater. They have to now they're going away. to. Well, I'm sure they could repair that over time. Now yeah. they're going to. Well, they have to repair because once you have people playing, remember the players could run off the field, and you don't want them running into that hole uh, that was just created there. But now they've, they've. I think they're going to dig a hole, and plant and just insert and refurbish it yep and insert that little patch that they just did on the on the cycle track the former cycle track and uh, replace it here and just insert it here in, in on the field because clearly uh, Azari Joseph was having a problem um, with his footing and uh, we see the the ground staff doing their bit to help him with the repairs as quickly as possible. So uh, you're not missing any cricket, folks. Uh, again, the Leeward Islands posted 293 after they won the toss and upped it to bat first uh, with Justin Graves getting an, a splendid 121. Uh, Jonathan Ham Yo uh, Hamilton getting, Jamal Hamilton getting 50. And, uh, of course, Lewis had 3 for 68, Springer 2 for 45, and Cyrus, who bowled well, 2 for 52 with his uh, leg spinners. But, like I said, uh, I think his bowling was much better than his figures would suggest. So now we see them actually trying to insert the piece of turf that they picked up from the cycle truck and uh, they're just trying to make sure that it fits whatever is squeeze it in yep they just try it's like a drop-in pitch you, you take it from one location and you just come and you drop it in uh, here and uh, uh, but this again Lester this might be part of the, the wear and tear of the of the ground when you have so many games being played uh, almost every other day there might be a game here or at, at the other venues as well and so sometimes stuff like this happens. It's just, it's just the c persistent wear and tear on the ground. Well, there are two uh, wickets that they are playing on, two pitch, two pitches that they are playing on, and um, this one <coughs> is east of the other. And so the next game, which probably would be Thursday, it Thursday will be played yeah. west on the western ground. Uh, from where I am sitting on my right and there's the one we're playing is on my left so uh, they, have, they have decided to just play with these two 
play on these two pitches. The thing is, though, Ruskin, these two pitches, for whatever reason, they have been really, really playing well. <coughs> and they're very, very similar. Um, I look at the Brian Lara. The Brian Lara, they have one that is very, very spin-friendly, and the other is, is, is what you can say, what, it seems friendly? friendly? <laughs> well, you know, Shane once said, if it takes seam, it could take it spin. It could take spin, yep. yeah. So... Well, let's say fast the f for the faster stuff. Mm -hmm. So you so you, you you don't know which one you actually going to play on. And if you do, you have to probably prepare for that. These two wickets have, as far as I can see, I've, I've been here for a few games. They're very they're very very similar in in look, in color, uh, and texture. Um, I, when I was out there this morning, uh, I I tried hitting it a lash or two with my knuckles. And I've, I was fortunate to come back up with my knuckles. Cause it was very, very hard. And, and then I heard it they say it was dry. Well, I don't know. And it will crumble or it might crumble. It hasn't crumbled. Uh, none of these. So the, the wicket has been, or the, or the pitch has been playing really, really well. Certainly, Ruskin, in comparison to when we, we played here 200 years ago um, on, on this pitch, it, 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 I remember Abed Ali bowling here against uh, the West Indies. First ball, Roy Fredericks out LBW and bowl. Hmm. It, it, it's amazing. The, the, it, it was playing low, one would creep and one low. would bounce. Yep. You know, so th th these these pitches are really really uh, prepared properly, um, and uh, you, they're getting res it's a team can easily score 300 runs as we saw here today. That was easy. They could have gotten to 300 plus. And uh, um, some of the other teams that, that played here, they could have gotten there as well. But the quality of the batsman, of batsmanship just was not there to, to facilitate that. But they, they, um, the, the two proper wickets or, or, or pitches that they have been preparing. Well, they, they have certainly been doing a, a, a fantastic job here of this little bit of patchwork. Uh, trying to make sure that it's safe for the fast bowlers and uh, so they've done a little bit of a patch taking it out from in the nursery on the cycle track on the western end of the ground and uh, now they're just putting the finishing touches here making sure it's as firm as possible and uh, that there is no unnecessary give on it and that the bowler can easily run through there and, and, and again part of the, the the danger here is that where this uh, hole was developing is exactly where a fast bowler like Alzari Joseph is going to run in and, and really set up his delivery stride so you, you so once you kick it off from there you don't want to be having any concerns at all and now everybody's going to try to walk through that same patch there and uh, just to test it for themselves to see if they if they are comfortable with it and it seems like they are so we're going to have a resumption of play now uh, with the Windward Islands 34 for 2 remember their victory target is 294. They're 34 for 2. Atanas is on 16. Solazano is yet to score. The batsman now, Johnson Charles, for 17. And Andre Fletcher for 1. So nice, bright, sunny conditions here. And uh, play is about to resume. Azari Joseph seems happy with the work done. Kudos again to the growing staff here. R Ruskin, it's nothing like knowing your job. If this works, there's definite proof here now that knowing your job doesn't matter what it is. And doing it well, and doing it, 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 it speaks volumes actually. So two left-handers at the wicket. Atana is the one who's going to take strike. And that's glorious, brilliant indeed. And uh, four runs from the moment it left the bat, as straight as you could like, 
and uh, just spread across the turf. Wow, what a shot. What a shot. Excellent shot. You didn't try to overhit it, you just caressed it into the gap and down the hill for four. So, Altari Joseph, what will his response be? 38 well for the two now. Let's hope you can hook. And uh, he does get away with the pull shot, didn't hit it as well as he would like. This is the, the thing about batsmanship, Ruskin. You you bring the, the he brings the ball up and you drive it. This is of Trinidad, the West Indian fast bowler. He's not going to come back there. And so you knew you kn I knew that. And Anthony is of course is, is a is a much better batsman than I ever was. He ex expected that and so said so done. The ball was bounced short. And uh, Salazano doing the smart thing here, getting out of harm's way. Short ball from Azari Joseph. Good speed as well. So just the one slip and uh, a nice little ring uh, around. Plus they have the final leg and the third man. Those are the two men out. And... Uh, Jeremy Solizano wanting a single, but it's not there. And that completes the over. 39 for two at the end of over number seven. Well, that was the longest over bowled in, in cricket. Um, other than if you were overnight. <laughs> <laughs> and we had major repairs been done, and soon after the repairs, you see absolutely no query at all from the, wicked, from the uh, umpire, nor the fast bowler. Um, Aljari Joseph, so uh, running repairs and it was good. And the first ball after that re the resumption, uh, Antonez just leaned forward and hit a beautiful straight drive for four. Very next ball, of course. It's a bumper, and uh, he did well to, to, to play it. But if he, had, if he had gotten good connection, one wonders what might have happened. So we wa we're watching good cricket. Um, the Windward Islands fighting fire with fire, and that's what you expect. So Terence Ward is the man who's going to pick up the attack. From the northern end, or the commentary box end. I think it's going to be important for him to try to keep the pressure on. Cannot give away easy runs here. He just needs to be tight as ever. So it's just a switch in personnel. They probably bring the more athletic fielder to the mid on position. And uh, that looks like Jeremiah Louis changing places there uh, with Daniel Durham. Durham goes into mid on inside the circle, whereas the man who replaced him, Louis, comes down to the boundary at long off for the left handed Athanas. Salazano yet to get off the mark. Now he has another delivery. Just Touching down outside the, outside the after. Well played in the end. Kept it down. And uh, avoided danger there. Got a single for it. So there is a slip in position for the right arm or spinner. Terence Ward. Cut in and missing. Jeremy Solizano yet to get off the mark. That probably would be better advised to play straight. 
spray with a straight bat as opposed to trying to cut or go across the ball. Here he is again cutting at one that was right alongside the stumps, in line with the stumps, uh, but he can't get it away. It's the end of the over, 40 for two at the end of over number eight. Salzano has faced 10 balls and he's still and yet to get off the mark. Uh, I, I am of the view if he plays a little straighter of the bat with a, a vertical bat, he's, he probably might have uh, greater connection. In fact, <laughs> greater connection. He has had no connection cutting and um, on, on too many occasions the ball flew past and went into the wicketkeeper's gloves. He has to change the shot to probably get a different result. Well, let's see what Azari Joseph has to offer. He decides he's going to bring the fine leg into the circle. Jeremiah Louis is going to do the honors and there's a man a deep square leg three quarters of the way out. Now again, they're trying to force it and they're going to get a boundary for it again. You don't give Athenas that much room and because you're flirting with danger there, short outside the off temp and he's just stay on top of it and placed it well square the wicket. Antenez is not a lot of movement from Antenez either back or forward, but he's hitting the ball with a fair amount of power and uh, finding the gaps more often than not. But he's not moving too far forward and he's not moving too far back. So it's just a little area he's, he's focusing with his foot movement. The slip is no longer there because he's peppering the offside. Azari Joseph resisting putting the, the sweeper out at point. Stay with the third man. That's another great shot. But uh, Azari Joseph did touch uh, the ball, but Solazano had his, ba his bat firmly behind the crease. Kieran Powell is asking questions, but Solazano did get the bat down in time. There you go, it's just reaching back and Powell is probably saying we might have to go upstairs, Ump. It's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, turned away there, but as that fine leg there, short, just inside that circle, he has to be careful. Because that ball was traveling a fair distance in the air when it left the bat, although it dropped well short of a Louis at fine leg, it was still very well, uh, it was played fairly officially. Still a good line bowling here, and I think it has to do with the few placings as well. Um, and you can just see Athenas trying to adjust that shot. He played it with the ball before, and like I said, it went in the air for a little bit. This time, he opted not to, to flick, but to play with a straight bat. going to get a single here again so Joseph just changing the line a little bit more more to the pads now don't know if that is deliberate but he now has Jeremy Solisano to contend with Solisano yet to get off the mark Face ten balls so far. I'm sure he'd love to at least get a single just to get that monkey off his back. Start building his innings. And uh, he's again trying to pull the ball. Not much back lift there. Uh, probably not in the best position to execute the shot. Uh, but it's the end of the over. Nine completed. It's 45 for two. 
Uh, they need to be very careful. They uh, they have to have to get bonus points, Ruskin. The first set of bonus points, you have to be in excess of 60, 60 and over. Mm -hmm. And uh, nine overs have been bowled. Mm -hmm. And they're on 45 yep. for two. So well, unless they have a hurricane over this one, they're going to lose out on, on, on a point. Well, it's something that I'm sure that they would have been uh, thinking about in their planning. That's hence the reason why Johnson Charles goes so hard right. at the top. But now it's really about if you get it, you get it. If you don't, then you don't. You, you don't sweat over it. Uh, you just continue to play. Now they can it again, uh, but nothing doing. It's really about consolidating here, but you have to be mindful, keeping your eyes on the scoring. You don't want to go completely into a shell and allow the bowlers to just churn their arms over. So you have to be very mindful. This approach is going to be an interesting one here because you still have that scoreboard pressure that can be building on you all the time especially if you're not scoring quickly uh, that's a gift but he doesn't take advantage oh yes he does because I thought for a moment there uh, the man was running around there. I thought Casey Carty might have gotten around uh, but in the end it was very well played by Athenas and uh, he picks up a, another boundary he goes to 27 now, 31 now rather. The good thing with the shot, Raskin, is that he didn't try to overhit it. Just probably tried to just find the space and it, it sped away into the boundary. Now let's see what he tries here now. The slip is back in position and uh, it's cut in nicely but uh, to no avail. So Atene is showing his full repertoire here. He's a, a good scorer on the offside as well as on the onside. Trying that sweep shot once more, but it's a wide signal by the umpire. So the end of another uh, over 50 for two at the end of over number 10. Five overs who scored uh, in this, this over, the last over. Not a lot happening except for the one bad ball. And uh, uh, that was swept neatly for four. Not a lot happening at, at this time. So Lozano continues to play and miss um, uh, with the square cut. But... Uh, I, I have been in, in this position already, Ruskin. I'm sure you probably have been as well. You really would like to get that single and, and feel, okay, so I've contributed. And now you can start all over again. But you need to get that single. Well, I'm sure it's probably playing on his mind that he's been there for a while now and hasn't been able to get off the mark. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if he just continues to play in a similar vein or if he changes things up just a little bit try to force some gaps in the field or something um, again he's playing that little paddle shot that little half a sweep but he gets the run so he's now off the mark so I'm sure he'll be happy with that getting out of that little rut that he might have been in there but he's been batting well all tournament long Again, there are no real terrors in the wicket. We have Daniel Durham into the attack now. Now, 
nicely judged single once again to inch the scoring along. If you remember there was a, a, a big flurry at the top of the Leeward Islands innings and then they had to consolidate. Now we're looking at the Windward Islands. Probably not the bright start that the that the opponents had, but they're still able to stay in touch, keep things going. After 10 overs, by comparison, they were 62 for 2. There's a ball outside the legs, wide signal by the umpire. So the Windward Islands, they have some work to do. The Leeward Islands, after 10 overs, were already 62 for 2. Now they're going to really try to see if they can get at this man. Remember he had this one fantastic game where he ran through the Jamaicans with seven wickets. And uh, the reverse sweep. Now I've seen Atanas execute this quite a bit, but I've also seen him perish, perish with it. 54 for two now after 11. I don't think you need to play that shot at this time. You need to make sure and consolidate continue to just keep pushing the score along uh encourage solozano to come with you because solozano is is not the kind of batsman if i remember him clearly he's not the kind of batsman that will stay around just for staying around sake he is looking for runs so you just encourage him and <coughs> if you feel comfortable to play that shot fine but you cannot get out with it not at this stage of the game looking at 50 f is it What's the score there, Ruskin? 54. It keeps going down mm. on, the, on the monitor here. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Athenes too has to be w mindful of how he approaches uh, the innings. I think a lot of times he's been very free here. He has to be a little more circumspect and uh, that's more like it. Another brilliant sweep shot for four runs. That's off the bat of Solazano. Again, no big force. You just find that the space just pushed it along, helped it along. Good cricket. So he's starting to get into his work now. He got off the mark and now he's up to six with that uh, lovely sweep shot. So the sun is trying to really peek out here. Now another opportunity to score here for Solizano. So he too, like I said, he's, he's in good form. He's been uh, scoring runs consistently throughout the tournament. And I'm sure he would love another big score here at his home ground at the Queen's Park Oval. Atenez is going to be the big wicket here. If they can get rid of him, they'll feel that they're in the business. Or even more in business. It's a proper start to the end. Yep, it's 59 for 2. Now this, is this period here, y you don't want him to get a rush of blood. You, you just want him to play through the period. That's the, the key here. Uh, even if you can't score and you don't let it frustrate you, don't let it get you down. You just try to, uh, to play around it as much as you possibly can. 12 overs completed, it's 59 for 2. This is not a massive score. 
um, it's less than six runs on over. So I, you're going at five runs on over plus. So it's it's just there, there about. Just keep doing more of the same, and if you could increase on that, that's even better. But you don't have to chance your your your, your hand. You don't have to give away your innings. Um, because if you, if if you just go helter skelter and, uh, and and you 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 weren't able to get the score, then you lost. So just bat properly. You have to be so careful with Durham because he he's kind of unassuming. You know, he does get some extra bunks uh, but it's his whole mannerisms is that of a, a very sort of quiet and reserved individual in his bowling style everything is sort of languid you know, he's not it's almost like he has no fast twitch muscles everything is done in a, a sort of deliberate way down the wicket he goes he swings this one in the air there's a fielder settling under it and he takes the catch, the same trap set again, and it works to perfection one more time. And uh, it's that man out there again doing the business for them. And uh, the Solozano goes for seven, really getting a rush of blood. And uh, caught out in the deep once more. And uh, another, they pick another pepper. And uh, not not the the kind of hmm. response that they would have been hoping for, but that's the way it is. Kofi James takes the catch. It's a poor shot, Askin. Very poor shot. Again, it's the the wicket is to our left, which is the f one of the furthest wicket, and so you have more than seventy five to go after, twenty five um, feet to go after, and. Uh, if that were played, that shot were played, was played um, on the other wicket, that would have gone easily for six. Correct. Easily for six. But it is the furthest of the two wickets that they're playing on. And, as a, I, and, and he chose no other place to play the shot but on that wicket, over to the furthest side, and so Lozana is out. Even though he might have gotten six, Ruskin, is this the time for you to be playing the shot? They, 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 there's a lot of space in the air. That's fine, but it with people waiting to catch you, but uh, the plenty, plenty space in between fieldsmen that you could have gone. Uh, I, to me, it was a poor shot, poor choice, and now it's 59 for three after 12.3 overs. Well, they're certainly going to need somebody to put uh, their hands up here. Somebody to put his hands up and support. Athanas. Athanas has been uh, solid as a rock on 32 from 37 deliveries. Kavim Hodge is with him now. Kavim Hodge is uh, uh, very capable. Uh, but he's also one of those individuals who loves to get on with proceedings here, especially with batting. So this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a juggle for them. to try to see if they could really pick things apart here. And uh, Durham doing well, mixing up his deliveries quite nicely. He's not giving uh, Hodge any freebies to start off with, making life as difficult as possible for him. So here is the left-hander. Durham throwing around. And that's cut in. It's a, a nice bonks there, but Hodge played it well. He wants a second run. It might have been suicidal had he gone for it. And uh, that's because Louis was quick to the ball out in the deep and uh, limiting them to just the one run. Six there for three now after 13. You have to look out for those fast bowlers, Ruskin, wherever you are in the field. Those fast bowlers are very strong men. <laughs> so you know not to run. With uh, especially, I remember Andy Roberts and Bernard Julian. They were very, very, very accurate on the bong from the boundary. Mm -hmm. Do not run on their these boys. guys' arm. Keep boys. That's right. Do not run on these guys' arm. You run at your own peril. Do not run. So we may have a bowling change at this 
stop it. Actually, no, he's still going to continue. He was just doing over his, his run-up. And uh, Terence Ward, 60 for 3, the Windward Islands, really uh, not where they would have hoped they would have been, but that's the hand you've been dealt. You now have to play this hand, and uh, Kevin Hutch quickly into the action. And he has a delivery right up to him. And <laughs> you can see the hands going up in the air as if they were sensing that that ball was going to crash into the pad. And he was on the back foot, and then he just had to hurriedly come down on it. And uh, Hodge again, coming out to that front foot and hitting it on the move. Picks up another comfortable single down to long on. He was on the back foot to a ball that he should be comfortably on the front foot, Ruskin. Mm -hmm. And you can see him searching for that ball and hoping it hits the bat. Fortunately for him, it did hit the bat. So he, he survived. Yep, he's still there. He's at the non strikers then. Atanas is on strike. He's cutting and missing. Well, he missed twice there. He missed the stump, he missed the edge, and then missed the stump. Not by much. On both gongs. And uh, uh, that's really the that's the wicket that they want more than any other. Atanas really was flirting with danger there. He was trying to cut a ball that was much too close to be cut. And uh, he could so easily have gotten a little feather edge to the keeper. And that's the end of that. And uh, But he survives and he's still there. As he should be. He's a, a senior batsman in this team. They look to him to, to, to give them some heavy scoring, a lot of runs. And uh, again, chopping this one down, but not getting it through. The feeling has been spot on in this inning so far. 14 completed, it's 61 for three. Again, good enough bowling. Uh, square cuts, the square cut has been out for a long time, and it has not been bearing the fruits that they would have liked. But they keep cutting, and like some, and it's not <coughs> happening consistently. Well, that's the end of the over. 61 for 3 after 14 overs. And uh, the players will have some refreshments. So we'll take a break here and come back with more after this.
Welcome back to the Queen's Park Oval here. Sunny Queen's Park Oval, we should add. 61 for three after the drinks break. And Kavil Hodge, he's on two. He's going to set to take strike from Daniel Durham. Cutting that very, very close to the, the stumps, Lester. Trying to make some room for himself. Uh, I would think if he misses, that could have cannon Cut into the stumps. Yeah, they're cutting a lot to this. Um, yeah. Co Colin. Would you cutting and missing most of the time. Would you prefer him to be on the front foot? Let's have a look at him. Well, that's a good shot, but give him some air on the pads. Would you prefer to see him on the front foot? Uh, unless, of course, the ball is short. Yes, yes. You know? Be on the front foot and driving, put on the front foot and pushing in, in, in the space in the to get a between, single. Yeah, mid off yeah. And, and cover, that kind of thing. Find a space, create a space. News coming out that Barbados, 314 for seven in their 50 overs. Athenes pulling, doesn't beat the man there at that uh, short, fine leg. Of course, that uh, is Terence Ward at that short fine leg position. Athenes on 32. How would you assess his innings so far? Lester? Competent, competent, um, solid. Um, played some good shots, especially to, to Alzari Joseph. Was Alzari Joseph picking up the wicket of Andre Fletcher for one court behind? Andre Fletcher is still a good batsman. I've, I, I saw him up at your respect and he looked competent, um, batting a little too slow then. Nothing is. It's going to get a single down to long on. Just was walking into that shot and just working it down to long on. He's such a talent, Alec Athenis. I just hope. He continues to develop. End of the over. End of over number 15. 63 for three. Not a bad total, except they've lost, in my view, a, a two wickets too many. Yeah. Uh, because because all they really need, they, they require 6.6 .6 and over. If they can continue eating, chipping away with that, you, you don't want it to go much more than, say, 7.5, which is, is very much gettable. Well, it's going to be Ward is going to continue. He's had four overs, none for 12 thus far. And it's going to be bowling to the left-handed Athenes. Ward, of course, uh, coming into the team. Nice, hot, sunny conditions here. It's as if it's anything less, it's too hot. It's a little too <laughs> hot. But we, we are in a really good position, so it's not affecting us. Well, here is Ward round the wicket. And he's given me the impression he was going to come on the front foot and then last minute just rock back and play that ball square. Ward, not giving it much air. There's a long off and a long on in position plus a deep square leg. Plays that ball nice and straight. Down to the man at the long off position in Jeremiah Louis. Thing is, if you got a pattern this innings, Leicester, after the Leeward Islands, yes, the Leeward Islands got a much better start, but Graves, he basically carried the, the innings. Right through. And if Windward Islands were to get to this 294, you would expect Athenes is the one who has to carry the, the, the bulk of the, the strike and the bulk of the scoring. But Colin, we, we have been doing this commentary here from since this morning. Well, an appeal goes up. I don't think he got an edge. Let's have a look at... Yes, he did. Well, so you have to consider that a chance. He pushed at the ball. The delivery, one would say, that may have just been drifting. And he pushed at it, got the outside edge. Let's have a look. Uh, Lester... No help. <laughs> no help. Got, uh, got well, we, we have been here since this uh, morning. Have you seen one man chip and drive? Go back. Put, go, go back to it. Powell. Powell. 
Powell. Yeah, Powell. Go first on. ball. First ball. <laughs> First yeah, ball of the day. He got an inside edge. Yeah, first short ball island. of the day. Other than that piece of madness. I, I can't uh, really Amazing. recall. And, and, and they have been mainly spin bowlers. Everybody anchored. And now I say that, you probably see them coming out at it. But that's a part of the game that is not very present anymore. I think Hooper is trying to bring it back. You imagine that. Well, here's Terence Ward. This final delivery. And uh, getting a little bit of turn there. As Athanes was pushing at it, it came off the thickish outer part of the bat. So the end of the over number 16, at the end of it, it's 65 for 3. Athanes remains on 34. And with him is Kavim Hodge, who has just come in, is on 4. Hodge, I think, is a good foil for Athanes. Hodge, very experienced. But a player who can get, al get on with it. He's... Uh, he 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 has a, a good approach to the game. He has a pretty good defense, and when he wants to 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 start to get on with the game, he, he plays he some shots. Yeah, he can, but um, he hasn't been in the best of form lately. And I think he's uh, he needs to sort of right now. I think he needs to just play the ball around, pick up the singles. Well, that's short enough for him to be cutting, hustling for one. That's all they'll be because uh, the man out on that deep point position is Basketball Jeremiah up. Louis. And they pick up just a single. But that was too short from Durham. And we see the men going out into the deep. There's a deep backward square leg, deep mid wicket, a long on. And Athen is sweeping down to the deep backward square. Just a single in it for him. So it's just two singles from the first two deliveries. Everybody's sweeping. And I have no problem with the sweep shot, actually. In fact, I encourage the sweep shot. But after the sweep shot, you need to advance. You need to come to these guys and dominate them. And there's nobody dominating. Hodge pushing out at a delivery that uh, may have just not as quick as the previous deliveries and Durham just maybe holding that one back slightly and there was Hodge pushing at it could so easily have pushed it straight back into the hands of Durham Peel going up but that uh, seemed to be heading down the leg side there's Hamilton encouraging some of the players to be on the alert so the current required rate is 6.8 the current run rate at the moment is 4.0 he's going to get a single as he's playing it out to long off Powell is there and one more to the total brings the left handed Athenes who is on 35 from 50 deliveries it's interesting you use the word with his innings being competent and I think uh, it's probably a good way to describe it because he's been in control of things I think and um, he hasn't tried anything silly that's it yeah he's just working this ball down to long on that's a good shot because he was getting to the pitch and then just whip whipping it down to long on not having any pace on it uh, working the delivery down to get an easy single the end of the over the end of over number 17 and the windward island volcanoes remember the target is 294 and at the moment they're a long long way from that they're 69 for three after 17 i'm, I'm waiting to to answer the question and, it's, and use the word dominant and that's he's very far away from dominant at this time um, so he's just competent at this time he, he, he knows what he's doing and he's doing what he knows and he's doing it well isn't he's he he's doing it well yes he's doing it well but th there must be a time when you have to move from from second gear you cannot just be in first gear and second gear well here is Ward starting a new over and again he's playing it down to he looks so comfortable so just playing the ball getting to the pitch and just working it down to long on but I think you're, you're making the point that uh, he's got to start to there's got to start to look for some boundaries now because the ones and twos can't get really behind. get them 
yeah. to 295 yeah. or 294, sorry. It's not going to happen. Are well, they going to pick up another easy single? As that ball goes towards that, uh, just to the right, to the left, sorry, of the short fine leg, Durham. And they pick up one more. So total goes on to 71 now for three. There's Athanase. Athanase driving. So he's picking. What What is good about him so far, less than the last couple of overs? He's been rotating the strike. He's been picking up a single almost every time he faces a delivery. But there's a new thing in cricket now. Everybody thinks that you have to have a le left hand and a right hand. Well, they have a left hand and a right hand. But the bowlers are bowling good line and good length still. So they are, they're not undaunted by that. Oi. <laughs> uh, that uh, gave you a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a surprise there that he yeah, was pulling that front, ball. It was a front foot yeah, shot. He was uh, on and that back foot and he was just uh, yeah, working uh, it down uh, to uh, deep backward square leg. The ball kept almost as low as an aunt's ankle, and he just he just on the back foot comfortably tugging it uh, down well, to the man on well the Well, that, that's great confidence. He wow. uh, assesses the bounce and pace of the he pitch. Eight. And there's Atherton comfortably getting the single. That's good batting. Anthony's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of confidence, but you're on eight. Where, where's this all? Where's this confidence coming from? From fifteen, well this is not good button. It's just that you have been fortunate to hit the ball. That's my view, and I will not apologize this time. Well, <laughs> let's uh, let's see what happens with Hodge now, because Ward just one delivery left to complete his sixth over, and they're going at six. If they get this single, let's see. Yes, and he's turning it, but this time straight to... Well, he had to move quickly to his right, but it was too close to him. So they've got five runs in the over, five, five singles. singles yes. Which, yeah, they it's need... Not bad. They, no, it's not bad. They need 6.9 and over. So it would have been better if they could have got another single. But what I like about it, they weren't hitting the boundaries, but they were picking up the singles. So after Pretty five cool. deliveries, it was five runs. Had they got a boundary at that stage or even another single, that's all right. And that's how they need to keep going. But... Colin, I have to I have to, to, to see this and like it because one of the one of the observations that I have made over time with the West Indies big team is that they can't get a single. They cannot they don't they don't know how to make a single, how to get a single, how to create a single. And here we have these two um, young guys. Uh Antonis is one of the, the star boys on the trend on the West Indies team and he's he's getting a single, so that's good. He's looking to pull at a delivery that wasn't all that short, I thought. And he was looking to pull it, didn't make contact, and it uh, wasn't taken cleanly by Hamilton. But uh, luckily for Hamilton, uh, there was back up there at that uh, short, fine leg position in Terence Ward. So there, there was no run. Athen is just uh, composing himself now at the side, saying to himself, okay, let me take a fresh guard again and let me get going. So this time, two dot balls, but he mustn't get flustered. No, can't afford it. With three wickets already back in the pavilion, they've got to be very, very careful of uh, not wanting to lose another one. Well here he's looking to sweep. And uh, I think the ball has gone on to hit the stumps. Hamilton is, yes, I think Athens is, is, is walking. He was looking to pull. That's very, very unlucky because he was looking to pull a delivery. It seemed to hit the top of the pad and then went on to hit the, the, the bail. The bail on the, that's holding the leg and middle stump together. Look, it's dropping and I think it went straight on to hit the stumps. Now, Hamilton was about to catch the ball and realizing that it was going on to hit the stump, uh, just left it and there goes Athens. What an unfortunate way to be dismissed but he goes back to the pavilion for 39 bowled by Durham and uh, it's the end of the young man for as I said 39 and the Winwards they're now in real trouble at 71 for 4 and with Athenes gone that's a real problem I have at Sonel Ambrose a star I don't player for the West Indies. I don't think he was more cons concerned about putting his bat back in his crease. Never realized that ball was going back to hit his thumbs. It's an unfortunate way to get yeah. out. But I, I, I hold the view, Colin. I hold the view. Again, it was an, uh, an, an, an aggressive shot he was making. But I hold the view 
that if you are coming after bowlers, they they tend to cower, they tend to, to be on their P's and their Q's. If you are batting and you're just taking singles, they develop confidence. And so they come after you. So somebody has to come after one another. Mm -hmm. And hence the reason y you have this, this, this result. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's a very unfortunate out. Very unusual one as well. Um, and well, he's in the pavilion. Ambrose played for the West Indies. I remember him very, very, very vividly uh, in New Zealand. It's the first time I've seen uh, uh, a batsman run back on, on, on his stump as often as he has. I, I think out of his four innings, <laughs> um, this is not a laughing matter. This, I cried that night, those nights. He ran back on his stumps. Three out of the four. <laughs> it had to be. He ran back on his stump three out of the four occasions. And, and, and we, we, we thinking that he's representing us. I say, what is this? So what we need probably, um, they probably need to have Algeri Joseph bowling to him. Because let me see if he'll run back on his stumps today. Well, it's not Alzari Joseph, it's Daniel Durham bowling to him. And the first delivery, he's playing it out to that uh, backward uh, short, more of a, a short third man, I would say, or more of a backward point. And But he was just leaning back nicely as uh, Durham, not taking the ball up to the bat, just maybe back of a length. And there was Ambrose on that back foot. Been a good spell from Durham so far. He's picked up two wickets. He's he has a knack, Lester, of getting wickets. He looks very innocuous. He's tall. He's a he not a big turn at the ball, but I think what he's good at bounce. is bowling a good line, a good length, and getting a little bit of bounce. He's really straight. They're going too far. Quick sell. He'll have to hurry, but he goes to the Wicked keeper's end, and I thought he was going to try towards the non striker's end. But a single to end the over, Ambrose. So he's off the mark. And one run in the over and one wicket. So, so they're now behind again. Yep. 75 for four after what? Uh, 19 overs, is it? Yes. 19 overs. And when you think uh, of those 75, Athene con has contributed 39. So it's really uh, the two other batsmen, they need to stand up now and be counted. So Ambrose is going to take strike. And as you rightly said, Ambrose is a former West Indies player. So you would well want he's to still think young, he's a West Indies player. Yeah, well you, you would you think never know. You would think when they get to this level back in the comfort yeah. of their own regional players that they're able to Dominate. Yeah. Yes. You, you can't. You can't be the run of the mill, and and you, you score a hundred. No, it's you don't score a hundred. You, you bat properly. The car has four gears and sometimes five gears, and you have to use all the gears. And Ward starts a new over. His seventh. None for nineteen so far. Terence Ward. So, it's been a good spell from him, on both both himself and Daniel Durham, who's operating from that Brian Lara Pavilion end. Well, at least Ambrose is, is going on the front foot. Hodges is, is has no interest in being on the front foot. Well, loud appeal. He's out. He's gone. Uh, going onto that back foot was Ambrose, and he was trying to play that ball somewhere to square leg. Now, that just was not on. I'm now saying at least he was prepared to be on the front foot. The very next ball, he's on his back foot. The ball turned a bit, but it's not the proper shot. It's the same shot that uh, Hodge was actually playing and was able to, to, to eke out a living after that. Ambrose just doesn't seem to be interested. He's playing a lazy forward defensive, lazy forward defensive, and a lazy backward defensive. And he's in the pavilion. Yeah, seemed to be way. seemed to be just going across the line a little bit. And he bit went as across well. the line. Yeah. Yes, he played with but quarter of the bat. So I I don't know. It's now five wickets down for seventy five. Yeah, the Winwood Islands in real trouble at this point in time. Wh where From is where is Walsh is coming in? Well Walsh already made his duck and in. So where's Walsh the bowler? 
Yeah, we have him use it in World Junior. Imagine top West Indian yeah. spin bowler. Not only that, he's one of the leading wicket takers so yes, far in the tournament. Yes, he's better wickets. Yeah, yeah, and um, he's not been brought into the attack. Well, well, we'll have to wait and see if, in fact, Ward and Durham does the trick for the Leeward Islands. And who knows? I remember Springer in the in the Youth World Cup, uh, batting for the West Indies. And you're, you're hoping he will last another ball and then another ball. Him being a Bajan, you know he has some batting pedigree. So we look to see how 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 he'd make out. It's a big man when you look at him standing up by Hodge. Uh, I'm not too sure what you, what you meant there by batting. One no, Bajan is really bad. They're, mm. they're, they're very good batsmen generally and fast bowlers. They're not the best spin bowlers in the world. But Jesus calling they could bat. And they can bowl fast. That, that, that's that. You get that coming from Barbados, from Guyana. You get real good batsmen, really good batsmen. I don't know what's going on now with with Hetmai and the li and the likes. Really good batsmen. Trinidad, you get good spin bowlers and wicket keepers. That's what you get. And turn up, land by and turned up. <laughs> because we have always produced average to mediocre bowlers. Um. Batsman, Lara is turned up. And Lara, Lara turned up. On a, the islands, of course, you have Viv Richards and the Roberts, and a number of excellent all-round cricketers. But where are the spinners? They're none. So the West Indies, we are able to come get come together and and pull together good good teams. Lance Gibbs came from from Guyana, but after that, who else? Nagamutu, absolutely not. So. Uh, again, the Caribbean, we have been able to find fast bowlers in Jamaica. We haven't gone to Jamaica. Lawrence Rowe and the likes. Michael wow. Holding? Oh, Lord. Michael Holding. Don't, 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 don't stop there. Courtney Walsh. Many others. So Jamaicans are the big, strong, healthy ones. There was a, a Jamaican. I remember playing youth cricket. And, um, of course, Michael Holding was in the Jamaica team. And uh, they were saying they had a fast bowler. Around Michael Holding's it's not age, Newman? Simon Newman. Yes, that was faster than Michael Holding at that time. I remember. I remember um, Richard Gabriel. And 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 apparently he went into athletics. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Went to the Olympics, but they said. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, could you imagine Newman yeah. and, uh, and Holding? Uh, why? That's all right. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I remember them saying, t telling us about this uh, other fast bowler called Newman. Simon Newman, that they're saying that he was faster than Michael Holden. This is, of course, talk talk cricket talking at 17 and 18, 18 years of yeah, age. Yeah. But um, I remember when Daniel at that age, he was a man. He was a man mountain. Oh, man. And he was, uh, that's a lovely shot, but well fielded. That's excellent there. Excellent bit of fielding. Wayne diving, Daniel. Diving, human diving to his specimen. left there. And uh, coming up with it, of course, there's only one man, uh, Hayden Walsh Jr. Not many on the field would have be been able to stop that. Brilliant bit of fielding. Limited the scoring just to one. 76 for five there. Brings Springer back back into strike. Still not getting off the mark. Yeah, Wayne Daniel was... Uh, this to call him the gentle giant. Because Wayne, when you, when you speak to Wayne off the field, he was one of the nicest guys you could talk to. You he know. particularly said off the field. Yeah, off the field. <laughs> you know, he was uh, <laughs> one of the nicest guys you could meet and talk to. And um, but on the field, he had no friends. And um, I mean, you know, you just you kind of was just waiting for him to come off the ball, <laughs> hoping he gets tired. <laughs> but at 18, you don't really get tired. Yeah, all that he was you. huge, Colin. Oh he yeah, was a huge human being. Yeah, I remember being in Bridgetown <coughs> on a Saturday. Uh, we 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 would have had a rest day because we were playing school cricket. Harvard went with the under sixteen team, so we were playing Monday to Friday. And some we found ourselves in Bridgetown, and I saw Wayne Daniel wa walking, running to to go to a game for one o'clock. And we see this huge fellow with this big bag. I say, wow, what a good-looking human being he was too. You know, was he is? I'd imagine, yeah, big, uh, tall, massive. And you know somebody going to feel the pressure that that that. Yeah, I that remember when um, when we went to England, the West Indies youth team, and Wayne opened the ball, and the the poor English guys never saw anything so quick, <laughs> you know. 
because of course uh, they had here's a good shot from Hodge. He's going to pick up a single. They're going to come back. He's wanted second, but Springer, like he slipped and um, couldn't come back for the second, and they settled for the one. End of the over. End of over number 21. The end of it, the Winwood Islands. Remember, the target is 295, and at the moment they're struggling at 78 for five. Yeah, and. And the, the English were saying that, um, you know, he was, they, they weren't accustomed to that kind of pace mm. because, you know, they would run up bowl. Um, a gentle something for swing. Well, yeah, swing. Yes. Because they run up bowl medium pace, swinging the ball around. And all of a sudden, they encountered this big burly, um, this big burly giant of a, of a young Human man. Being, yes. And um, bowling at. You he was stars and he was to swing alone. I can't remember what what if he was ever timed, but it had to be. He had to be clocking somewhere close to to ninety. He was quick. A, a single down to the long on position. So one more to the total, Louis, the fieldsman. It seems that um, Shepherd, Romario Shepherd, is out of the Super Fifty due to a family emergency. And. Um, the all-rounder, Rishi Looknorth, is coming in to play, get his first taste of senior cricket. I, I hope the family emergency is not. Yeah, let's hope it's not. It's not too like Renato Morton's uh, family problem. Yeah, Beaton is also out. So the kind of happy Eagles are uh, running short on bowlers at the moment. Personnel. Eden Walsh Jr. diving all around the field there Time as if it was a swimming pool. He's asking the captain, when am I going to bowl? They have easy wickets here. I think I think he's persist I think he's gonna bowl out Ward and Durham before he brings Eden Walsh into the attack. Because Ward is in his eighth over. Durham has bowled six. That's a single for Springer. So the second run of this over. They've got them. Look at that. The required run rate is creeping up all the time. It's now up to 7.5. So you have to think. They've got to. Yes, they've lost five wickets, but they can't f afford to fall too far behind the asking rate. Yeah, you're saying that, Colin, but the, the approach now to, 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 to redeem themselves is hitting the ball in the air, and that is not what is needed. One well, would hope that they don't take that approach. Another single this time to Hodge again. One delivery left for over number 22 to be completed. So the end of the over the end of over number 22 and it's 81 now for five so 213 runs still needed but they've got 28 overs in which to get it but the game has gone into a little doldrum it's it's, it's putting, it to sleep, it should be. putting it to sleep oh he's not putting me to sleep i've been okay. asleep for a while now they're not put in me. I've been asleep for a while. I just, I just ashamed to close my eyes. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit pedestrian. It's a little slow. Come on, they need to pick it up. Come on, let's go. Durham starts his new over, his seventh. Here, Hodge goes for a quick single because the man is just in the edge of the 30-yard circle. So they pick up one more to Hodge. He goes to 12. The total goes on. Sorry, he goes to 13. Hodge. Hasn't looked really troubled, has he? He hasn't looked troubling as well. He hasn't they troubled them and they haven't troubled him. Interesting feel because they're, they're mid off and they're long and they're mid on. They're both in on the 30 yard circle. And I would have thought that these guys would have may have looked to try to go over the top, hit him straight back overhead. So once they time it, it's a safe shot. Well, that certainly wasn't straight back overhead. It was a, a, a it was a hoik, a agricultural swipe at it, and he missed it.
Another good delivery from Durham. Thirteen from twenty-two is Hodge, and two from thirteen is Springer. It's really slow going here. Beautiful sunshine. Good wicket. Good bowling. But I've always felt, Colin, that the bat is broader than the ball, and the ball should always be dominated. This is just me. Except for when fast bowlers are trying to kill you. They go through for another quick single. That's good running because the man is at the on the edge of the circle. Now he's saying, "Hey, you asked me to stay on the edge of the circle. Don't complain if they run a single." Yeah, you know. So one more to the total. It's the end of over number twenty-three. At the end of it, the Windward Islands trying to get two hundred and ninety-four for victory. They are eighty-three for five, so they're still what two hundred and eleven runs away from victory. The required run rate has gone up to 7.8. The current run rate is 3.6. So they've got to take that 3.6 up a notch, which will then bring the required run rate down. A notch, you say, Colin? There's a whole skill attempt at revaluing the situation. This, this, this needs serious lashes here now. Are they going to get a single? As Delivery from Ward, just uh, angling into the right-handed Springer. And he was pushing it out to long on. And they get an easy single. See, there is a slight change in the field. Powell has come to a pretty straight mid-on. There is a long on back on the fence. But Powell, short. Yeah, Powell has come to a, a very shortish mid-on. It's a good shot from Hodge, but he can't get no run. Because it's straight towards the man at backward point. Four men in the off, five in the on, with, with a deep mid wicket and a long on. Halfway through over number 24. Giving that one a little bit more air, but uh, wide of the off stump, so he's careful where he's going to give it. Where he's going to give it some air, and he was giving that one air, but just wide of that off stump, and they picked up a single. So one more to the <coughs> total. Just two runs from the first four deliveries, and uh, the way Ward has been bowling, you can't see them hitting him out of the ground. Was another dot ball this time to the man who has uh, come in to join Hodge in Springer. So Springer settles again. Hodge was thinking of the single, but it certainly was not on. The end of the over. End of a pretty useful over from Terence Ward. Look at his figures. Nine overs, one for 24. An economy rate of 2.67. And you look at Daniel Durham. He's got an economy rate of 2.43. No doubt Durham is going to continue. As I suggested, Lester, Ter um, Alzari Joseph is going to bowl out his two spinners. And then, maybe, after Ward has completed his 10, he can turn to Hayden Walsh Jr., well, if if he could probably even manufacture another spin spin bowler somewhere on the field because these guys aren't prepared to advance, they're not prepared to to take on these spinners. They they are allowing the spinners to bowl however they want. Um, and uh, as if you are a spin bowler and they're allowing you to bowl however you want, you will enjoy yourself. And l and look at the the field. There's a mid off and a mid on. So it, they're saying, well, you have no uh, intention. You have no intention of going over the top. And even if you do, the mid wicket will catch you out. There's a sweeper on the cover boundary, and there's a one at mid-wicket. Everybody else in a run-saving position, including the slip field one. Well, cutting again, Hodge, but hits it straight to Hayden Walsh at that uh, point position. So, uh, six men on the offside, 
there's that slip a backward point cover deep square cover on the boundary an extra cover mid off mid on mid wicket and a deep square leg so just three men they've gone after him finally Hodge, uh, but just clearing the man at mid off and goes into the boundary for four. It was hit high in the air, and you're wondering when will they start to at least try and attack Durham because the, the, the mid on and the mid off, they're both up inside the circle. So it's a, once you go over the top, it's a safe shot. And uh, for some unknown reason, both Hodge and Springer, it's the first time we've seen. Hodge, in particular, he's been there for 28 deliveries, are going actually going over the top. Another dot ball. Probably waiting on a no ball, Colin, to get a free hit so that he could get cranked up. I'm not sure what they're waiting on, Lester. Your guess is as good as mine. Well, I'm not guessing, I'll tell you that. Because it's extra cover to wicket keeper to the bowler it's a triangle batsman to extra cover to the wicket keeper to the wicket to the to the bowler peel goes up for the final delivery of the over but the nothing says the umpire 25 have now been bowled and uh, it's 89 for 5 Terence Ward is going to bowl his final over. He's got uh, one for 24 from nine. It's been a good spell, Terence Ward getting into the team. So they have been bowling on a trot, Ward yeah. and Durham. That's very unusual in, in 50 over cricket for two bowlers to bowl like 20 overs, 19 overs between them at, uh, on a trot. Very unusual. So Ward, that's that first delivery of his tenth over. Giving that one a little bit more air. That's a good shot from That's Springer. Four. Pleasant shot. That's, That's going to run into the boundary just about now. Was escorted to the boundary there uh, by Justin Graves. Maybe the, the hundred took its toll on him because he just seemed to be chasing after ball, that ball and not making any ground on it. And eventually just rolled into the boundary. It was a nice four. shot. Lovely shot, yes, wasn't it? Lovely shot. Very pleasant. Caressed it through the cover, through the cover area extra cover and the mid off lovely shot and this is an off spin of the ball coming into you so he got inside of it and and caressed it between the two fields yeah he just Excellent pushed shot. it he just yeah. pushed it didn't he good shot and having done that he's now going into the shell again and we wait to see what will happen for the next three balls because well in fairness to him he's got four of the first ball he can he can second ball yeah off the second ball yeah. so he can then decide what he does with the rest of the over that's uh, looking to sweep but signal a wide man prior braffwood seemed to be a quicker delivery from ward but was uh heading down the leg side and there was uh springer trying to sweep and didn't make contact They have to hurry with Walsh. That call, that was danger. They were flirting with danger there. They played the ball just to the right of Hayden Walsh. Now he's quick. He got it, picked up one handed, had the shy, or I'm not sure if he threw it to the keeper, but had may have had a direct shy at the stumps. You've been trouble. And and I tell you what, had he hit, Hodge could have well been walking back to the pavilion. Yeah, that's that's not the kind of a single you want to take to a man like Hayden Walsh, Lester. Dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> That's another good run. So they're, they're testing Hayden Walsh there. 
at that short mid wicket. I'm sure he doesn't like to be tested. When you see Hayden in the field, he looks so much like Har Harold Joseph. Two arms swinging, foot moving all over. Serious cricketer, back of the arm. Harold Joseph. That's well played. The final delivery to bring Terence Ward's spell to an end. Seven runs coming off his final over. So he's completed ten overs, one maiden, one for 31. That's a very good spell, Colin, uh, in any language. Very, very good. Uh, the uh, captain will be very happy for that. And so what he, what he, what he in, in essence, uh, what he has done is squeeze the Leeward Islands uh, batting team. And so it's it's 8.525 per over, Colin. 8.25. That's, yeah, that's a lot of runs now. Coming, coming from, from where they started. Yeah, and, and, and the thing about it, we, it, at one stage it was 5.6 and it continues to grow. They've yeah, got to be careful. This can't, they can't allow this to get out of hand. Yeah, but they're allowing it. Or at least the bowlers aren't allowing them to move. And Trinidad, we say, keep him there, don't let him get away. Single for Hodge. They're getting the signals, but signals not going to do it. They need to get a cluster of boundaries. Without getting out. That's right. That's it's gone for that cool. sweep shot again. It's going to run into the boundary. That's well played. Very well played. Four good looking runs for Shamar Springer. And it brings up the 100. 101 now for five. So they've. Well that's a good shot from Shamar Springer. Realizing the ball was pitched outside the line. He just helped it, helped it on his way, didn't it? Helped it along. He's a big. He has to be about six two, six three, Colin. Oh, he easily six yeah. three. I would say more six three, six four. Yeah, he's, he's a sweeping, tall, he's tall sweeping man. like he's Gosalugi. He's sweeping. The batsman you're talking about, Springer. Yes, it's Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. I thought you were talking about left arm spinner at Durham. Do Springer, Do Springer must be 6'1, six 6'2. Six yeah. Durham, the, the, the spinner, he's what, 6'5? He's so big? He, well, I tell you, he looks it. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulders are huge. He is a huge man. Yeah. But wh when he comes up, we will see how close he is to, in terms of uh, Springer and him. Uh, just the height alone, because he's much bigger than him across. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Beating Alzari Joseph there, just a flick from Hodge, just getting in line and just working the ball on the onside, getting it away from Alzari Joseph and he picked up another single. Durham is into a very good spell, Colin. <coughs> 8.5 overs and it's 28 for 2. That, that's good. Good. But he's under no pressure whatsoever. He just relax bowling. Appeal going up, not out, says the umpire. They have over seven runs coming from the over, so it's been a, a pretty used to the eight. They need 8.2, but getting seven in the over is, I would say, at this point in time, just acceptable. It's helping, it's helping your cause, but it's not your cause, that's for sure. And this has been going on for now uh, many, many overs, and so it, it's just mounting, it's just increasing the run rate. So somebody has to take the ball by its horns. And this is at the, at, the, at the point here now, Colin, where if even you get caught on the boundary, you 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 caught doing something that could be worthwhile. Your investment 
it now is in big scores. It's in, it's in huge among poor ball. Uh, you need a ball, a run and a half poor ball. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, here's Hayden Walsh. No, sorry. This is Kofi James. I'm so waiting on, on Hayden Walsh Jr. I'm you, you have to it's find a spin bowler somewhere <laughs> it's else. It's Kofi James. Yeah. The off spinners come in. Yeah. And uh, so Lester Kasami is making his way out for Mr. Mark. They always tell me I have to respect my elders. Lester, it's been said to me on many occasions. 104 for 5. So Kofi James in his first over, replacing Terence Ward, who had 10 overs, 1 for 31. Single there for Springer, brings Hodge back into strike. That was good bowling from Ward. He bowled right through. So another run here has two runs now from the first two deliveries. As hello Ruskin. They really have to get a move on. It's difficult for them. The five wickets I think is kinda like a albatross around their necks right now. Yeah, I think I think what these two they they obviously realize that uh, they, they just need to stay there. But in so doing they they gotta keep the scoreboard ticking. Yes, I, I understand that neither of them Want they don't want to lose a wicket at this stage again. But having to that's a good shot. That's going to be four. It's a really good shot uh, from Springer. He was just a, a delivery that was just back of a length. And he sort of waited on it and then punched it through the offside. Pass Alzari Joseph at cover and down to the boundary for four. That's a good shot from... Was it Hodge? It was... Much needed. No, it was Springer. Springer. Yeah. Much needed at this point in time. And uh, they just need him to continue to to uh, to do more of that, more of the same. You see, if they can get a boundary early in the over, then to the rest of the over they can pick up the singles. It's the end of the over from Kofi James. His first over, they got six runs from it, and a uh, hundred and nine for five now. It are the volcanoes from 28 overs, so they've still got 22 overs left to get uh, 100 and what? 100 difficult to enjoy any kind of real success at that next level. And he's not the only one, you know. I look at, at some of the others, you know, and I and I wonder, I, you know, I look at Lee Cock from Barbados, the little right, leg spinner, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, you want to, you really want to see how well they do at this level so they have wickets and you look at all the top wicket takers and you, you understand what I'm talking about we are going to have a, a bit of a water break here Colin it's the end of the over it's 111 for 5 29 now in the bag uh, so as they get their, uh, a little bit of a refreshment remember the target is 294 it's 111 for 5 after 29 overs We'll take a break and we come back with more after this.
As we welcome you back here to the Queen's Park Oval, and the players have had some refreshments. Colin is hoping that it has a, the signals a change in fortunes and a change in momentum, maybe here at the Oval. One thing, Colin, the flag is fluttering nicely, and again, yeah, that, that Queen's Park flag is having a time out there. Yeah, it means, the that it means that the, the, the it's cool and thing. it's hot. I tell you that, Ruskin, it's really, really hot. But um, maybe there's a breeze blowing out there. But I was just making the point that, um, you know, he, the, the Leeward Islands totally in control. Because you know, they're not even looking to bring Hayden Walsh Jr. into the attack yet. Not yet. There is Kofi James now to continue. And um, so Altari Joseph really giving his other bowlers a chance because I thought he, he, he did well to, to, to Terence Ward did very well when he was asked to bowl and he bowled his 10 overs. But, but even Daniel Durham, he's completed yeah. his 10 overs, 2 mm -hmm. for 29. Right. So the two spinners are really, um, has done the, done, the, done the job so far. Yeah, there's 60 runs for four wickets in 10, 20 overs. That's You'll check right. that every time. Yeah, you know. certainly will. And, um, you know, so it's just a, a question. Of, and, and here's the, the, the challenge, though, for a team like the Windwell Islands. It's almost like they've lost their Wii. Because how now do you get back on track? You know, they, they lost those five wickets, obviously. It's probably weighing heavy on them at the moment. But it's really about what can you do now to... You know, just to change the momentum a little bit, break up the, the try to loosen that that vice grip that the Leewards have in the game. Well, Kevin Hodge is experienced enough. He's got to take charge of things and and let Springer bat around him, and let's because Springer looks he looks pretty decent. He's uh, when I say that he's middling the ball nicely. He doesn't look in any trouble, and I would think one of these two. They've just got to pick it up now. And I would expect Hodge would be the man to do that. Hodge is the man to really pick things up and really uh, try to get after the bowling. And let Springer just play, play his normal game. Push the ball around. If he gets a bad ball, then put it away. Does he go hell for leather here? That's great. That's good field. Brilliant Excellent. Field and uh, just coming up and doing it well. They cut. cut Casey. Yeah. Yep. But that ends the over, 113 for 5. Another pretty useful over. And, uh, not very many <coughs> runs, I think three runs in the over. So you look at some look at some of those bowling figures. 1 for 31, 10. 2 for 29 and 10. So as you rightly said, the two spinners going for 60, Hayden yeah, Walsh Jr. Yep, yeah, well, we've been talking about <laughs> Hayden Walsh Jr. And he's into the attack now. He's been bowling pretty well in this Super 50 the CG United Super 50 Cup. He's been bowling very, very well. He's uh, he's more or less uh, picked up his wickets. He's uh, his control. I think what has impressed me with Hayden Walsh Jr. in in this Super 50 Cup is his control and and his ability to bowl the googly when he wants. He's uh, and he's getting some turn. I think he's he's put in some work on his on his bowling. Maybe in the last uh, couple of months. Remember, he was out injured, and yeah. I suppose coming back from the injury, you know, he probably did some work, probably strengthened that shoulder. And uh, now it's going to be interesting to see how they approach him, because if anybody could get some turn on this wicket, it would be it would be him, you would think, and maybe even some bounce, because he does put a fair amount of uh, revolutions on the ball. So it should, it should sort of do respond on the wicket. Just that's what I'm talking about. You see, it hit the wicket and it almost stopped in the wicket. Uh, it spun, but it, it it it's almost like it gripped in the wicket. So I anticipate it's going to be very interesting to see how if once he lines it up properly, how they respond to it off the wicket. Well, the question is, are they going to try and go after who Hayden Walsh Jr.? So far, there's three balls and three singles. The question is, are they going to go after him and try and maybe take him out of the attack? But uh, in so doing, it may, very, may be very well risky uh, if they're trying to do that. And uh, Hayden Walsh uh, 
is a clever individual. He's a clever bowler. And we just want to pull it back slightly. I'm surprised they didn't remove the slip, though. Graves goes from slip to short, short fine leg. leg. Yeah. yeah. Getting a little bonks for that one, and yeah. Hodge was right on the top of it, guiding it down to that short third man. But he could be the change that the, the game needed because something always happens when he's bowling. Yeah, that's for sure. You know. Yeah, look at the box. <laughs> yeah, that was about this. It was handled well by Hodge. He got on top of it nicely. He did well in the end because that that was almost like a rubber ball bouncing. And um, there was Hodge getting right on top of it. Kept it down nicely. Really a good shot. Seven runs so far from the first five balls. And really and truly, Ruskin, they haven't taken no, no risks. No, uh, but I was just making, I was just thinking the, the bounce he got there. He got more bounce than some of the fast bowlers in the game so far because that was almost head height you know that's a good shot so eight runs coming in this over and they've taken absolutely no risk playing the ball out in front of them the one bad ball they got Hodge put it away so at the end of 31 overs it's 121 for five still a long way off 174 runs needed uh, from 19 overs and you have to think, uh, sorry, 173 runs from 19 overs, and you have to think that's beyond this Windward Islands uh, volcano steam. Well, it, uh, you know, and but what I would like to see, Colin, is that they take the game deep. You know, don't just capitulate, and uh, you know that. Uh, but I think it would do them a world of good if they can, um, you know, really push the Leeward Islands. Because right now, the Leeward Islands, as you said. Uh, they have their, their feet on their neck, so to speak, and uh, they're not letting it go. They're not allowing them yeah. to get up, you know. Well, having a big swing may have been outside the line of the off stump. We went right across that one. Yeah. There is a deep mid-wicket on the boundary, uh, right up there in Cow Corner, so you have to be careful. We saw the trap laid earlier for Johnson Charles and he fell right into it. It's been a tight over so far from Kofi James. Three dot balls. Quicker delivery, but it's very well played uh, again. Uh, see, and, and this is kind of like par for the course because you always see, you know, you see some people come to the wicket and they look like they can, you know, do something yeah. for their team. And then for some strange reason, it, it doesn't last. Well, that's a good shot. I think that was intended by Springer because it was outside the line of the off stump and he sort of nudged it. Yeah. And I think he uh, covered they're going to come angle. back for three. Yep, he yeah. covered the turn. And yeah, and he just sort of nudged the ball where uh, there would have been a slip. There's no one there. Let's have a look at it. Because I got that impression from the shot he played. Yeah. It was a deliberate. Yeah. He just opened the face yeah. and opened ran it. Face. Took it out of the glove of the keeper. Yeah. Excellent from Shamar Springer. No, uh, this one <laughs> well, that's it. It was intended, but uh, funnily <laughs> enough, that gets uh, Hodge four runs. <laughs> no, you, you on one hand, Springer opening the face, guiding it down to third man. Only got three. Hodge looking to drive, gets a thick outside edge, and the ball runs away for four. Well, well, no justice at times. So the eight runs coming from the over, 129 for five now from 32. The thing is, Ruskin, the required run rate, quite, I, I never even realized it, but uh, it's gone up to 9.2. That's, that's a lot. It's a big ask. Yeah. But that uh, previous it's over, 8 runs come off of it. 108 balls. Yep. So it'll be interesting now to see how they treat with, with Hayden Walsh here. That's another good shot. Couple I runs. Gonna get a couple runs here. Yeah. 
And Walsh has to be careful here now because uh, the captain sort of held him back, I think, precisely for this. Just when a partnership is starting to develop, uh, they need him to kind of to come and break that partnership. So I think he has to just relax and, and bowl, you know, try to line up the deliveries a little bit better. He's a little bit inconsistent with his length and his line. Shamar Springer has been pretty useful with the bat, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. He's been, uh, hasn't looked in, in real trouble. And um, I suppose if you, if you have to find uh, some sort of fault, it's to say, well, he needs to be looking more for boundary balls. But, you know, th that's what I'm saying. One of them, and, and I would say Hodge, has to look to go after the bowling. Allow Springer to continue getting the singles if he gets the bad ball. But one of them, they've got to start to, to, to open up now. And uh, again, the field is well set. So Walsh trying to, I think that's probably the first googly he's bowled. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen any before that. Yeah. He just seems a little bit on the short side. I, I don't think he's really found the, the, the length where he could get the batsman driving. It's been, it's been a lot of back foot play where they can just kind of read the, the turn and the bounce. He hasn't really been consistent with his length so far. Final ball of over number 33. His second. And that's more like it. And that's why I was surprised that he removed the slip. Uh, because if anybody can, can probably find the edge of the bat, it's going to be Heaton Walsh. And, uh, but that's he neither here nor there. That's the end of the over. It's 132 for 5 now. Yes, and Hodge on 36, Springer is on 29. Springer is back on strike. <laughs> These two have put together a nice little partnership. With 59 earns. The sponsors of the tournament, CG United. You want to believe it, it might be easier for them to attack Hayden James. Because yep. James, you know, with Hayden Watch, Watch is going both ways. L you know, he's turning it into you and turning it away from you. Whereas with somebody like a Kofi James, he's predominantly an off spinner, uh, yeah. t turning the ball into the right hander. And, and, and his. And that I is a good catch. Oh, that's he a take it? brilliant catch. Well, let's see. <laughs> Ampar Basarat is right there. And uh, we see Powell running to... Is that Durham? It, it looks like it's Durham there who took that catch. He's a big fella, so he had to go down low. The and uh, They're going to have a word, the umpires. Look at it here. No, we, we, we didn't get it. So the umpires are going to have a discussion as to whether or not it's a bump ball. I think they've given him out. I think yep. um, Pa Basarat has just raised his <coughs> finger and has given him out. So that's the end of Hodge for 38. So he goes caught, out, caught Durham off the bowling of James for a very well played 38 and just seemed like he wanted to release those shackles and then this happened so it's not the uh, Winwood Island stay at all here now they've uh, had a hard time keeping up with the run rate they bowled very well at times and then at the just at the end of the innings it just seemed to relax a little bit and uh, the Leeward Islands batsmen were able to uh, punch some quick runs. They lost wickets, but they kept the scoreboard ticking over till they got to that, uh, what looks like a mob total now yeah. <laughs> of 293. It's, um, and they're slowly but surely running out of batsmen because Hodge was 
playing that uh, again, playing that sweep shot, but uppishly. Once you do that, you run yourself into problems. So we have the left-handed Larry Edwards. And uh, it's going to be Kofi James who picked up that wicket of Hodge. Yes. Now one for 18. So he's going to be looking for another scalp. Bowling to the left hand is going to be turning that ball away from Larry Edward. And uh, I'm glad they put in the slip uh, 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 oh. because I, I really felt that he should be bowling with a slip. Yeah, and not only have they put in the slip, but uh, they've brought in the long off and long on. So they're basically <coughs> saying to Larry Edward, well, if you're looking for runs, hit over the top. Because when you look at that offside field, there's a slip, backward point, cover, who is now going all the way back to the boundary. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, a deep square leg and a short fine leg. So a 5-4 field for Kofi James. Uh, he did have a, a cover point saving the single. Loud appeal goes up. Well, umpire Braffwaite is unmoved. And, and I don't know if he touched that ball at all. Uh, that might have been the only thing that could save him. I don't know it was going down leg. I well, I, I thought, uh, yeah, I tended to think when it first hit him that it might have been going down leg. It's hard to tell. Well, yeah, it's a that difficult. Uh, yeah. But we might have clipped the leg stump. But and I don't think he got the, the bat on it from that replay. Um, so it was just the probably beaten leg. That's probably the thinking of Umpire Brathwaite there. So the end of the over. 34 has gone. 135 for 6. Still remember that target is a mammoth. You have to say mammoth now because at 135 for 6 you have to think that uh, there's no way the Windward Islands can get to 200 and uh, get those 159 runs needed uh, and for 56 victory balls. in 56, 56 balls. Yeah. Really is tough, and uh, now is the time for. Actually, Ruskin, 96 balls. 96 balls. Yeah, 96 balls, because yeah. 16 overs are left. Yeah. But still, <laughs> it's a, a lot of d it's a lot of deliveries. But uh, can't Plenty see runs, the yep. yeah, I can't see the the rest of the batting getting those uh, 158 runs. And they they still bowling hit and watch without the slip. And um, I, I'm, not, I'm really not, I'm surprised. Just no, it's just kind of, can they really finish it off, you know? This is just frustration for them. Every run <laughs> that is scored now is like more frustration. But it's the end of the over, 170 for 8 now after 40 overs and uh, we'll have a break because the refreshments are coming out and Ralphie is sprinting out again to do his own little clean up of the crease and as soon as they're done with that we'll come back with more with the Windward Islands uh, precariously placed at 170 for 8 after 40 overs still a long way away from the 294 needed for a victory.
Uh, Welcome back as we get ready for the final 10 overs of this encounter. Remember the target is 294. Right now it's 170 for 8. I'm not sure what happened to Graves there, but he seemed to be in some discomfort at slip. And that's a good hit. That's hit hard. It's hit straight. And it's gone for four. As simple as that. No frills. Just power and placement. And so when you consider twice, Hayden Walsh hit the outside edge and there was no slip. And uh, now he's been punished. When he could easily have had uh, this innings probably wrapped up already. And, uh, another quick delivery. I don't think the batsmen have been reading the googly all that well. Although Springer seemed to have a different approach. He's swinging. And once he's swinging, he's going even outside the off them to fetch it. Uh, trying to put tug it to leg side. There he goes again. There's a man there. Straight down his throat. Well, what can you do about that? He picked him out uh, superbly, one would have to say. And Gore, Karima Gore says, thank you very much. And that is the end of Springer's brilliant innings of 58. It's 174 for 9. Here we go again with Walsh. A short pitch ball and hit straight in the hands of the man on the deep mid-wicket boundary. Um, Brooks, though, on the other hand, played what we would consider a very good knock. Um, while he was behind, at least he, he kept uh, the Leeward Islands. I mean, Leeward Springer. Island. Springer. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. He kept, he kept them wondering when he would accelerate. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do so. Na the ninth wicket has fallen. And uh, I don't think it's too long from now, Ruskin. Well, we'd hope Sherman Lewis, the last batsman, making his way out uh, into the middle to join Daryl Cyrus. Cyrus. Cyrus is nine from eleven. Yep. He looks or he looks organized. Of sorts. So, um, um, well, uh, and again, you you wonder. You have a. Uh, but again, he didn't watch probably just a little bit on the short side. He really needed to bring the ball up to the batsman, tempt him to want to go with the bigger. Right. He has three for 35 now. Here's another one coming off the inner edge. And he's going to get a couple of runs here. He might even get a boundary. It's rolling, rolling, rolling. Just puck tugged inside. And they'll come back for a third run. Go will complete. They're feeling, as we saw, Graves running. He seems to be in some discomfort. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I saw him holding his left side. And uh, even as he's running there, he's uh, a little bit ginger. 117 from 55 balls, Ruskin. And you put a long on. And uh, here Walsh is asking whether it was pad first before bat. The umpire doesn't agree. It's 177 for 9 at the end of the over. At the end of that over, Walsh is now, it's about 6 overs, 3 for 38. At least he's getting wickets. He's getting a hammer in. More than 6 runs are over. Um, it's 177 for 9. The asking rate is 13 per over. I think Colin feels it could be done. <laughs> I don't know why he feels that way. I think some Karaska needs to remind him it's just one <laughs> wicket to fall. <laughs> well, he he's of the opinion that the tail could wag vociferously. And or oh, it's tomorrow's game. Yep. So I'm glad that they kept the slip. Um, Kieran Powell is at slip at the southern end. 
almost being played back to the bowler. I'm sorry, Joseph had a short, uh, straight edge extra cover there. Anxious to probably get this over it to secure another victory. And for the second time, he's driving and pushing at the ball, almost playing it back to the bowler. Who knows, maybe he might be third time lucky. I would be surprised. I'm surprised Alzari Joseph don't bring a man in short on the outside there. And tell him if you want to play that shot, go ahead. So a tough day for the Windward Islands. Athenes made 39, 17 to Johnson Charles. He was the first to go. Fletcher made just a one. A pitch of a delivery from Joseph. Jeremy Solazano, seven. Kavim Hodge, 38. Ambrose made one. 58 to Shamar Springer. Edwards made a duck, as did Demar. Or Demba. And uh, Cyrus and Lewis, the last pair at the wicket right now. Two for 29 so far from Durham. One for 31 to for Ward, who bowled very well from his 10 overs. And another quick over bowl there by Kofi James to take it to 177 for 9 after 42. That was Very a quiet over. Made no over. Yes, yep. Quiet over. Um, not a lot happening except for the first two balls. Uh, it, it, there was almost two uh, cotton balls. Yep. But other than that, it was quiet. But, and, but that's the thing with, with, with captaincy. The, the batsman almost played the ball back to the bowler twice. And Alzari Joseph, like it never even crossed his mind to try to, to, to see if he could buy that wicket there. Just tell the bowler, toss it up outside the off them, see what he does. Here's a big swing and a miss. So, <laughs> watch, has his hand in the air. He's looking for his fourth wicket. He has three for 38 already. Came on very late indeed. In fact, he was the sixth bowler employed. Try again. This is a big one. This could be out. Go is closing in on it. And uh, almost like he wasn't sure if he was going to get there. And uh, he, uh, almost like he didn't take off immediately. It's, it's almost he picked it up late. And he started to close quickly, but it was too late. The ball was dying on him. So two more to Cyrus. He's on 11. Yeah, he is nudging this one and putting it comfortably into the hands of James. Kofi James takes it and says, thank you very much. And that is the end of Cyrus. He goes for 11. And uh, they are bowled out for 179. After 42.2 overs. Uh... A deficit of 115 runs, 46 balls still remaining. Caught, uh, I said, I'm going to say Courtney Walsh, but Hayden Walsh ended with figures of 4 for 40. 6.3 overs, mm -hmm. 4 for 40. Wow. And I was saying while, while I was on earlier that the captain is taking a little while to put on Walsh, but he, he's the man who's going to get all the wickets because he has been getting wickets. With short pitch, with full tosses, doesn't matter. He's been getting his wickets. Justin Graves has 100 for the player of the, player of the match. Man of the match. So a massive victory here uh, for the Leeward Islands over the Windward Islands. So it's back-to-back -back wins for them. And uh, so I'm sure they'll be happy with that. So a good opportunity for them here, the what? They won by 114 runs. So a big victory here. So 
so 179 all out in 42.3 overs and uh, so a, a, a comprehensive victory for the Leeward Islands as they win by 114 runs so a massive victory for them as well so congratulations again to the Leeward Islands and to Alzari Joseph and uh, the rest of his queue. Uh, they certainly batted very well, had kept the, the Windward Islands bowlers at bay for long periods, even when they threatened to take things over. Uh, but uh, a, a big victory here by 114 runs. And uh, well, this would obviously set them up nicely going forward. For the Windward Islands, though, this is a precarious position in which they find themselves because they will stay uh, 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 down at the bottom just ahead of the Jamaicans. Uh, but certainly the Leeward Islands, this will, they will, this will do them a world of good. And depending on what happens with the CCC game, uh, all you know, the Leeward Islands could very well be uh, second on the table uh, with uh, this victory here today. So a comprehensive victory all the same. So on behalf of Colin Murray and uh, Lester Casimir and of course Ian Wason and the rest of the uh, technical crew here, I'm Roscoe Mark thanking you so much for being with us and as we leave you for from the Oval one last time, the Leeward Islands 293 all out with Justin Graves leading the way with 121 uh, Jamal Hamilton chipped in with 50 Lewis at 3 for 68, Springer 2 for 45, and Cyrus 2 for 53. Needing 294 to win, the Windward Islands lost Athenes for 39, Charles for 17, Fletcher for 1, uh, Jeremy Solizano for 7, Hodge for 38, Ambrose for 1, Shamar Springer top scored with 58, Larry Edwards made a duck, Kenneth Demba also made a duck, and Daryl Cyrus. Uh, made 11 uh, Shimon Lewis was 3 not out at the end so that is the picture all out for 179 losing by 114 runs congratulations to the Leeward Islands uh, a big victory in the end so this is where we leave you from the Queen's Park Oval and remind you to join us again tomorrow we'll have more action for you from the University of the West Indies ground out there you respect from 9 in the morning